Hello. I have made it. Oh, what madness of a day. I apologize for being late. I don't like being late. I'm trying not to be late. I make an active participation every day not to be late. And I'm still late. Um, I'm hoping, beyond all hope, I fixed the audio issues from last time. Don't know. Um, why is that not showing up here? just check these things there so I'm hoping I fix the audio issues we'll find out we'll find out hello everyone how are we all doing oh let me turn this down a little bit This, this, this. It has been manic today. I don't actually know where the weekend went. Which is quite astonishing. Uh, is this done? I think so. Where should I have updates? Uh, what is it? John asked me a question. Saf, I have an odd code request. With Mathral, I've noticed that the petrification block debuff uh, gets blocked by block debuffs. With Arbeus, it doesn't. Uh, what does Arbeus do? I have to remind myself these things. Hmm. Let's have a look. What? Ah, you greedy little cat. Uh, let's have a look. Ally, revive on death, phase is 60, okay. And Mithrala. So I have, to, I have to find both of them to have a look. And I also have to bribe the cat at the same time who's being very greedy. It doesn't look any different. Are we sh are we certain that uh, Arbeus works whilst you're under block debuffs? Are we certain about this? Because I'll be honest, the code looks very similar. Let's double check. Same phase, same kind ID, same debuff effect. Necro protected Jorgid just got petrified. Um, yeah, we will be. Um, well, it's coded exactly the same way. So either that's a blip. You know. Maybe... No, if you have Hex and you put block debuffs on, it doesn't work, Dutchie. 
with Mithrala. Mithrala can't petrify someone into block debuffs. Mithrala doesn't go through block debuffs. Because that's how you that's how you counter Mithrala, you put on block debuffs. Yeah, Mithrala 100% doesn't work through block debuffs. That's how you counter her. That's how I counter her. I always place block debuffs on and it doesn't work. You'll have to mind my voice today. I feel a little bit under the weather. So if my voice goes a bit croaky at times, that's why. Um, but it's fine. Um, yeah, the Hydro Clash is looking a bit rough. But this is why we're here, Shooter. We're going to we're gonna be pumping in some Hydro Clash keys today. Uh, have I got... I don't think I have... Oh, I do. Um, well, she can't hex you if you have block debuffs, but if she places blo if she places hex and you place block debuffs, Mithrala can't petrify you. Mithrala can only petrify you if you don't have block debuffs. If you have block debuffs, it doesn't work. No, Mithrala can't place under Poison Cloud. I'm interested. I'm going to do a poll here. Curious to know. If Hex is on before... No. No. If... If Mithrala hexes you, and you place block debuffs, you cannot be petrified whilst the block debuffs is on you. It doesn't go through. So, there's a very strong possibility that you lost block debuffs, yeah, as, as Quirty saying. There's a very strong possibility that he didn't have block debuffs for whatever reason. Maybe someone stole it, maybe something got it removed, maybe when you attack something it reduced the cooldown. I'm like 95% certain, I don't have our base to prove it, but I can 100% confirm that Mithrala can't petrify you under block debuffs, and it's the same coded effect, so therefore it should match up as well. It should be the same. Our base strips buffs. Right, but our base doesn't look, if we look at our base, she doesn't actually strip buffs when you attack her. She only does it when she actually removes it, right? So... Yes, you're correct though, Quirty. If she does this ability and then you attack without block buffs, then she'll petrify you. But if you have block debuffs, you know, if this doesn't remove the block debuffs, then she shouldn't be able to petrify you. That's my understanding. So if she's if she's got if she strips the block debuffs and then you attack the ally, then yes, you can be petrified. No. No, no, no. Will I get access? I don't know, G-Cup. I've kind of applied. We'll see what happens, but I doubt it. What if you attack with one turn when the block expires at the end of your turn? Does it go? No. Yeah, that's it, Quirty. That's probably happened. Um, I'm 95% certain my understanding of the way that this ability works is... Sheep debuff will bypass both stone skin and block debuffs. You cannot stop this sheep debuff unless you can resist it. If you resist it, fine. I know this one says this can't be blocked, but the other one doesn't. My understanding my understanding is that sheep debuff in its in its effect in terms of how sheep works means that block debuffs cannot stop sheep and it also will ignore stone skin completely. So it will operate exactly the same way as the Sun Wukong does right now. This is why it's so broken. This is why our mans will be like, if you if you play this game with any level of seriousness, this is the one fusion you don't skip. This is the one that you do. Even if it costs you a lot of, like, mental capacity, it's bad. Has dropped in the video. I haven't had a chance to really see what other people have done yet. Um... 
I'm, I'd imagine Drock lost his absolute mind with it. Because I was messaging Drock about it, and I was, like, saying, this is gonna, like, this is ridiculous. Like, it's gonna be awful. Yeah, our mans will need accuracy. All you, all you literally do is you, you build our mans as fast as you can with as much accuracy as you can. And if he takes a turn, you're done for. Okay? When I mean you're done for, I mean, I think, just basically reading his skill set, if he takes a turn, you will lose the fight. There is no way you recover. The only way you recover is if you get some really good RNG, the stun procs polymorph, and that he somehow freezes himself or something, right? But here's the thing. He's going to steal turn meter before he stuns, and stealing turn meter cannot proc polymorph. So you're going to lose all of your turn meter before he polymorphs. So it's still powerful. It's still crazy because what will happen is, if you think of the interaction, he will steal all your turn meter. He then will try to place a stun. He gets polymorphed. Not a problem. He's got 250% turn meter. Because he's just stolen all your polymorph. So, uh, he's stolen all your turn meter. So he's going to instantly join the attack and potentially come straight out of polymorph if he rolls the 50-50 luckily. If he doesn't, that's your only win condition. Because otherwise, he's going to steal all your turn meter. He'll go polymorph. He'll come out. Then he's fine. Then he's just going to be super fast. You're going to be super slow. And he's going to polymorph someone. Great. They come out. They lose their ability. He gains more turn meter. More turn meter. More turn meter. And he goes again and again and again. You just can't take a turn. Tormin could freeze him, but you just ban Tormin. And besides which, you can just put your... Um... Your Armands in one turn stone skin. If you want to guarantee he takes a turn. This is the new fusion. He's basically Sun Wukong with Warlord with like Arbiter. I would say actually with like a Lissandra Shu Zhen kind of combo. Because that's what Shu Zhen is really powerful for. A lot of people obviously will credit her for being able to remove sheep and everything. What she's really crazy for is this ability. Stealing to, she fills 20%, places increased speed. She drops 20%, places decreased speed. It's a very powerful turn meter manipulator. He's going to be like that. He's got that component with Warlord's components with Wukong sheep and buff removal. It's disgusting. They won't nerf it. They won't nerf it. They don't care. I mean, they won't care. They just don't, they won't nerf it. It's fine. But what you'll find is, a lot of people are saying, oh, it's an alternative to Sun Wukong. It's not. Because what people will do is they will just lock in Sun Wukong and Armands together so you can't block it out. So they, you get double sheep. And the thing is, because of his passive, where he basically gets more power, the more sheeps are on the, on the battlefield. Because every time you come out of a sheep, he's going to put one of your abilities on cooldown. When they're on cooldown, he gives himself turn meter and so on and so forth. It's much better that you bring multiple one-turn polymorphs because actually you don't want polymorph. You want to manually sheep them because you want them in one-turn sheep so that you get that cooldown locking. He can probably completely lock out a Kaimar permanently because when Kaimar comes out, he's just going to re-sheep you over and over and over. It's absolutely disgusting. There's two options to counter in Armands. Kill him straight out of the bat or ban him. If you do neither, you will lose the fight. 100%. You will lose the fight. He's too powerful for that. Because he's got too much control. Too much turn meter. I mean, imagine Kaimar, right? Let's take a look at Kaimar here. Sorry, going on a little bit of a rant here. Kaimar has a reset ability on a six turn cooldown. So I polymorph the Kaimar. Kaimar comes out of polymorph. This goes on cooldown. It gives Armand's 60% turn meter fill. 60%. But if you put him in supersonic... He's going to get 30% more of that. So actually, at 9 times supersonic, he's going to get 78% turn meter fill when Kaimar comes out of his polymorph. It's not even like he's doing anything. Kaimar just comes out, ah, you, you CC it, okay, fair enough. Even if it's a 3 turn cooldown that he locks out, that is still 39% turn meter boost. This is why I'm saying you'll never get a turn. It's not even about the A2. It's about the fact that the moment someone becomes a sheep, he will just take control of the fight and you're going to lose. It's the wrong type of champion to release as a fusion because the A2 is way too strong for PvE content and it's going to kill Live Arena. 
You can't turn me to manipulate for your stone skin. No, but he can sheep you. It will force four turns stone skin. Absolutely. It will force four turns stone skin. But then what most people will do if they do that is you will just bring this. Right? You'll bring these types of champions. The moment it moves to a... Um, the moment it moves to a stone skin heavy meta, we will bring more burn activators. Right, we'll, we'll move towards more of, like, just bringing out a Dreng that can't be resisted. It'll be fine. We'll get polymorphed, but all we need to do... It doesn't even matter if you get polymorphed. The, once the burn is out there, the burn will destroy the, sh the polymorph, and then off you go. Off you go. You know? How, f how is he for progression PvE? I'm pretty much... I'm, I'm like, 90% certain, after reading his skill set, that if you put... 350 speed on so if you put him in like 300 to 350 speed our man's apart from the stun immunity waves will be able to solo the entirety of doom tower on his own excluding bosses of course and if, like the rotus waves because they're immune to stun um potentially like the more macabre waves because they get a lot of turn meter but apart from those waves i think he can permanently crowd control every single wave in doom tower on his own Hegemon waves, yeah. Exactly, QWERTY. So that's what I mean. Apart from those particularly annoying waves, which is like, out of three rotations, we're probably talking maybe 10, which is out of like, what, 120, 240, 240 times. Like, out of at about 800 floors, maybe 10 of them he can't solo. Outside of those, he can just carry on. They are the hardest, I'll agree. But anyone who's struggling with Doom Tower, you pick him up, he's going to be a massive change of power no he 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 can we get can he weak it does he steal the turn meter first and attack let me check he might steal the turn meter first let's find out I need to remember what his skill says. What did the image load? There we go. Okay, so he can weak it. Okay, so affinity could affect him. Fair play, fair play. Affinity could affect him. But I, you know, I, can't, I still can't see it being a problem. Because even if there's like... It, it might only be a problem if there's, like, super negative waves. But even then, he's going to steal, like, two of them. And then he can just sheep one that is a problem. And then he can put the, uh, the abilities on cooldown. I don't really see it as a problem. Honestly, I just think he's so incredibly powerful. And you've got to love it how they basically bring a champion that's going to make Live Arena hell, hell just at the same time they add new missions that makes this want need to do Live Arena, you know? It's um, it's classic Plarium. With one hand, we give you something. With the other hand, we give you something else. So, anyway, let's get some Live Arena done. And then we're going to be doing a lot of uh, Hydra. I I'll be honest, I messed up over the weekend. Um, I didn't do half the regearing I was meant to do. So I've got an expensive bill ahead of me. A lot of silver costs. It's, um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. We'll start with the king and queen. Uh, are you sure it'll go through stone skin? My understanding, that's how the sheep debuff works. Now, it could be different, but my understanding is that is how the sheep debuff works. It cannot be blocked by anything. That is my understanding. Um, like I haven't had a chance to even like rebuild any of my damage dealers right now. I I have. I'll show you this. I'll do this one fight. I'll show you what I've done, Duchy. You'll love it. You'll be very happy with me. As soon as Armand's is summonable, I I quit Live Arena. It's gonna be awful. He's st he'll be summonable as of Thursday, Nobo. So. 
Can someone explain what a hybrid fusion is? Yes, Raiden. This is why I wanted to do the poll. Let me end the poll. So I wanted to see how many of you have never done a hybrid fusion. So 17% has never done it and 9% have never, uh, don't know what it is. Okay, so a good 25% of you, 30% of you don't know what it is. That's fair enough. Uh, let me just pick here. We pick Duchess Shemnath. Shemnath. I mean, should do that, right? Um, hey, YST. So, what is a hybrid fusion? You have three forms of fusions. You have fragment fusions. This is what you're probably most familiar with. I was expecting that. That's fine. I probably shouldn't have um, expected him not to ban my torment. Uh, fragment fusions. Fragment fusions, you basically do the events, they give you fragments. Once you get the fragments, it stays in your fragment portal, and then you summon the champion from the fragment portal. That is a fragment fusion. I'm probably going to lose this unless I'm faster than them. I don't think I am. Maybe we'll be all right. That's a bit annoying. I mean, it, it will take a lot for him to kill my... Holy moly! The hell is that?! What the hell was that? All right. I made a mistake though there, it's fine. Um, I was distracted. Now a traditional fusion, so the fragment, collect, fragment collector fusion is one type. The traditional fusion, you find, you have a series of events as you normally do. Each event will give you a rare champion. You take that rare champion to level 40, you ascend it, and then you fuse four of those rare champions to make an epic. You take the epic champion to rank five you ascend it and then you fuse those epic champions to make your legendary fusion that is a traditional fusion now a hybrid fusion is a combination of both but it's the worst version of a combination of both the way the hybrid fusions works is instead of rare champions you're going to be collecting fragments for the epic champion and those fragments will then be used to craft those epic champions. You take the epic champions out, but you still need to take the epic champions to rank 5, fully ascend them, get them up to level 50, and then use them to fuse the rare, uh, fuse the legendary. The reason why we say it's bad is because it costs you silver, a lot more than a fragment collector, because you have to spend north of 2.6, I think it is, 1, 3... Is it a million? No, no, no. It's not a, it's not a million silver to fuse it. I think it's, it's either 300,000 to fuse the legendary or it's a million. I think it's 300,000 to fuse the epic, which is 3691. So I think it's about 2.2 .2 million silver to fuse. Anyone, double, anyone able to confirm that? I can't remember if it's the mythical that's a million. It is a million, isn't it? Yes. So it's going to cost you 2.2 .2 million silver just to fuse it. You need to make four rank fives. And you have to fully ascend them with potions. And after that, you have to get them all up to level 50. So it has it's, it's, it costs you a lot more energy because you have to do those epics. But the worst part about it is if you miss one fragment, the whole event is a failure. Because you can't... You, you can get lucky. You can summon the epic. With traditionals, you kind of like can summon the rare. Sometimes you get a bit lucky that way if you make a mistake. But if you make it, this, the, the way the hybrid fusions normally work, you have to do every event. So it's a grind. It's difficult. So what I will suggest to people is when you go for it, don't immediately fragment fuse the epics. Keep hold of them, depending on where the champion chase falls. If the champion chase is right at the start of the event and it doesn't matter but sometimes you can save yourself like 750 points because you'll have three or four epics you can fuse in the champion chase to get you through there but they normally don't give you any spare fragments in these hybrid events so yes captain sparrow as we call it captain jack sparrow our man's is a hybrid fusion so you will need to collect fragments to make epics make epics to make legendaries so the epic to legendary is a normal traditional fusion. The epic collection is all about fragments. Um, it's a bug, I think, Dent of Flames. I'm pretty sure if YST is still in the chat, YST, do you ever hear back from um, from them about the Asselin bug? Or the Asselin bug? I can never say his name. It is the worst type because you just cannot afford to take your foot off the gas pedal. If you make a mistake, you miss something, it's it's terrible. Yeah, new new fusion is a it's a hybrid fusion, yes. 
Is this weekend a summon rush? I don't know. I mean, it's a champion chase we just had. It should be green virus. I would imagine so. It's better than taking 16 rays. It is and it isn't. Because you can normally acquire those rays. And sometimes, if you think about it, often you can sometimes get the epic. I mean, you could still get that with a hybrid. But I, I find the traditional fusion is better. Because the thing about a traditional fusion is you can often save a lot of champion training by making the raise during a champion training. You can't really do that with just four, three or four epics. So. I don't have any left, Dimitri. I have none left to summon. So it doesn't matter about reset anymore. Lana Tharal was one. Uh, Emic was a, a hybrid. Brogni was a hybrid. Uh, I don't think Newt was a hybrid. I think Newt was a normal one. Amic was definitely. Lana Tharal was definitely. And Brogni was definitely. All three of those. Uh, is it worth it to pull all souls tomorrow? I think it's probably worth pulling your immortal soul stones. And then I would suggest it's up to you if you want to pull your immortal. But I would suggest it's definitely worth pulling your mort uh, your immortal soul stones. But your immortal soul... Your, the, the tier one stones, it's up to you. Tier two, I would say, is probably worth. Uh. Sigmund. Yeah, Sigmund was a hybrid, but nobody ever went for that one because I didn't. That's the only fusion that I've ever skipped is Sigmund because I like the myth that was the fusion. You know? Um. You're 52. Whoa. Oh. I mean, the way I look at it is you're not... We don't really know what they're going to do. Are they ever going to do, like, a boosted rarity? Are we going to get, like, better boosted summons? It's hard to say. I think in terms of an immortal point of view, it's a pretty okay option. It's better than nothing. Uh, and obviously, it's with a rush event, I think. So the rush is a little bit more consistent. You can kind of work out when you see the rush what kind of extra rewards you're going to get, Reaper, by how many sh how many stones you can summon. It's, a very, it's almost like a very confirmed exact timeline of rewards. Um, oh, this is a bit nasty. I mean, I can force the ban of Tormin, and then I can force that. He's got to ban the Tormin because he has no immunity. Surely. Surely he bans the Tormin. Okay, well, I didn't expect that. Um, I'll be honest. That was a bit awkward. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but you can't see the rewards, is what I meant, uh, Kether. He's going to do that. I don't think he... Uh... I forgot Xena turned me at boost when you uh, buff her, so I'm probably going to lose Vlad. I don't think I can win this team. No, I can't win this team. Because I can't do anything. I'm going to lose. Why Vlad over Rotus? Because every time I pick Rotus, they pick Ultimate Death Knight and I can't do anything. And Vlad is just built at the moment. I don't know if I want to pull my Eternal Soul Stones. I'm a bit like... I'm a bit... I'm on, on the fence, you know? I don't know if I want to pull um, my Eternals. So... It's probably going to give me a bot now because I must have lost the one before today. Yeah, that's why I don't know if I want to pull my Eternals. Because there is no boost. So I'm like... I might just end up pulling them. It depends what mood I'm in. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know if they ever will boost the Eternals. Because the boost is too powerful. It would give you like a 50% chance of getting a rank 6 instead of 25%. It's very... You know, it's very difficult. Isn't, what, so what I mean by that is because I lost three in a row. It, it kind of does this weird fail out. I don't know if it gives you a bot necessarily. But it, it breaks... It basically breaks. And there must be bots. Don't worry, there is bots. There will be bots in gold. 
It might not be as prevalent, but it, it might not give you a bot, but there will be bots in gold because how else would you play the game if there was no one else playing? What happens when everyone gets up to gold two, three, four? There will be at some point bots present. I am tired of seeing this monkey, honestly. Every single goddamn fight. Nobody wants to pick anything else other than monkey. They need to get into a... Like, honestly, there are other champions in the game other than Sun Wukong. Yeah, I'll know the missions as soon as they're in the game code, Nicholas, and I'll make sure they're on the website. Oh, you got 52 small ones. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's different. I was going to say 52 mini medium ones. Yeah, they're nuts. Uh, this one's probably fine. Uh... Is it a soul chase or soul rush? I'm pretty sure it's a, ru it's a rush, right? It's an event. Uh, do you think Seek from the buff will make him a top 10? It depends how much multiplier they give him, George. I don't really feel like they solved the fundamental problem with Siegfried, which is he's not a mythical champion. The problem with Siegfried is he just doesn't change form. So he's not a mythical champion, which is a real shame. All they had to do to Siegfried to make him good was just allow you to switch form. See, this is what happens. The moment I pick Rotus, they pick Ultimate Death Knight. Now I can't do anything, so I have to ban Ultimate Death Knight, which is annoying. <sighs> The reason, uh, the reason why, um, QWERTY, is I, I don't like leaving DPS to last pick because I feel like it gives me less flexibility in the sense that um, if I wanted to, like, counterpick a Tormin or counterpick something else like that, that's my concern if I leave him to last pick is, you know... Do we think this has got a reaction? No, good. Uh, I have to... Why do my... Why does my Rotus never get an extra turn? I... <sighs> Uh oh, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, I lived. So now we just got to kill him. Make sure the monkey doesn't get a turn. Start farming some HP. Should be fine. Theoretically. The monkey's the problem here. It's fine. We'll eventually kill it. I'm just... I'm a bit paranoid of weak hitting, which is why I'm not um, A3 in his Pythian. I'm a bit paranoid I'll just weak hit and then the monkey's gonna one shot me and he's probably gonna still one shot me anyway because there's gonna be a revive coming in a moment alright this is the moment yes there we go nice <sighs> True, true. Um, so, it's, it's kind of like... The thing about the Immortal Stone... Uh, the Mortal Soul, Soul Stones, the Tier 1, is if they ever do, like, a better rarity boost, it could be better. 
Um, it could be better. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Basically, I, to be honest, if you got 52, you might as well just eat them and see what happens, I guess. It's better than nothing. What are multipliers on Ankara's A1? I don't know, pretty bad. But he had no HP left, so. Thoughts on Feral for Arena as well as Hydra? I think he's better in Hydra, but he's still a solid support. Hey, look. Is our favorite duo, Mr. Wukong frigging Ultimate Death Knight. Monk, I'm going to start calling this duo Monkey Knight. No, they will probably do a soul event as part of the fusion. They pretty much said they weren't going to do that like months ago, and I don't think that's going to change. Ooh. Interesting. Um, I need to figure out how to counter these uh, because I can't one-shot them. If they take away my Narcissus, I can't one-shot the, the, the Rotus. Which is a concern. Prove that. It'll force the Romantu ban, probably. But then at least I'll keep my Narcissus. Oh, man. If I let the Arbiter through, I'm just going to get boosted in one shot. If I ban, if I don't ban the Ultimate Death Knight, I can never do anything. <sighs> just take the aura away. I'm tired of these teams, honestly. They need seasonal rotations in Live Arena to make it more fun. Like, make it so that there's, like, a limited pools or something. So that it just at least changes the meta every now and then. Force people not to have to pick the best in class. Because this is just, like, every team is the same. It's so boring. I don't understand how people... See, that's, that's what I was afraid of. Um, I mean, we can do this at least. And, like... Excuse me, how did you live? How did he live? Oh, I'm done for. Done for. Whatever. Honestly, I'm so bored of Wukongs. It's it's actually getting on my nerves a little bit. No, it'd be really good acrobat. I'm talking about things like um you can only select heroes from an alliance or you know, stuff like that. That's what I think is really good. It will be more interesting than this bullcrap. No, they won't. Honestly, if you do it correctly, it's much more interesting. If you actually have to, like, be a bit more creative, it'd be much, so much more fun. Now, I'm not necessarily saying in the current raid ecosystem that can work, because obviously re-gearing is, and, and that is a big problem, but... <sighs> I picked too many supports. <sighs> yeah, but in a better way, like, aspects of the Curse City is, is not bad. The problem is they just take it to a level that's very extreme. So, just speed boosting across speed boost, and I can't outboost him, so I'll just try and tank the Taras. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you, you. Okay, I'm not saying it can work in the current ecosystem. I'm saying to make Live Arena more interesting, they need to make, they need to make more more matters other than the standard like at the moment players are forced to pick the best champions because there's no way they can survive any other way now can you do it in the current ecosystem probably not am i gonna get a turn probably not 
Yeah, if you had, like, drafting, like, gearing and drafting within the live arena that didn't affect your silver count, and then you actually had, like, changing seasonal themes, then that would be better. At the moment, this, like, arbitrary ladder forces you into a situation where it's like, if you don't pick the best champions in the game, you can't compete. And that's where it gets stale and boring, because what you end up having then is almost like playing League of Legends, and it's the same five champions all year round. It's boring. Yeah, the Lydia Strength and Buff is what I saw, QWERTY. An initial ban isn't going to work either. It's too easy. Yeah, but I don't think that's a problem, Acrobat, because they normally have enough different options that people can still play it, but they're always still meta. They're just never going to be the best in class. And if you want to play competitively, then it should be the best in class. You know what I mean? Um, so... I'm going to lose because I didn't get rid of the ultimate death knight. I mean, to be fair, they could just do a proper champion balance. That would be a great start. Because look, I can't do anything now for the next 5 million turns. Just try and break his shield. We kept. The only good thing is Baron in himself can't one-shot um, my entire team. Because he can't one-shot the Rotas. If he if he one-shots both my Revivers, though, I'm done for. There's no increased attack, so it shouldn't be... Yeah, I was going to say, it shouldn't be possible. But unfortunately, i got to keep just whacking away at this Ultimate Death Knight. That hurt. Don't sleep my chance. And I've got no books on my Ancora yet, so <sighs> it means I can't take the sleep. I don't oh man, I've lost. GG. Should have banned the ultimate death knight. Man, this is <sighs> What's my record today? Two four. Wow. Yeah, I know I've got loads of chance I can build for it. The pro the thing is, I'm not saying I don't have the champions. What I'm saying is I'm bored of seeing exactly the same team. This will be Wukong, Ultima Death Knight every single time. And it's boring. Like, it's so boring. People have no creativity. They just want to pick the same old champions. It's so boring. And you might say, I have no creativity because I'm picking the same old champions. The difference here is half my champions aren't built because City of Centranus has broken my account. So that's not help. That's really not helping me. The only champions I have working right now are the champions I've built within the last week. And I know that Vlad's working because I use him everywhere for like... Con the rest of my account is just like in a mess. There's so many champions in like that are in half complete stages. Fenax has got like three pieces of gear on him. So it's, it's like that's the main issue. Um that I have right now is... 
half of my champions are not built. <laughs> I just wish people would like think beyond Sun Wook on Ultimate Death Knight. It's just like at least this guy's gone like Leo. I don't see a Leo that often anymore. Hmm. I think I just... Hmm. I think I do that. Take the Arbiter away. Even if the Nishak gets a turn, I can cleanse and I think he can lock me out. So it's fine. I think it's fine. No, because he's got he's got double block debuffs, so Torment wouldn't work here. Um, and I'm actually not worried about stopping his turn meter boosting, because I was going to ban his Arbiter. Well, this is it, last FFW. It's going to be arm, like our man's everywhere. I have so much more enjoyment in Arena losing to a team that I'm like, oh, that's a really creative way of doing something. That's where I have fun. Do we think this guy's got reaction? No. Cycle? Oh, beautiful. My friend, unfortunately, you got Rotust. I apologize. I feel dirty for doing that. You know, I feel I just what I meant is I just like I have so much more enjoyment seeing like the Shemnath. Getting nailed by a Shemnath to me is so much more interesting. Because I'm like, oh my god, Shemnath one-shot me? What the hell? That's really cool. I enjoy that. That's more fun. I don't mind losing like that. But when I'm just losing constantly to... Oh, look. I'm stuck waiting for the Ultimate Death Knight to die because it's Ultimate Death. I just... It gets boring after a while, you know? And maybe it's just because I'm a bit tired from, like, doing a lot of live arena over the last, like, four week, four days. Like, I've done about... 70 fights over the last four days and maybe that's having an impact he wants to go bomb team he wants to go bomb team so i'm gonna be smart i'm gonna leave my last picks i think you're being sarcastic wicked <laughs> Okay, yeah, he's going speed team, but he's got no. So Tormin is going to be the last pick. With the only thing I worry about is Jorgid is very good in a Rotus, but he's very good into everyone, so it doesn't really matter. The only thing is Baron technically has reaction, but he is quite slow. I feel like I could do that. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh damn, I forgot he was going to instantly ban then my Tormin. I should have banned the Arbiter. But then I couldn't really outban his speed. I probably should have picked Necra instead of Shujen. Because I don't think I'm going to be fast enough. I think I'm going to get it speed boosted out and lose. This one I'm losing because of I'm out of practice. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have picked Shujen. I should have gone for the Necra to protect from being bombed. Because I'm going to get bombed out here. There's no chance. Jorgid will do that. I mean, here yeah, might survive. I actually might survive here. Take out the reviver. All right. Okay. Bombs just did not do enough. Okay, well can happen this one should be fine I will say I'm probably quite grouchy today so when I'm moaning about something I just think it's for me the things I love about raid is diversity when someone like someone said to me uh, a strategy for um for Amius, and it really was really cute, really cool. What they were doing was they were using Helior 
to absorb all the debuffs and then put it back on the enemy. But what they were actually doing was they were, they were giving their team continuous heals so that the continuous heals would transfer to heal reduction and then they were using Helior to send the heal reduction back onto the boss. And that to me was like, that is like amazing to see. That person there, like that's like a highlight of my day. Seeing someone do something really cool and crazy without thinking it, like I would never think of that. That's That to me is what I really love about the community about Raid. When I just like end up seeing the same team, the same fights, the same content, that, that, that just, I get bored after a while. And that's where raid starts getting boring and why probably why a lot of the end game players are quitting because they're just tired of fighting the same fight every single day it's why metas are so important that you keep changing them because if you allow a meta to stagnate that's when you can get in into a, a spot of bother hmm yeah, a little bit, but obviously Helior will have taken all the debuffs from your entire team, whereas Lissandra just sends it back on the A1. So it was actually like cleansing the team and then putting heal reduction on the boss. I knew that was coming, but it's actually okay because I can do this into... Ultimate Death Knight's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It was Jorgid. I mean... I can allow three damage dealers through. Which I think it's the best option. Take out the Arbiter. Because at least I... Wow, we allowed my two damage dealers through. Interesting. We'll see what happens. If I take the Arbiter out, at least I take the increased attack away from Jorgid. Whereas if I just ban Siffy, they're just gonna they're just gonna turn me to boost me. So I can do this. Is there a shield? No. I can do this. Slow him down. Kill him. I don't mind Rotus, because, you know, he, he he can't really he can't really kill anyone. Like he can kill my Shujen. And then maybe like See, he can't kill anyone, so. This should revive, I would imagine. Okay, he's not going to revive at all. Monkey's going to come back now. That's fine. Now I can block revive. No more of you. Monkey is going to steal buffs. It's fine. Don't mind about that. Turn me a boost. He's going to have the shield now, so he should probably revive Jorgid. I can revive my dudes. And hopefully, I don't get one shot. This is what I'm afraid of. Do I just get one shot? No, good. So now it's the quest to kill Siffy. That was a, that was a weak Jorgid. That Jorgid, either he low rolled his passive. I mean, he had to increase attack. He had increased attack. That should have, like, what? That should have nuked me. The only thing I can think of is he didn't roll his passive, or it's just a very low Jorgid. To be fair, I will be building a Wukong. I have no complaints about building a Wukong myself because I, I don't feel like I've soap opera boxed it. I just personally think I can't I can't sit on a soapbox and tell everyone how terrible Ultimate Death Knight is and then use it myself. I just in my it just contradicts my brain. I know a lot of people would say it's fine, whatever it's the meta, just accept it. I just can't do it. I feel like I'd, I'd be hypocritical. Oh, this one's gonna be um fun one.
Pokemon case. He pivoted to Speed Tune last minute. That's fine. I can ban the Arbiter. Mm. I can't pick Rotus into this. Well, I can if I ban the uh, the Harima, but I get locked out anyway. Um, I'll never kill the Harima if I pick Rotus. Try it. Let's see how it goes. Oh, come on! I need to finish ascending my gear. Oh, that would have been a win. Oh. Because of what I was just trying to do there, Kirk. If I kill the Siffy, I can take out the two um, main threats here, which is the, the, the Warlord and the Siffy. And control them. But I didn't get the extra turn. So now I'm going to die. That was basically the win. If I kill the Siffy, no buffs. It killed the Warlord. But... I didn't quite get the kill. Should stay one. That was super unlucky. Had I got the um, the A2, um, it would have been okay. That's just me needing to um, finish my ascension. I need uh, my get my rotus gear still needs to be dusted around. If he if he had a little bit more crit damage, he would have killed her. Then I would have killed the um, the warlord. They wouldn't have had buffs, which meant the Taras probably doesn't do... He might one-shot a couple, but not as many. And then I can probably go back around with the turn meter control on my um, Shu Zhen and get back around to Rotus to finish off like Harima. That was the plan. She didn't hit reaction. I didn't kill her. I didn't do enough damage to her. That was all. Yeah, I do. I still need to get some masteries on Shu Zhen and uh, Ancora. That's why I haven't leveled them any higher. To be honest, the last few levels aren't going to make a big difference, but they will help tank some more. Okay. He should ban the neck rat. If he's a smart person, he bans the neck rat, yeah. So I should lose this. My banking was don't was basically would ban one of the nukas, and then I'd have Necrot protecting one of them. But banning Necrot is the problem because now I have no speed, and they have speed aura over me. So I will probably get Siffied into Uko stun, blocked into uh, thing. The only good thing is I got bolster, so it'll disable Uko's A2. Wow, they're not as fast as I thought. Well, that's just going to help. He can strip my buffs, but he can't give me block debuffs, and he can't do anything now. So this is actually that cut-in was actually really valuable. Well, he didn't put a speed aura. Who did he pick as lead? Did he pick Siffy? Wow, that's weird. Why would you... Why would you not...
Is he gonna A3? I don't know. We don't know. Well, I resisted everything. Like, he can A2. It's fine. I don't really care about that. The only downside is I, 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 ideally I can A3 with my, actually if I can A3, that'd be really good. I can block revive the, it's fine. Oh, that's okay. Block revive. Lovely. Double hit. I probably should have saved the A1, but it's fine. I can re reduce it. Uh, the A2, I probably should have um, done it. I don't really know QWERTY. It didn't seem to do any damage, and he resisted. And Essie, like, 3% did, but... I mean... Spirit. This is AoE. Oh, and it refreshed. Rip him. What is this Wukong build? Is it damage? I mean, to be fair, I do have reaction on both DPSs here. Ah, there we go. I must have reaction proc'd it. I bet I reaction proc'd it instead. Because I got reaction on pretty much all of these champions. Um, kill him. Who's she going to revive? Probably... Please revive the monkey. I want you to revive the monkey. So he doesn't have 100% turn meter fell when you will anyway, so... Kill him again! There we go. I mean, the only reason why I haven't been using Baron is he's about 190 speed, so he's a bit slow. That's that's my only concern. He's, he's a little bit slow for, for Live Arena. He needs to really be like 240 speed. Yeah, he can't revive the... The block revive was nice, yeah. Yeah. Should have slept the Baron, I know. But he was probably dead from the the um the king the narcissus anyway. Should I should I mess up his day? Ultimate Death Knight, here we go. Monkey Knight. I want to fight Monkey Knight apparently. Monkey Knight, here we come. Monkey Knight. Any minute now. Any second now. In a billion years now. Oh, Lord above. It doesn't take you 20 seconds to, to choose Ultimate Death Knight. Yeah, I do I do feel like these this White King Narcissus and, and, and Korra was purpose-built. Has it gone again? Like, it shouldn't be breaking. Man, I need to have a look at this application beta thing. It's... When it breaks, what does the sound do? Is, uh, is the sound better now? Hmm, he wants to go speed. It's weird. I, I need to look into it. I thought it was like Google Chrome timing out, but I, I stopped it from doing that. Um... Yeah, I, do, I need to figure out what's causing it. Um, I'll have to do some research. I thought it was because Google Chrome was like going on sleep, but I've had it open in the background and I stopped it from doing that. It's weird. I need to check what's causing it. Ever since I've put it into different um, like different uh, audio tracks since my collab, it's gone a bit funny. Brackus? Brackets one threw me off a bit. I think just taking out the lockout is important. I will get boosted a bit. Yeah, you know, I know I wanted diversity. It's an odd one. 
I mean, Brachus can do a lot of damage to a single target damage dealer. So... I mean, he technically shouldn't A2 here. He should sleep, really. Like, this isn't going to kill anyone. He's not going to do any damage to me here. He might polymorph me, but it's fine. I mean, I suppose, if you think about it, it's quite an excellent Rotus counter. Yeah, that's what he's picked it for. He's saw, seen the Rotus. Very clever. Very clever. Very smart. I like that. I don't know if it's going to work because he got reactioned, you know, so I can just... You know, start healing back up. Losing Narcissus to Polymorph hurt. I'll be honest, that was a bit, bit of a loss. But if my... He's, he's not got any block revive, so... It's going to be hard for him to kill me. Like, he might be able to kill my um, Rodas. Yeah, that's why I picked Elva. Because I felt like it would be just a good heal. And also like the passive Veil, which is really nice. I love extra turns interrupt his passive. That's that's something they need to fix about Brachus. When Brachus revives, if you killed him with an extra turn like Rotus or, or um, Narsus there, Brachus has to wait before he can take his turn. I feel like Brachus shouldn't have to wait because if you if that, that should be a viable counter. But you can see he couldn't do anything because he had to wait for me, which is a bit unfair. That was smart though. If I didn't have reaction, my Rotus would be dead there. Reaction is what countered him. Um, if I didn't have reaction, he his, his Brachus would have one-shot my Rotus, and it would have made that a lot harder. Because he sheeped my Narsus, and I would have been out of, out of the fight for a while. Uh, no, my Rotus is in lethal. Yeah, because I had no ability on cooldown on Narsus, uh, Exolithan. So, if there's no... If Narsus has all his abilities, it picks someone else. So... <laughs> Whites are better than werewolves, yeah. Yeah, Brachus, Brachus is actually one of the legendary champions I wouldn't mind getting because the things you can do in clan boss with Brachus is quite fun because he is the only one that I think of, that I can think of, I don't know if any of the newer champions do it, that used to be the only one that was damage plus weaken plus increased attack to all allies. So he had a very unique set of skills that was really powerful. Um, I don't know if there are others now. Okay, so you're counterpicking. I don't actually mind. That 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 That's fine with me. Uh, I do want to pick at least one Reviver. So we'll lock in some speed boosting. Yeah, we haven't had Ultimate Death Knight for ages. Look how much more interesting the game is now that we actually can talk about like, hey, why is he picked a Brachus? Not just like, oh, look, it's Ultimate Death Knight. Yeah, I really would love him for, for clan boss stuff. No, we haven't done Hydra yet to Taiku. We're going to be doing that after I finish these last two fights. We'll be looking at uh, Hydra in a moment. So you've arrived just in time. This Garol, by the way, you if you see a Garol, um, YST got Garol the other, in, in earlier when we uh, the other day when we were playing on, uh, he was playing a bit of Live Arena. I'm trying to get YST back into Live Arena. He loves it really, because he's got like Marichka and he's got like Harima. He's got the champions for it. Um, he could definitely do it. Uh, I needed another damage dealer, probably Baron. And I need probably... I actually think I can just turn me to control this dude. So I'm going to bring my Arbiter instead. Because I'm probably going to have to ban... I'm probably going to have to ban that Garrel. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Ban, ban the Garrel. He can't actually outpace my two champions here. I'll, I'll outspeed him. Garrel's nasty. Get him into live arena too. I'm trying. I'm trying. He loves it really. Um, I think he's got the account for it. He, YST just needs to like sort his gear out a little bit. 
but he's got some crazy champions. Like, he's got, like, three Leorises or something. I'm like, dude, share the love. I'd love a Leorius. Um. All right. GG. Sorry, mate. Whoops. Uh, Leo sucks now. Ah, he does and he doesn't. You still have to watch out for a Leo. If you, if you, you've got to be careful about Leo. Yes, technically with Sun Wukong's around, but if you, if you ban the Sun Wukong, you pick Leo. You got to be careful because that Leorius can do some work. Yes, there is like the Rotus that can counter him, the ultimate. I'm not saying he's the best option. I'm not saying he's the answer. I'm just saying that Leorius is not bad. All right, well, I have the knight, and I'll have my... I'm going to go Elva. Is there any particular build? Yeah, so you want to basically get her in her alternate form, buff her up with loads of people. Like, the, if you can get, like, Cardiel, Siffy, Duchess combo, that's tons of buffs. When she drops HP, you get Leorius passive with like a massive bonus. Not much can withstand a Garol full nuke blooded damage there at that point. Oh lord, look at this. I feel like... Um... If I go double... I'm going to go Shuja and Baron and leave my support pick last, because I'll either need a second reviver, or I can go full speed, depending on what he picks. I am on an anti mortu See you later, Papatez. At the moment, I tried a very clever Mortu team, and it did not work. Oh, oh. Now, you got to be careful with... To some extent, you've got to be careful. So, what, I'm actually going to speed, and I'm going to ban out that. you got to be careful a little bit, because... Skull Crowns can still do some damage. Probably not against this team because it's just too high HP. The The plan I'm going for here is out Aura, out Speed, and just one-shot it. That's my plan. Because I bet they've started with a Bolster. Yeah. We'll see if we can outspeed them, though. No, it's, it's going to be a full damage Skull Crown. Full damage Skull Crown for sure. Stone skin. So I need to White King Narsus. Like so. To get rid of the Rotus. Now, she's probably going to revive the Cardiel. I would revive the Cardiel. But, yeah. This doesn't ignore... Now, what I can do is just A1. For now. Wait for the blast. See, I, I said it was a nasty hit. Gotta be careful about those nukes sometimes. Should just be able to finish this off. Go. Oh, it's criminals. I didn't even notice. Sorry, criminals. That was a full-blooded Skullcron, though. I appreciate the effort there. I knew it was going to be full damage because when I saw the six stars, like, I, I was actually in the back of my mind thinking, i got to be careful here because if that Skullcron does get like an, a, a buffless attack, it can do some good damage. What I would suggest that you do is do not pick Ancora. And let, did were you planning on picking Narsus out of out of interest? Were you, were you planning on picking Narsus with uh, Ancora? Okay, so that was fine. What you should have done was actually ban my Narsus. The reason why is. Rotus 
is just counted extremely hard by Narsus. I would have taken out the Narsus because that means I can't one-shot your Rotus with Baron. It's one of the one of the weaknesses with Baron here. Baron can't one-shot your, your Rotus. It'll proc his passive, which means that then you can come in. And because I've got a generally squishy team here, you could have probably A3'd my Arbiter, A2'd my Baron. That would have put me behind. I would have had to revive someone. And you didn't have any sort of shielding. As long as you didn't A2 shield with Ancora and controlled it, my Narsus is not going to be able to kill your team with one hit. It needs both hits. Your Skull Crown was more than enough damage to help the Rotus out. I'll give another turn to Baron. True. Um, but you had Stone Skin Ancora anyway. And I wouldn't have. Because, like like I just said, if I gave an extra turn to Baron, he can't one-shot the Rotus. So I'll proc your Rotus passive, and then Rotus can interrupt. So that was the main reason why you lost, is you allowed me to have Narsus. Because it was Narsus that took your Rotus out of the fight. If you pick Rotus, you have to take out the Narsus. Or have a solution to stop the Narsus from killing you. Because he will ignore the Rotus passive. That was the main problem. Because your skull, your skull crown is well built, yeah. She she did a lot of damage. She took out my Arbiter, nearly took out my, my Elva. My Elva's reasonably well built. Not the craziest, but she's like, you know, at, at least gold 2 quality built. And she was in Bolster, so... But that was the only mistake he made, I think, was you let Narsus through. Because Narsus is just a hard counter to Rotus. There's nothing Rotus can do to stop it, whereas Baron can't kill Rotus. It's why I've kind of why I kind of stopped using Baron for a while because it, if if you're fighting an Ultimate Death Knight Rotus combo, it's very difficult for him to actually do anything. Because if his A3 doesn't kill everyone, that's it. It's GG, you know. Yeah, because obviously Skullcrown's got um built-in Swift Parry. You're, you're correct, George. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing I just did last time. And I pick Nars I'm going to pick Narsus away from him. Now, you can play mind games with this. If you know you don't have Narsus, you can pick Ancora to force me to pick Narsus because I think you're going to pick Narsus. You know, if I think they're going to pick the pairing, like if someone first picks Siffy, I tend to like think, mm, maybe I should pick Rotus because I don't want them to have the pairing. Mikage is going to have to get banned here. I hate fighting Mikages. They're an absolute nightmare. If I pick Shujen, I kind of have to pick a damage dealer. Or a utility, but I, I might want to go full turn meter boost. I think I'm going to go Rotus here. It's risky, though, because I absolutely have to ban... Mikage. If I don't ban Mikage, it's going to be a problem. It's been nice we haven't had an ultimate death knight for three fights. Yeah, to be honest, Ancora's A1, even without White King Narsus, is really good. I did a, I've, I've recorded a, a guide on Narsus today, uh, on Ancora today, and I, I found it to be very good without Narsus. There it is. Like, that's, that's why I don't like picking Rotus. Because this is now a, a real problem for Rotus. <sighs> They're generally quite slow. So if I pick Baron, I might just be able to overwhelm them. Let's just try it. Take out the ultimate death knight. I might just be able to overwhelm them. We'll see what happens. I'll probably lose this, though, because I've picked too much DPS. Oh, wow. I might be able to actually do this. They let me have Narsus. That's a, probably a mistake. No, it's because I picked Rotus too early. So, therefore, I showed my hand. And then the moment I pick Rotus, they're like, right, Harima. Harima, Ultimate Death Knight. It's a hard count. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Yeah. They have a bolster shield. Don't put bolster against Narsus. They will revive like uh, Lady Makage, so it's not like I've won yet, but... She's going to transform. She should do. 
to steal my buffs. Theoretically. Should transform. Should transform. Okay, now A3. 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 Darky, thank you so much for becoming 12 months. Enjoy your purple badge. That's why it's a problem now, because now my Rotus is probably dead. Valken and Monkey is really strong. Oof, I survived. Uh, I kind of need to take you out. Wow, what the hell? Oh, I might be able to block Revive you. Nice. Well, Harima's out of the picture. Now, as long as I don't get one-shot by the Monkey A2. Don't one-shot me, don't one-shot, don't one-shot me. Okay, it's not a damage Wukong. It's fine. It's just, it's a debuff Wukong. Uh, why three is why is a three? Because he wants to remove my buffs. He wants to remove my buffs because I had a lot of like um, speed buff and everything. So a three will remove the buffs, give weaken, and just clear it out. And now we can stun. He wouldn't have been able to do that because I had block debuffs up. So now it's this is where Mikage is a problem. Because well, when will I ever get a turn? This is where this is this is where Mikage now is probably going to win this fight because I'm never going to get a turn. Because every time she takes a turn, she's going to reduce my Rotus turn meter. Now an A1 to finish off my... The only good thing is his monkey's quite weak apart from his A1. He'll sleep my Elva. Oh. He's going to ally attack the Elva. There's a small chance I can win. No, it's gone. Because he'll polymorph my my Brotus probably. And I'm going to just get perm. I mean, he can't perma-sleep me now, so that's something. There's a small hope. If I can A3 the Ancora, maybe. But it's unlikely, because he's going to A2 and polymorph my... Uh... Oh, no, he didn't. All right. Do I get extra turns? Why does my Rotus never get an extra turn? So annoying. Killer. Oh my god, I need to finish building my Rotus. That's why I'm losing because we're not getting enough damage out. Ugh. Yeah, it's because I need to dust my Rotus. Rotus is a work in progress. Unlucky though. It's not me that's taking forever. I should just end it, but I didn't want to... I don't like ending it when someone's won. Fair play. I got unlucky there. If I had an extra turn on the A1, if I managed to, like... I, I should... What The mistake I made in that fight was I rotused A3 when Harima was still alive, so I lost half my ignore defense. I probably should have waited before Harima was killed by Narsus, then gone in on the Ancora, so I just played it a bit wrong. Uh, but a big problem there is my Rotus is still... A work in progress. But, you know, 9-6 record, it, it's alright. Um, what is that? 9 wins out of 15. It's a 60% win rate. We'll take it. We'll take it. We had a good end to it. Uh, Dandabir, 16 months. Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you so much for becoming a minion for such a long period. I can't believe we've been streaming for this long. Like, um, can't believe it. Uh, but yeah, so you'll see like the Rotus at the moment is like he needs dusting, right? This needs to be upgraded. Need to farm that up. That one probably I've just dusted to crit damage. This needs like upgrading or dusting. This needs upgrading, dusting. This needs upgrading, dusting. Dusting. Upgrading. Dusting. Like, there's so much more damage to come from Rotus. That's really why he's struggling at the moment, because he's out of... He's not in a good shape. He will be, but he's not there yet. Yeah, we had some Lapsang Sushang today. Yeah, I did. 9-6, 15 fights. I've done 15 today. Hoping to catch a fight with me. Nice. When did I start YouTube? Like two and a half years ago? Whenever I whenever I joined HH Gaming, which is May, I think. Wow, it's been three years already and like that's crazy. It's been blown by. About two and a half years ago, yeah. Uh do you have any changed any insights on the after we got a sneak peek? I think I was pretty much spot on from what I could see, G Man. The problem is we can't see like the ones that are really going to matter are the final 60 or the final ones, not the first ones, because the first ones are going to be reasonably easy. I think they always are. It's the, it's the latter half, so. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I'm in an army. What to do with the energy quirky? Do I, do I put it into masteries or do I put it into um thing or do I just hold it for the fusion? I've been a bit 50-50 on it because it's been at like 2,000 for, for a day. I was like, do I just burn it or not? Yeah, if you think about it, SGT. Right? I've got 20. 12%. So there's 30. Well, 30% to come there. That would put him up to 285, 84%. Um, straight off the bat. And then if I put out all these extra attack and HP, that will increase. So it should be... like I think this is going to be speed. Or that'll either be speed or it'll be um, HP or something like that. I haven't quite decided yet. Maybe attack percentage. I haven't quite decided. Probably speed just to speed him up because he's at about 241 speed at the moment. Uh, the other thing I need is to glyph more speed up a bit because it's a bit low there. Um, it's a bit low there. And like, yeah, so once I finish mapping him out, he should be a much higher build. Uh, what's your ring and banner? So we got HP, HP with a attack percent in reaction. And then we've got HP banner. I've put him in blood shield because hopefully that just keeps him up like high. I don't really need to, but I think it's just the best banner that I've got on the faction. I mean, I could put him in something like this, but that's attack. You really want flat HP more than anything else. I do up that, which is nuts, but uh, he's in probably the best gear that I've got. The... the the amulet's not great because it's uh, resistance, but. Uh, for top row, probably HP. Probably HP. Just as much HP as you can get so you can scale him better. Yeah, I don't always pair him with an attack up. Not all the time, you know. I tried to, but... But, I mean, he's got a fair amount of attack already, considering none of this is ascended. Right, that probably... I, I'll probably make this attack percent. I'll probably make that attack percent. So, that's 40% attack to come. So, that's, like, a lot, you know? So, um... Yeah. How many medals do you have in store? Uh, like 14, 50. Just need to start saving them up. For the progress missions. So, but we're climbing, you know. We are we are ascending the ranks. We're at 2890 now. You know, we, we're climbing. Quintus is not far away. He's only, uh, he's only about a month away. We'll eventually get him. Eventually. Um, I'm quite happy with my 59% uh, win rate, really. Where's uh, Drock sitting up at the moment? Oh, he's sitting 11th. Crap. 
crazy lot, all these people. Do I even want to look at this? Look at it. Look at it. Fully plus four. Everything. Uh, do we know if one of the last missions is just to get the fragment trade collect? I would imagine one of the missions will get Quintus. It wouldn't shock me. T Swift probably does. If you can scam it, he probably will. One of the IPR people, I don't know who it is. I don't know if they're in it. Uh, IPR Taras has got an absolute disgusting Hydra combo. It's like 24 billion or something like that. It's, or 240 billion Hydra Clash points. It's disgusting. It's really stupid. Um, so, yeah. Oh, look. We're only one win away from the chest. <laughs> Funny that. Yeah, I don't actually get any more chests. Tomorrow we will, because we can exchange um, like five, so I can have a chest tomorrow. But, yeah. So, you know, we can exchange those. Yeah, IPR Taras, his, his Hydra team is nuts. 1.5 million energy. Oh, Lord above, that's nuts. Uh, do you think we can work towards the horse and romantic missions in tandem? Yes, you can. That's what they said. So the, once you unlock Arbiter, you will get both the Romantu and the pony missions uh, at the same time. At the same time. So you can work towards both of them. I'm pretty confident that one of them will be... Um, I'm pretty confident that one of them will be... Get Carnage, get Quintus, complete, I think it'll be complete 101 stages in Cintrana's hard. Obviously kill Amius on hard and normal. I think there will be things like potentially re-rolling. I think it could be things like ascending. I absolutely think one of them is going to be get a sick rank, awaken a champion to rank six. I don't know if they're going to tie it to rarity. There is a world they could say ascend a, a legendary to rank six. It's a very horrible world. I don't necessarily think it's a realistically true world. I don't think it's going to happen for sure. But I wouldn't put it past them. I've seen them do crazier things that have upset people. It, it wouldn't shock me if they did that. Um, absolutely not. Uh, quests. What quests have we got left? We've done everything. We've done everything today. We're finally collecting good amounts of lethal fragments. Look at it. So excited for the next CVC when we can make loads of lethal. So excited. Get a mythical champion. Potentially. I don't think they'll do that. They might ascend a mythical champion. I don't think it will be get a mythical champion. That would be crazy. Yeah, it's basically all the endgame activities. So that's that's what I... It's a little bit like High Mother Maud. It's not that High Mother Maud is a bad champion or a good champion or a crazy champion. She's actually quite a good champion. The problem is most people will never get her. Because the amount of skipping you have to do means that you probably have to skip like a year's worth of a fusion to get one champion that you might use as a, a, a glorified Doom Priest a little bit. Yes, I know she's got like a revive and um, it's probably a bit harsh to call it a glorified Doom Priest. But, you know, are you really like, for example, if you want this High Mother Maud, you'd have to sacrifice Armand's. Because you'd need those epic fragments, right? You're not going to do that. And what happens if they release another Armands as a fusion? You're probably not going to skip it. So it's, it's going to be the same thing with this Marius. Unless you're willing to commit to doing some of these very aggressive missions. Because there will be at least one mission that's like that Glyph mission. Where it was like, you need to get 40 rank 5s to maximum stats on a glyph. There will be something like that in the missions that just make, makes everyone go, oh, I can't be bothered. And I think that's the problem with Marius. I think 90 to 95% of people are just going to go, I'm not willing to do Cintrana's hard. Redemption. You just don't get enough, Dachi. You, you won't earn enough. In order for you to get High Mother Maud, I think the average is about 100 to 110 chests, right? And they exchange at five to one. So you need 500 fragments. You only ever get per year around about six to seven, around about six to seven fragment champions. So even if you skip, even if you do the fusions 
and you just like keep like 10 points. Well, that's going to take you, based on this angle, 500 divided by 10, 50 few fragment champions, which is going to take you eight years. Eight years. Assuming we get on average six, because normally we'll get three to four traditional and we normally get two to three hybrid. So it's anywhere between six to seven fragment champions a year. So it's going to take you eight years if you get 10 extra fragments every single fragment fusion. The only way to get high mother mod is to skip fusions. It's the only way. You know, if you if you skip fusions, you can get her in a year. You know, I love how people, when it first came out, was like, oh, you can just get dupe, you can get plus fours of these. I'm like, it's a lot of work to get plus four. Now, granted, if you're a player that used to skip a lot of fusions, like I know some people have like 120 chests out the bat. Yeah, exactly. But, but how many of the fusions did you do, Crouch in, Grandpa? You're the exact example I was thinking of. How many fusions did you do? It's probably like one or two. Yeah, there you go. So this is the Crouching Grandpa is the player that benefits from this system. They do 70% of a fusion here, 60% of a fusion there. If you skip a year's worth of fragment fusions, you've got plenty. You will probably get it. But I, I've never skipped a fusion apart from Sigmund because let's face it, Demitha was a legendary of that fusion. And I started with 30 chests, 32 chests. So for me, this champion, I'm never going to get it. Because I just can't see why I would want to sacrifice up to five or six legendaries to get a champion, which is basically an AoE Doom Priest Reviver. Yeah, I've done that a couple of times, Constant. Like, I did that with Nagorio, the epic. I pulled him out of the thing and I had 60 fragments. So I traded those in. But you just, it's just not enough of them. You know, if we had like 12 fragment fusions a year, then maybe. You just, you're just never going to sacrifice enough legendaries to go for it. Because we, we already know, like, champions like, for example, Blizzard, if you skipped him, he's potentially capable of doing Finite, Bommel, in Cintranos, very good at Finite Hard, Sand Devil, that's unskippable. Ugir, very, very good for some Cintrano stages, very good in Hydra, very good for various different scenarios. If you skipped it, you would have lost out on those. Certainly things like Jetney, you could potentially do it, but certain stages in Toronto, she's the only AoE drop defense, you know? And that, this is the problem now. This is the issue with Cursed City of Centranos. You skip a fusion at your own peril, because if you hit like stage eight and you didn't get the fusion and the fusion is what makes the stage so much easier, well, now you're, now you're screwed, you know? Now, hopefully, or I don't know, hopefully, maybe they won't add new rotations after the fifth rotation, which if in that's the case, we will know the rotations going forward. But I would imagine they'll change the restri restrictions. That re they'll basically update the game to change it at month five. So after the fifth rotation, we get brand new rotations again. They'll just reconfigure the whole thing and do it again, I would have thought. So... Yeah, I mean, what people wanted, and this is the thing, what people wanted wasn't a brand new champion. They just wanted to go, hey, I've got like 90 Ruel fragments. Can I just like trading my five leftover fragments to get that Ruel fragment champion that I didn't get because I wasn't playing the game? Or can I like trade one of my other ones at like a 50 to like a two to one ratio and actually go and get, say, I don't know, Walking Tomb Dreng because he would be really good for my account. That's what people wanted. They wanted a way to access the old fusions or complete a mini fusion. And you could do that by basically going, I don't really care for this fusion. Can I trade in half of my fragments and trade it for that other one? That's what they should have, should have done. When I get a fusion, I can convert the fragments. Say like I've got like Chromax right now. I could convert 100 fragments into... 40 universal fragments or 50 whatever rate they felt was appropriate so that i could guarantee myself a previous fusion 
That's what I would have liked to see. That's what players wanted. So they can go back and get the Walking Tomb Dreng or the Ruel or the White Queen Ancora. Say like someone pulls, I don't know, tomorrow, White King Narsus. They would go, do you know what? I'd really love that Ancora that was a fusion. You can only do it once, but that's a better system. And then afterwards, if you want to just have a generic chest that you can trade in for, fine. But for the, for, but please, one potion, one potion. If you think about it, five fragments is often found in a doom, uh, in like say a a, a, a to, uh, like a dragon tournament, right? A spider tournament. Those on average are around about two thousand energy. So they're basically telling you this one superior potion is equal to 2,000 energy. Like, at least make it 10. Like, come on. I actually think everything after the brew mark is fine. Chickens, feast, books, maybe throw in some, like, soul stuff, like soul coins. This is just like, it's, it's almost like complete polar opposites you get like one superior potion or you get a legendary book like it's just not even the same planet it's 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 and that's the only real problem i have with this it's not that these rewards aren't good it's just that some of the rewards are so bad it's like this stupid chest that i'm gonna get on reset it's not that it's terrible that i get a free reward it's just this is less than half a day's daily reward 250 coins is like two iron twin skis just like, please, make it a thousand. This is one month reward. Just give me one extra day of Iron Twins. That's all. Or give me everything here. Don't give me four things from this. Like, come on. I get more rewards from my eight keys I use. Like, that's all I'm... That's 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 kind of like where I'm at with it. I'm like, it's, it's not that the system's bad. It's just that you risk the reward being so terrible. The player just gets an awful feeling in their mouth. It's like, I traded... 2,000 worth, 2,000 energy worth of fragments for a superior arcane potion that I probably got on Clan Boss today on a reset. Pew. Yes. You'll love this, Duchy. Um, I don't know. Why ST reported it when it was on the test server, I'm pretty sure he said. Um, he reported it when it was on the test server, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> so, this team is terrible. I need to take this team out. I have been replanning my entire account. And this is basically everything that I think I need to run my account. Okay, a dungeon 10 hard for every single dungeon and a special one for spider 20 for silver farming and for like, if I need to do an excess dungeon divers. Three Hydra teams, a clan boss team, two campaign farmers, one for nightmare, one for normal, doom tower wave team, a dark bay team, because it's the only boss that I really care about farming. And then just generic bosses, which I just use in different things. A classic arena farm team, so I don't actually have to spend any time doing anything. That's mostly made up of my arena teams. And then arena champions. So, this is where it's going to get interesting. Trying to figure out how to set up a defense. And trying to figure out which ones they are. Now, what I've done with the, the champions down here. Um, first thing you'll notice is uh, Stoltus is no longer in dragon. We have a brand new dragon team. Using... Ruark. Yeah, it, it, it can do. It could do. You aren't, you aren't wrong. The thing is, though, I only ever do Spider 20 when I need to do Dungeon Diver points. It's very rare that I do it with Champion Training. Because in my opinion, Champion Training is just done in Campaign. So it's normally I'm just doing it for Silver or I'm just doing it for Thing. I, I could re-gear them into much better gear. To be honest, the reason why it's red flagged is because I'm going to nuke the gear quality on them. Yeah, if you want to see it, like, I was... Basically, for a while, I've always thought Stoltus was the best in class for Dragon, and because of that, I wasn't using him. But he's particularly good for Arena because we have a double AoE. He needs books, because only his A2 is booked at the moment. 
But he, the nice thing is, unlike Ragash, he self buffs on his AoE before he attacks. Ragash's problem is he he has to A1 or be, or get given the defense buff before he has the defense buff, which makes him a bit harder. He has to take two turns before he can actually take a turn. We're here. This guy can take one turn and just nuke. Um, can't be debuffed either. And obviously damage increases for each debuff on the target. So it actually hits really hard. And for ages, I've had him in dragon, kind of saying, oh, he's the best dragon option. But now I was like, right, if I'm serious about Arena, I think he's a champion that has to come out of dragon because he's too powerful. Just like things like taking Lydia out of clan boss, taking like Riho out of clan boss, taking Emic out of clan boss, those sorts of champions where you're like, these champions are just too powerful to lock behind one team. I've taken him out. And instead I've built a similar concept but with Green Warden Ruark. Now, Green Warden Ruark is very cool because he will transfer all debuffs from this champion to the target. So he's kind of doing what LeBurger used to do. But he also has an increased defense taunt and strengthen. It helps keep him alive. He does have a decreased attack as well, which is nice. So what we're replacing is my old team. I don't know if I even if you know if I've still got it saved here. I probably don't because I probably got rid of it. My old team used to use LeBurger and dark kale with stultus right because what we would do is we'd reflect the poisons and then leberga would try to extend them quite good but a bit inconsistent this team i need to still finish leveling up a little bit on ruach get him a bit more masteries and then we're just using teodor for poisons to la layer up the poisons and then activate the poisons to speed it along just to make it a little bit safer so you'll see this is really really cool We just A1 here. The nice thing about Teodor is his animations are so swift. It speeds the run up no end. Yeah, watch this now, right? So I'll, I'll take it off auto. So at this point, we've got one poison, two poisons and a weaken from Teodor. He's now going to A1 and put all of them back on the boss. At this point, these guys are just doing it. Then Teodor is going to activate and extend them. Watch the numbers go up and down. So we get one full activation. And then the boss will go into breath. We put strength in and increased defense so that we definitely don't die. Because at this point, it doesn't really matter. And then, all we do is we A1 again. Transfer it back. Keep transferring the debuff. You don't actually need the A2. And you can see the value here. All we're doing is just keep extending. Mm. It's actually really good. Uh, do you need accuracy? You do need accuracy, but you only need 350. And Ruark's one of those champions that is not especially brilliant in any place, so he's a great option to put here because he's very quick. The key thing is, whenever I'm building hard 10 dragon teams, you know, hard 10 teams in general, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking turn attack tournaments, right? Turn attack tournaments. I can't have a slow team because if I have to run a slow team, I'm losing energy efficiency on turn attack tournaments. So I'm always thinking that way. So you can see here, poison it up. Where this team can potentially die is Ruark right now is still level 49. But you can see, I haven't really lost too many turns. I, it's going to cost me like 40 more energy, give or take, per per dungeon tournament. So it's, it's just an acceptable transfer to free up Staltus. Who can replace Teodor? Uh, Supreme Kale or Dark Kale? Dark Kale is the free-to-play option. Because he can come in, put the same buffs, uh, same poison, poison sensitivity. Then he can extend the debuffs with his A2 and also get your decrease attack. So um, Dark Kale can replace him. Teodor's just built really fast, so I'm, I'm just using him. Uh, did I book Ruark? So I actually booked his passive for content. Con I, I thought his passive could be quite good for like things like um, Borgoth. But it was proven to be too difficult. But I've not booked anything else. No. Don't need to book him. He also heals by how many debuffs he transfers as well. Which makes him quite good. In terms of a build, I just put him in regen defiant. So at the moment, he's at like 60,000 HP at 3.6k defense. 215 speed. Enough accuracy. He probably needs a bit more accuracy, but it's fine. No masteries. No books. Um, Say a build. She's in my best crit damage lethal build. I haven't actually seen if I can rebuild her. 3.8k, 221, 351% crit damage. You know, full. She is in Warmaster. Potentially, I should probably put it over to Helm Smasher now instead of Warmaster. I haven't really looked into the math yet. Um, you know, probably still need some ascending. Haven't really done that.
Uh, but it works really well. Uh, Teodor. Where is Teodor? Is he in the vault? Teodor is just in regen. He's at 277 speed, 3.8k defense, 65k HP. It probably can go slower. Brimstone. Five star Brimstone is not needed. It's nice to have, but one star will do it just as much. All I'm doing is getting stats here. Masteries wise, no masteries. <laughs> Using 230 speed lethal status. Yeah, I just I want I wanted to just like separate him away, Qwerty. The main thing is in his current build, Staltus can't do it, right? Staltus is terrible in his current build. Like by shooting Staltus right now. In his current build, he's just like not gonna do it, so. You're probably just killing the dragon really quickly, right? Uh, Scar Torsis. I've been using Scar Torsis quite a lot lately. Um, because he is particularly useful for setting up my Whispers. Because he gives my Whisper this ability. He's particularly useful in these areas. You get a massive speed aura as well. So he's in this team. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. I just think he's he's I think he's a better option than Ragash. I've tried to use Ragash in Arena. I I struggled to get him going because he he needs that extra turn and when you don't have a Siffy to go with it, I always find defense based nukes without a Siffy is very hard, you know. Say Staltus Mithrala. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So you got a Poisoner and Mithrala to help you as well, which makes sense. 30 seconds. Oof. Should put on my clan achievements. So that's why I use Scar Torsus for. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling like, right? So. Basically, I have now mapped out every single champion. I happen to have every single champion listed here on my account. So I can pick from all my champions and I can map it all across. So what I want to do, and this is what I wanted to do during the regearing event, which I messed up because I ran out of time, is essentially build out my three hydra teams build out my arena champions and then rebuild my clan boss team back up to the requirements that i needed so the main issue i've got right now is i think i'm carrying a lot of strong pieces on my clan boss team that you know as much as i love clan boss if i really want to progress in terms of arena something's got to give right and if, if i look at alika like, she's... They may not be necessarily running extremely high lethal gear, because obviously lethal is not really picked in, in clan boss. But they are going to be running things like triple speed, crit damage, crit rate, you know. This isn't a piece that I should be leaving on my clan boss team. It's too good. You know, these pieces will never go into an arena team. So it's not like I can't, like, keep these off you know, in different places. Uh, if I look at, say, Seeker, you know, probably not going to use Killstroke outside of Arena. So he's probably fine, right? This is probably okay. Uh, things like, who else is in my team? Uh, Ares, what is she wearing? She's toxic, so it's probably less important there. But, you know, she could be holding on to a very fast banner, potentially. Not so great in High Elves, but certainly things like Seeker and Undead Hordes. I think my attack banners, and they're pretty terrible, so it's not so bad. Uh, and then, of course, we got Jintoro. Jintoro already lost his accessories because I gave all of them to uh, Zenogre. But, you know, this, this is what I mean about maybe these shouldn't exist in Clan Boss. Oh, hang on, sorry. Can I input this? Hang on a second.
Give me a second. Just having to see if I can figure out what. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just reading through a thread quickly, see if I can fix it. Apparently it's an issue. Hmm. Well, it does not look like there is an answer. I'm going to have to do some research on it in a minute. Um, it seems to be an OBS issue. I bet it's fine now, right? If I put it back on, is it better? It's not the codex, it's an OBS issue. It seems to be a common issue that people have complained about in OBS. So I'll have to do a bit of research. Um, maybe I'll just... Um, maybe I'll just change my audio mixer back for stream settings and a profile. Yeah, I'll probably change it back in... Um, uh, it's just the next stream, I'll change my settings back so that it's not doing the different audio track problems that it was doing before. Uh, I had to change it when I did the collaboration with Drock, so... Um, yeah, I just have a leak of doing A1's Morton. It's like one of the highest DPS abilities you can have in um, in Clan Boss. It's, it's really crazy. No, exactly, Swiftcut. I'm actually going to build this team... Um, but a lot weaker because it covers everything, right? Ares covers require a rare in clan boss. Uh, it always one keys. I do need to fix the spirit tuning um, and it does enough damage. But as I said, these gloves here should not be on my Jintoro. They're so good. They should be a, a, on, you know, on someone like Rotus. The rest of the gear can be fine because you're probably never going to pick these sets outside. Uh, and I think the last one is Demitha. But I think she's in Toxic or something. You know, anything that's like... Perception may be for super fast speed, but the chances of me using an attack percent perception speed, you know, it's not got any accuracy. It's probably not going to get picked. Never going to really pick kill stroke gear in um, thing. That might get picked for speed, but it's unlikely. Uh, so that's probably okay. But certainly like the Jintoro rebuild and the Alika rebuild, that's what I want to do. Um, yeah, I have Necmo. So... Yeah, so what I want to do, this is the plan, okay? This is the plan. So my plan was, certainly on the weekend, this is my plan, to figure out which champions I want to focus my arena on. So the, the concept was, I've got a set of revivers. So here I know I've got Duchesses built, I know I've got Ancora built, I know I've got Elvo built, and Uko is built in like a, a tanky provoke build, so it's an option. And then I was going to rebuild Pythian, although I'm having issues with trying to build Pythian into... Bolster, I might have to look at a different set. I can't really make him good build. Then I have a series of supports who are not necessarily revivers. Like Arbiter could be in a, re a reviver spot, but I, the way she's built, she's built as speed support. So like something like Necret, Mithrala, Shujen that I can pivot into. Then I've got some backup options, like basically Baron Helicath, but Baron might go into my main based on how good he is. And then core damage dealers. So I've got Narcissus as a core damage dealer. Stoltus is a core damage dealer. I'm going to move Sun Wukong away from his like ultra debuff build into a probably like either a full damage or hybrid build. And then Rotus. Okay, those are my four main damage dealers. Then I have alternate picks that I could choose to go towards, which is Torming or Vlad as different damage dealer options. I'd rather build Torming as a damage dealer. And then Xena, Constantine, and Rowanus are counters, right? So Rowanus is a counter to Rotus. 
We, Ro Rowanus would be a Rotus counter. Constantine would be a monkey counter with Vlad, potentially. And Xena would be a high buff counter. With then Helicath and Baron being options. So that was my idea. Basically build out these, but I wasn't certain on all of these. I was a bit uncertain with some of them, um, which I can review on the stream because it's always good to get other people's opinions. So then build these out, set out an arena tag team defense, then build and check all of the builds I've got for all of my teams here and make sure they're built out properly. Then build out Hydra teams and then rebuild the clan boss team. And then what we're going to do is if you look on the left here, I've got priorities in terms of what is important to my account. And then we've got lock statuses. So all of my arena champs will be behind lock status one. All of my Hydra and clan boss teams will be behind lock status one and all of my dungeon teams and Doom Tower wave clearing, right? But a lot of these champions will probably be picked up from Arena, right? Vlad, Constantine could be a Vlad, Constantine Arena. Romantu could actually go into here as well. You know, as an option. I can actually give my Romantu another, about another 100 accuracy. I just didn't bother. Um, I didn't bother, really. Um, and then, obviously, we would lock things like Dark Fae, Campaign Farmers, Spider-20 Farmers, Arena Classic Farming probably would be one anyway because it, they're, they're going to be the same champions and then like a generic team behind lock status two so everything that's like farming in my account is one anything that is like conditional scenarios is two and then i will start making as i'm going through the next Sintranos rotation i will start building champions into rank three so basically lock status three with gear that is not in lock status one and two. And then they get locked in three. And then as I build more champions, I'll only build champions with gear that is not in lock status one, two, three. But if I hit a really hard stage of Cintranos, then I'll dip into the rock lock status three. So what that should do then, hopefully over a rotation, is build up a series of champions that get used quite a lot into a situation where they have got a good but not an insane build, which means that next City of Cintranus rotation, I can just go, oh, that Mistrider Dithy I used last rotation, I can just use it again. It's already built. It's good to go. It's fine. So that's my plan. The thing about Ronda is, and it's not because I don't like Ronda, I just feel like I've got enough that I don't need Ronda. Because you've got to remember, what I don't want to do is build so many damage dealers, but actually not have or not use many of them. And I feel like I've got an answer to the monkey. I've got an answer to Rotus. I've got an answer to heavy buff teams. I've got good damage dealers generally. Like, which champion here? Like, some could argue that you should drop Rowanus for Ronda. Potentially. You could you could you could argue. I just don't think I need her. Yeah, but she can also polymorph herself from from those single lock abilities, you know? So Yeah, but so is Constantine. If anything, Constantine's potentially a better answer because I can slot in Constantine Vlad and um, then I have a double hit. I have a double hit A1, a double hit A2. Every time I kill them, they block revive. You can't block revive with Ronda. And Constantine hits harder than Ronda. You use them both generally because... Uh, the thing about Constantine is, um, where is he? Find him in a minute. He will, without Vlad, he will block revive uh, Undead Hordes, Demon Spawn, and Knight's Rev. So he'll pick on things like uh, Duchess. He'll block revive. He'll block revive things like Siffy. He'll block revive things like uh, Hefrax, Ultimate Death Knights. Um, you know, if you see a Hegemon around for some crazy reason. But the problem is a lot of the meta isn't this anymore. So it's like um, Banner Lords. It is Skinwalkers, right? It is those types of champions. 
So whilst it's good at killing off the ultimate death knight, it's not going to be very helpful in block reviving. So you need the Vlad to block revive the monkey. So yes, okay, look, if he bans off my Vlad, then I can't block revive the monkey. But that would be the same if they just ban my Ronda, right? What? Like surely he'll, they'll just ban off my Ronda. I don't understand. I, I don't think that's a, a big difference. Night Acrobat. Oh yeah, I've missed a champion on those. Uh, give me a second. I've got my Hydra team somewhere else here. I've just forgotten about them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the thing about it is, right, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you. I'll give you a little preview to what's coming in my video tomorrow. Uh, team 1 should be... Michinaki, Rathalos, Altrian, Lydia, Lydia Makage. Oh. There. Uh, this one should be... This one should be... There you go. There you go. I forgot three of them. Uh, is it worth two team pick slots? Is it worth the two team pick slots? Um, what do you mean by two team pick slots? Uh, Pip Darty. Oh, is it worth the two? Um, it can be. It can be. Don't use Fenax against Wukong. Uh, you can do. The problem with Fenax is keeping him alive more often than not. I could absolutely run Fenax instead of Constantine Vlad. That is a, you know, it's a fair assessment that I could just go, hey, you know, add Fenax in here. And potentially Fenax is better than Constantine. The only issue with Fenax is... Constantine would deal with the Rotus as well as the monkey, whereas Fenax will not. You know? Exactly, yeah. Without Necro, it's hard. So if you go the Fenax route, the second spot is almost always going to be Necro, which means then you've got three options to find another DPS and two supports, which could be Duchess and Korra um, and, like, Constantine. So you go Constantine, Fenax. And then if they ban your Necret, you've got a very slow, tanky team with very exposed Nukas. Or you could go like a Duchess Shuzhen with a Necret. But then if they ban your Shuzhen, you're still slow, but at least you've got your Necret, you might get a chance. But if they ban your Duchess, you have no Reviver, so it's pretty much kill or be killed, so... How do you think Balthus Draugler could work as a Provoker? Um, probably not the best option, you'd be scraping the barrel. Mikage, Necra, and Fenax. Yeah, but the problem I feel like is Mikage is locked into like a PvE build. She she's not really built for arena, so. Like like we gotta remember is when you've got the pairing, okay? When you get the pairing between Vlad and Constantine, Vlad Constantine, the thing he does with Constantine, he makes him block revive everything. But Vlad becomes incredibly powerful because Vlad will get a lot of turn meter. He fully heals, pretty much. He will get 50% turn meter. On top of life harvest, it makes him a bit of a turn meter machine. And Vlad will give Constantine 30% ignore defense if he lands debuffs on the A2. Now, obviously, in high arena, that's a bit worse because accuracy and various different things. But I feel like that's a better solution than Ronda. And they could still ban out my Constantine and then I don't have an answer, but they could just ban out my Ronda. Would be no different, surely. You know, surely no different. My Vlad's in a weird build. It probably needs rebuilding. I haven't had a look at him in like seven months. Uh, how would you build Mikagi for Arena? A lot faster. Probably like 350 speed high accuracy. You don't really build her for damage. You build her for more control. You want to get back around to the A2 a lot and then get to the ally attack to kill people off. 
She's an enabler. She's not a damage dealer. And I've built her for damage dealer PvE. That's why I can't really use her. Yeah, Fenax is, is worth building. But what nuker am I going to pick, Quirty? I mean, I, I I absolutely could run Ronda and Narciss together, but it still doesn't solve the problem because Narciss gets ruined by Wukong Ultimate Death Knight. And I'll be honest, I think people would much rather ban my Narciss than ban the Ronda because Ronda doesn't hit hard enough. Or they'll ban away the attack buff option or something like that. I can't imagine that... I just, I, for me, I'm just sitting and thinking, I don't think Ronda is needed with the options I have available to me. Yeah, exactly. That's it, Elo. Yeah, Narcissus can block revive. It's true. It's true, it's true, it's true. Yeah, there is always a problem with any team. I mean, it's not that I'm saying Ronda's bad. I was just... I, when I was doing my options, I was mapping them out. I was like, well, Ronda will have affinity issues. What what's, what, what affinity is Ronda? I forget. She's magic. So she's not going to be able to kill Harima. She'll block the passives at least. So she'll struggle against force, right? So, I mean, she'll struggle to kill... The, the, the biggest problem with Ultimate Death Knight, she might block his passive, but she struggles to kill Ultimate Death Knight. I don't know. Maybe she is worth it. Maybe I should just give her a try and get off my soap opera box. I'm not against trying. Yeah, she is good against Lockout because her A1 hits quite hard. The, the other thing, she's, she's a bit like Mortu for me. You get that moment where she uses her counterattack twice in a row... And you're like, good lord, this Ronda's insane. And then the next fight, she just never activates her passive. And just sitting there going, please, activate your passive. Um, and that's what I feel like. She's a bit like Mortimer Carb in that sense. Like, where you're watching Mortimer Carb, it's like, I've seen the passive proc ten times. Why aren't you perilin? Um, I definitely think my core damage dealers, though, should be these four. Right now, you see I'm using Vlad a lot because he's just built. But... Sun Wukong would probably be changed. The only problem is pretty much Sun Wukong's first picked every single live arena fight, which is a problem. Well, Rotus is getting countered a lot. That's why I'm, I need an alternative. Ruanus is a very good... Ruanus is an interesting option as well. Um... I have to try and remember what scene I'm in. Uh, still in the use for Foley. He'd have to be like a very, very, very strong Foley. If you can get to like plus four and actually ramp up his damage, then Foley can still be quite lethal because he does have the block revive. The problem is if he doesn't kill anyone, then he gets a bit, you know, falls a bit behind. Ruanus is a quite a good counter to Rotus because of this ability. It's very strong. And then you can follow it up with an AoE if you need to. Uh, but he does become a bit limited after that. So I 60'd him in case I needed him. But he's very good as well. As an option. Because he's also strong affinity to, to Rotus. So like he could be an absolute power pick if I see the Sippy Rotus come out. So, you know, that's an option. No, no, we're talking about it right now, Primo. This is part of the process. Uh, is there any three a possibility? I don't have any three, no. And to be honest, I feel like Constantine's a better block reviver than any three. Just because I feel like Constantine's got a bit more utility. The thing about Constantine's A3 is if he gets debuffed, he can throw a ton of debuffs away. So it gives him access to things. Uh, whereas in E3, if he gets debuffed, he can't. Uh, Constantine has the same type of passive effect where as long as you kill someone, you block revive, it doesn't really matter. So, Yeah, exactly, Uko. If you can get Foley up to that tier, then the stats can overwhelm his weakness. 
But once you go up to the high tier of arena, you probably find that Foley's stats can no longer overwhelm the enemy's plus four stats, and then he falls down. Um, I haven't ignored Shin. Xena's here, look. Xena's here. Xena's my buff heavy option. Xena would be the champion I would pick if I see Siffy Duchess um, Elva, for example. If I see that type of team where I see three buff revivers, I'm going Xena. Straight out the bat. The only thing I don't like about Xena, and I still don't know if it's a major problem since people have had more time to play with her. I've literally only had her since I bought her like the last week of the Forge Pass, so I haven't had a chance to build her up. I started doing a little bit of Masteries, but nothing much. Is this passive... She just gets turn meter too quickly. So any triple buffer was, is going to put her too high up. You, you actually want to wait for the second triple buffer. And even if you build her like 100 speed, build it ultra, ultra slow, she still procs this way too quickly. And she cuts in, which is a real problem. So I don't know if people have figured out a way get, to get around that. But that was when I was watching her and seeing people play test her and everything. This was the main problem that she essentially gets a turn before you want her to. Because the enemy hasn't buffed up enough yet. Because it's all about the buffs. You absolutely want them to get buffs. This needs to hit five buffs. If this hits five buffs with lethal, you get 50% um, plus 30%, 80%. Helm Smasher, true damage. That's what that needs to do. But if it does, if it's only like three buffs, it's not quite enough. She needs the five buffs. Yeah, that Steen and Termite is quite good. Just doesn't hit as hard as A3. A3 hits a lot harder. And then you're an attack based champion that's taken a turn without reaction protection. It's like, can you keep her alive? Because as much as you're stealing turn meter, that means it forces you into a heavy turn meter team. Otherwise, how do you get back to your turn, right? Because you procced your passive. You're now exposed without any reaction. 20% turn meter is not a lot. It's not too bad, but it's not a lot. I suppose it's 20% per enemy, right? So it's 80%. Actually, it's not so bad then, yeah. Maybe it's not so bad. I forget it's per enemy. It's a bit like... Um, it's a bit like the fusion that does 100% stealing of turn meter. I should probably put that in here as well. Right? Our mans. I can't... Look, I can't even pick it because it's not in my account yet. But I should put our mans on here. Use her a stone skin. I wonder if I have any stone skin accessories. This is what I do these days. I look to see if there's any stone skin accessories. Oh, we have a Merciless Ring. <laughs> if there's ever a Barbarian HP Nuka, when I get that Anaz Mythical, we're good to go. Man, how many Barbarian? Like, what? How many, like, Reaction Rings have I got in Barbarians? None of them are attack either. I would, I would add none of them are attack. What have we got here? Oh, crit damage. Okay. Ooh, look, we have stone skins. We actually have a lot of stone skin. Do we have a, ban a banner, though? Oh, we do. That's protection. That's protection. We do have a attack. Oh, is that good? It's all right. I really wish there was a filter for just show me sets. Just so I can see if I've got any. Obviously, my only good merciless one is on my Farrakhan for... Because uh... really, you don't want to go stone skin unless you can go like one stone skin, one savage. And even then, that's a bit of a sacrifice. And you can see I can't really do it. Uh, we do have a, a Rathalos piece here. So it would be far better for me to just go raw damage than it would be for me to go like stone skin. Like, just use reaction instead. Because you really don't want to sacrifice ignore defense. In my opinion. I don't think you sacrifice ignore defense on her. Yeah, I already have Kirk. My, um... I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> way ahead of you. He's already in Reflex Merc. Uh, Mer He's, uh... I could do 9 out of 9 if I wanted to, yeah. 
I can do 9 out of 9. But again, what might be better for for Xena would be to do a 6-piece Merciless if I've got a decent ring. Which I don't really have. Do I have a decent amulet? I don't really have that. That one's okay. We'd sacrifice a bit of damage. And we'd lose speed. But speed's not really a problem on her. Um, if we could get that to roll a bit better on 16. We could go... Four piece... Uh, four piece merciless artifacts. Two piece accessories. With a reaction ring. Because I can re-roll one of these. And then put two cruel. And then we would get 40% ignore defense. On top of... Her... Potential... 40% ignore defense. That would give her consistent ignore damage. Like true damage. That that would be the way that I would build if I could. Merciless plus cool. Yeah. Merciless plus cool. Plus crushing rend. But obviously one star crushing rend is not great. Because you're only going to ignore like. Was it? 1% defense. But hey. 1% is better than nothing. And yeah. You would go true damage right. That's, that's how I would build her. Uh, but obviously, I would need to figure out if I can get an actual attack ring. I mean, I think I've already reforged this. Or oh, I haven't. But mainly because defense and HP is a very good combo. I feel like it's a bad mistake to rework that. It could be amazing, but it could also be terrible. Imagine I take a, a HP ring and I get attack percentage or something. Though it's very tanky, it's very good. But, you know, I've got loads of rings here I could you know, partially level up. Didn't go so well. I probably got some in my inventory as well. Or flat stat, exactly. That's that's what I'm afraid of. You know, I wonder if I have any in my inbox. Let's have a look. Hmm. We've got dwarf. We've got a lizard. Uh, so we got like some skinwalkers there. Yeah, my inbox is a travesty. It's 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 on it's on, it's on the to do list. Got a barbarian, defense merciless. Sitting in there. I'm really curious actually. We need to check something in a moment. Got a demon spawn merciless. Just chilling. I should go grab that out. That could be rolling quite good. There's a supersonic banner here somewhere. Pull that out as well. There it is. Undead hordes. Rathalos gear that I haven't pulled out yet. That's on my list to do. Uh, what do we got here? Merciless. Lots of Rathalos gear. Okay, High Elves, Sacred Order. What faction's Ronda? Someone remind me what faction Ronda's in. Don't talk to me about that. That's a, that's a sore subject for me, Green Virus. That's a sore subject. He's a band lord, is he? Oh yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, that's a shame. Um. Okay. Okay. So nothing else. Let's 
this could be quite good. Or not. Alright, well, just wasted silver for nothing. One thing I want to... Um, why is Rattle a sore subject? Because they're not just renaming the set. They're changing the icon of the set. So what I do when we have a new variable set is you'll notice all of the accessories in-game use the fact they use the icon. They don't use the faction. But when you notice when it when it goes into the optimizer, it actually uses the icon. Uh, uses the faction, not the icon. Because when you look at artifacts in the optimizer, you will never know what faction they're in unless I do that. Because we don't really put section containers. I also feel like it's much easier when I look at a piece to know with the faction down the left rather than the icon. So the problem is, if they're going to change all the icons, then there's a very strong possibility I have to do all of the images again. And it's like one for every single slot, for every single faction. It's like 45 images. I'm hoping I don't have to, but that's why it's a sore subject potentially. If they change, if you think about it, where's the Rathalos set here? I've got a Rathalos one somewhere. This, for example, if they change the image and the set, I'm going to have to remake it. I'm hoping they won't. That's why it's like... Uh, besides Charm Island, that's just who can I use? I actually think Ancora is not a bad option. She's better with Narcissus, but I think she's a decent option. Don't you have an intern? I mean, someone's got to do it. It doesn't take me long. It's just annoying as hell. Uh, right, what's the um, faction for Armands? What faction is Armands in? The new guy, the fusion. Not at the moment, Dragonfire, only from Forge Pass. Barbarians. So, question. What I want to know... Let's find a Barbarian. You're a Barbarian. How much Supersonic do I have in Barbarian faction? Let's have a look. Ah, ah, ah. There's one. Okay, I would prefer accuracy. Does it even have accuracy on it? It does. Accuracy. All right, it rolled one accuracy. We'll take that. So that's two. Do we have a banner? Do we have a banner? That's the question. When it stops lagging. Oh. Oh. So close. So goddamn close. So absolutely close to a 9 out of 9 one. Alton didn't have supersonic. Oh, Altan's got one here. No, oh, that's nice. Yeah, cool. No banner, though. No banner. Damnations. Have I got one in my vault? Supersonic. I mean, the thing about the banner is, though, you can have terrible supersonic rings and amulets to some extent because you can find the stats elsewhere. You can't really find the speed, so... Whatever supersonic banner you get for, for like, uh, your Armands would have to be pretty quick. You'd want a pretty quick one, you know? Hmm. Just having a quick little look back at my inventory to see if I've got any... Oh, there's a high elf one. Shadowkin. Sacred Order. It's baiting me. Banner Lords. Ooh. Oh, it's merciless. Ugh. Ugh. Mm, I 
It doesn't look like it. Damn. <laughs> oh. So the reason why I was hoping for it is if you get 9 out of 9, then any fill turn meter effects. Now, one thing I wanted to check about this, actually, whilst we're here, as we're here, let's check this. Supersonic. Does that count for turn meter stealing as well as turn meter boosting? That's the question we have here. Or is it just turn meter boosting? Because it is it there is a difference between stealing turn meter and increasing turn meter. Uh, it's got like 40 days on it. It's plenty of time demos. I'll have a look now, but so we get 20. So it affects 4,001. Mm. Yes, so it's not going to affect... Okay, okay. So that's that's what I wanted to work out. It doesn't actually improve the chance of his A2. He's not going to get bonus turn meter filling from his A2, but he will from his passive and he will from his A1, but not from his A2. So I don't know if he's actually worth. His passive could be. Do four piece perception, three piece supersonic, two piece protection. Four piece perception would give me five, ten, ten percent turn meters, ten to ten percent speed, twenty percent speed. Two piece protection would give me, I think it gives me just fifteen percent HP. Why would two piece protection be there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like if you're going to do it, you need to invest. I feel like the four piece is so good, though. Like 2% for every buff on the enemy. When is it? When is it phased? 43. Okay, so... This will give us 2% turn meter fill for every buff that gets placed on an enemy after the buff is placed on the enemy. That's a lot. I I think Supersonic was made for Armands. I, I absolutely think Supersonic was made for Armands. Keep in mind, Stone Skin's a buff. So every time Stone Skin gets applied at the start of battle, he gets a turn meter boost. So if you have four stone, stone skins, he gets 8% turn meter boost right at the start of battle. Yeah, the 30% would be like, if you think about it, Marcus, the 30% is very good for his passive because on average, most people have a three or four turn cooldown. Well, that boosts him to a 40%. It gives him basically an excess of 10 to 15% extra turn meter every single time he puts a skill on cooldown, which is quite a lot. But it's a big commitment. It is a big commitment. Whereas you could absolutely go four piece with stone skin, as you said. Uh, Supersonic has potential Michinaki. I don't think so. Supersonic, I think, is very much limited to um, speed boosters. Uh, can you think of a blessing player who can bring to counter sheep? Yes. It's called delete button. Uh, no, what they could do is actually... So this is this is all they need to do. Let, let me show you exactly what they need to do with um, Polymorph. Okay. Right. What we're going to do... You see this little sentence here? Only one smite debuff. What we do is we copy this sentence, right? And we go change blessing and we go here and we go paste sentence and if we just swap the word might with heap we solve the problem only one sheep debuff can work per team make it unique to one champion it's 
all you have to do. The moment it becomes one polymorph in one situation, the value goes down considerably, but it's still a relevant blessing, right? You'd still have it on one champion. It just would make the arena more playable. I still run the risk when Taras goes in, he gets polymorphed. If I get polymorphed, okay, that's bad luck, right? That can happen if you 3% a debuff, if you get your Rotus extra turns, right? Nobody used to complain about Rotus getting extra turns when he didn't get extra turns. It happens. This is too consistent when it's four people. So just make it one. It's all you need to do. Make it one per team. Then it's absolutely fine. Then the change you made to make it balanced works. It makes sense. The problem is when you have four people, because you can have it on all your damage dealers, all at six star, it becomes a 58% chance. Easy. No, I think a six star is fine. I don't have a problem with it being an unresistible at six star, Pebs. I just have a problem with every single champion rolling. If you just had one single roll of 20%, that's a very low chance. It would be fine. The problem is it's 20 times 20 times 20 times 20. So on average, you have a 58% chance. You're more often to get polymorph than not. Something that locks you out so egregiously would be that, you know, shouldn't be so high. The other thing they should do is the, the counter to polymorph would be to allow me to keep my speed. So that if I'm building a 351 speed debuffer, then I can build more speed to counter the fact that I've been sheeped because I can take extra turns to get out of sheep quicker. I shouldn't be put to 150 speeds. Which is basically not even, like, that's the base speed of a champion without any speed built. Right? So I can keep my build, keep my speed. That would be great. You shouldn't lose half of your health by default. You should come back out of Polymorph on the health that you're on. So what I would do to fix Polymorph, one per team, make it so that you keep your health, make it so you keep your stats. Those three changes makes Polymorph balanced. It's absolutely fine then. Absolutely fine. They'll never add anything down here. Nothing will get added there. They've forgotten about it. No, it doesn't work like that, though. It's one roll of 20%. The problem that they've got right now is because they changed the stats around, it, there is no punishment for me to put this on my damage dealer. Because my damage dealer gets the same stats as if I went Life Harvest, or if I went Soul Reap, or if I went Lightning Cage. So there's no punishment for me to do it once he's at six star so if i have four champions at six star which is what you see in the high-end arena then it's 20 percent chance once then 20 percent chance twice then 20 percent chance third time and 20 percent chance four time right so you have four rolls per one per champion so it's not doing it per effect anymore which is great but because it's now more relevant because there's more of them around because to be honest you never used to build sheep debuff outside of your supports because you would prefer the stats right you didn't used to get crit damage you're not going to sacrifice all of that damage for a chance of polymorph well now there's no reason not to so because of that the combined odds of four champions at six star polymorph is about 58 percent chance you're going to get polymorphed and that's the problem if they just took it away so there's only one it's the yumiko problem in hydra if you just made it so that you could only have one yumiko then you wouldn't have the trender teams it's the combination of the two with the shujen that makes it broken that's what i would do <laughs> It does heal you, Ross. I agree. So it's a it's a double-edged sword. But the problem is, like, imagine you're a Taras. I used to use my son Wukong in full debuff, and I would take a Taras to 50% HP with, with sheep. Way too strong. Way too strong. Anyway, let's get back on topic. Yeah, by the time Master Seal and Seal actually becomes relevant, we'll probably be power crept. Because <laughs> let's face it, within the first three months of this year, we've already power crept the last 12 months. Yeah, one per team, Pebs, is what I'd prefer. If all they have to do is make it one per team, keep it so that I actually keep my speed and actually make it so that um, when I come out of the polymorph, I keep the health that I was on, then I'm happy with it. I think it's fine. Because then it is a viable thing to bring to counter a heavy debuff team. It's just way too strong at the moment that's the problem it's too good at countering the debuff team that it's just not worth you bringing the debuff team because you take too much of a punishment like if you think about it when you go polymorph you lose all of your buffs half your health all of your speed all of your momentum and potentially two turns which you probably will never get back because it takes too long so anyway let's get back to what we were talking about here 
I've added Ronda to the list. You'll be happy to know. Yeah, and all your buffs, yeah. Do we think any arena champion should be added to this list? Have I talked about the new champions yet? We have we have talked about um, Almaz, yeah. Or Armans, or whatever his name is. Ronda's immune to Timmy to control. I don't think she was. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember what her passes do. I know she counterattacks a lot. Ronda's not immune to... Oh, yeah, she is. Oh, I did not know. But it's only when that A3 is not on cooldown. So... I forgot about that. It's funny when you find these little passes hidden away. She should be quite good into Armands then. Yeah, Shu Zhen's down here. She's as a support. Yeah, I just feel like Venus Cupidus is too easy to counter these days, Nobo. Like, you can't really use it in live arena at all. So why would I put any gear? I I mean, Venus... Uh, Cupidus is... Cupidus still has his Rathalos gear. Probably wouldn't change that. But Venus is actually being put up into one of my Hydra teams at the moment. Although I'm concerned about this hard team. It's a bit... um. Squishy. It might just die this hard team, which could be a problem. Yeah, it will probably change if I get a Quintus Hyacin, yeah. Ultimate Death Knight. Ultimate Death Knight's not going on this team shooter. I that is the one red line. No Ultimate Death Knight. Quintus, if anything, would go as a potential Hydra option. Ironically, Quintus is better PvE than he is PvP. Um, Nekmo in, uh, in hard looks weird. I mean, he doesn't make my first team, and do I need him for my second team? Like, who? Razzlevarg has kind of taken his spot in the, the second team. That's why he's not there. You could run a, a Provoke Nekmo, but I prefer the consistency of Islin. Like, Islin will also give me a bit of safety net if um, if the things go badly. Because the thing about the Brutal team, there is no revive on that Brutal team at the moment. Yeah, Double Whisper. Uh, red means not built. Yellow means maybe. Green means good to go. I think it's the highest attack. I think it's attack. I could be wrong. You prefer Nekmo over Archer? No. She's too good. If I put Nekmo in that team, I have literally no healing for half of the turn. Like, is... I suppose I have healing when people hit on Leech, but if I lose Leech, I have no healing. There's no Hex there, so I'd have to put a Hex Nekmo. Arch is too good, surely. Arch is a better Nekmo, surely. Yeah, but have you tested it with this combination of champions, though? And is she your Mischief Tank and stuff like that, right? Because right now, I would lose my Mischief Tank. I would lose my Healer. I'd lose my Hex Champion, I'd lose my Provoke Champion, I'd lose my Decrease Speed Champion, I'd lose my Turn to Fill Champion. That's a lot to lose from one champion here. That's a lot to lose in this particular team. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to use it with that team. You know, there's no reason why, by the way, there's, there's absolutely no reason why this team can't become a Brutal team. Um, but I feel like Razzlevar can't really go up into Nightmare. You know? I feel like Razzlevarg is kind of hard capped. I mean, I've seen some crazy Razzlevargs. But I think my Razzlevarg is only... 2 star. Not interested in Arena Emic. I, I probably use some Emic at some point, so... 
She likes pretending she doesn't exist. Can you explain in short terms how to make a mystery tank? Yes. You need a champion that has a buff difference than everyone else in your team, okay? So basically a buff that nobody else in the team is going to give you. So that way you always have one extra buff. So for example, when I look at Neogagante Archer, uh, she has a increased accuracy buff and she's also in Lightning Cage. So she's going to gain two extra buffs over everyone. So because of that, she has the highest buff count. Then I put enough resistance on her so that the enemy cannot steal my buffs. So that means the end, the Mischief Head will target her because she has the most amount of buffs. I'll resist his attempts and that means she's tanking the Mischief Head. That's how it works. Now, if you happen to have a situation where you don't have more buffs, it'll go on another target and that's where it goes wrong. That's why she is not in Relentless because I can't have her taking extra turns, outrunning the buffs and then not having enough buffs against the rest of the team. Damage and block buffs. Block buffs mainly as well. This would be a feral if I had it, but I don't have a feral, so. Uh, keep in mind, um, Kamikaze, every single time Lady Mikage A1s, M Michinaki's gonna join the attack. So you'll be surprised how much damage he will pump out. Well, together, you know what I mean, Duchy. He probably replaces Chris Quirrell. Is it only going to be for Hydra team or using her in classic? Nah, just for Hydra. She's she might be a, a like a, a flex pick if I need to block revive something to force a ban, but I'd love a Feral. Feral low key OP. YST's really into Feral at the moment. He's loving it. You know, like, so, for example, at the moment, uh, the main problem I've got with my Gurp Tuck is not booked. That's it. I don't really think I can use him unbooked, can I? It's just too long a cooldown and inconsistency. This, I would need more. I'm really worried about the sustainability of the team because, um, I forgot a hard here a second. Uh, the team would be... Let's just bin off this. Like, this would be the team at the moment. But obviously, Gurptek's not built. So what I did last week was I... Um, I don't know if I still got it. I put a temporary solution in last week, which was Uge. So if I just give Uge a... Um, a bolster helm. For now, any other thing will do. I'll do. So my temporary solution last week was just to throw in an Uge when I needed to do a team very quickly because it's like the best it's like the best thing I could get with a block buffs and some sustainability. Uh but you'll see quite quickly um this team is a bit squishy. Like we do kill things very quickly. Don't get me wrong. We kill things very fast. Um, like, I probably need to kill this head very fast. I could probably try this. Will we? Damn. So this one is just like kill the torment head really fast. Hey Borked. Uh it doesn't have a cap. There is no cap. So the goal is to basically kind of kill this torment head really quickly. Like there's no cursed here right now. Okay. Bad luck. <laughs> I 
I mean, we could probably just kill this head. Hopefully. There we go. Boom. So we kill the heads really fast. And then the goal is to basically, um, you know. Cycle back around really fast. Burn. And we got to kill this head really fast. Extra turn, that's great. Didn't get, unfortunately, Cycle of Violence, but it's fine. Uh, let's put block buffs on you. Kind of needed to uh, kill that mischief head. So we're going to get a cleanse now. That was awkward. I needed to basically get a kill on the mischief head to reset the two meters. I kill it with that. No, he's got no hex anymore. That sucked. Right, drop to Amir. Get a provoke. And now we can basically start doing some damage. Um, we can. Strip buffs. You just need to get rolling with it. Once you get rolling, it's fine. But you can see that it does have issues with setup. Venus is not really well built at the moment. But when they get rolling, they are a little bit nasty. Like, look how much I'm killing that head on the right here by just attacking this head. I'm not actually even killing him. And because we're in hard, we can, we can go quite slow. Like, we'll slow them down a lot. Let's just put block buffs out on him. Provoke out. I just don't know how much ceiling it's got and whether it, like, if we get bad RNG, is it surviving a lot? Uh, just put block bus out on you. Yeah, it's not crit capped, no. So now this is the nasty thing because obviously we can't kill this head until, um,. Obviously, he loses his 75%, which is a bit awkward. But basically, we just keep killing the, the decapitated heads. Now, it's going to be a problem because I've got fears out on everyone. So at this point, I'm going to switch and I'm just going to kill off the provoke head. She, these whispers basically can one shot heads. That's what's crazy about it. They pretty much can one shot any head. As in, like, A3, A2, A3, A2 combo. You know, I could basically go over here. A3, A2. Like, they're just tearing a new one into it. Need hex out on that torment. Right now we can kill the torment head. Okay, well, I kind of misclicked, but it's fine. Still haven't had managed to get hex out on that torment head, which is really annoying. See what I mean? Look how fast they kill it. Dead. Oh, nearly. So 
We've got Mischief Head now. Dead. So it should be fine, so long as I can keep killing the heads. The only thing I'm finding difficulty is getting Hex out sometimes. Just put block buffs. I mean, maybe Ogre is a really good option, but I mean, Gurps have to give me 22% more damage, which is... Yeah, Feral basically solves the, point, the, the fear head. Okay, now that's a bit bad because... Uh, she is until tomorrow, I believe. Oof. Um, took a bit of a whack there. Trust I get a torment head again. Wow, something is. Oh wow. Um, well, this is a bit ripperoni because we're gonna lose our crest because we got an ally protection on that head over there. <laughs> so this is the problem I'm worried about this team. It's a little bit unstable. Um, if we get buff stolen, but it is it's good damage. It's just. There's no safety net to it. I don't know if Gerptek solves that problem. Like, there's no debuff cleansing. I mean, Gurptek would give me healing. It would give me cleanse. Um, Whispers are built full damage. They are top tier. Like, that's why they're pumping for 1.2 million A1s. This team would, I think, would need a reviver. It's too, it's too unstable. I mean, the incoming damage is not a problem, is if I get situations like, to be fair, if Uge was booked, we wouldn't have lost Chris. We only lost Chris because um, I have an unbooked Uge, which means I didn't remove the buffs. Uge would remove all buffs as an option here, but I'm not planning on using Uge, so at that point, what do I do? But if I end the battle here, you can see they, they do pump damage. I don't know. Uh, is it two stats in Tether Ohio to try to use Feral to enable almost? No, Feral becomes. It reduces the stats. Feral gives you a lot of stats. Ugir is just incredibly good here for. I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with how good Ugir is for Hydra. You know, you get a very strong A1 block buffs. You get a good AOE buff removal. You get good defensive buffs. Well, good good priority buffs, not defensive. Because obviously, if you have higher attack, you don't get increased defense. Um, it's really good. The six star whisper did less. I think it's just because uh, we're not on a higher difficulty, and likely because whisper didn't get an extra turn cycle. It could be that my other whisper got more big hits um you will find as well the four star whisper will do more than the six star whisper because we're in a hard mode not not nightmare if we were to take this upper difficulty it would switch because crush and rend gets stronger as you go up high levels where the enemies here are just low level yeah fears it could have been anything but you can tell by the healing that she got a few more bigger a2s um But I don't know. Uh, 
I don't know. I'm in this kind of like flux with my account at the moment where everything is kind of like in holding pattern. Where it's almost like I need to build my arena champions to build my hydro champions to build my hydro champions. I need to figure out my my things I know, and everything and all that kind of stuff. It's just kind of like I'm all sitting here in that like, yeah. I'm kind of like in a flux. I don't know what to do. Ancora for Uggy. Uh, it could work. I don't have the block buffs though, but maybe the block buffs is not needed. Well, the, the thing I'm worried about, Dutch, is I want to prioritize my best gear for my arena champions. So I can't build my Hydra team until I know I've not used my best gear. And that's what I'm stressing about. I need to build a Hydra team for, like, reset. I need to do that. But in order to do that, I need to build my arena team. So I need to decide what I want to build my arena champions in. And I haven't quite decided that either. Um, we could try Ancora over Ugir. Because we don't need the buffs. That's fine, you know. I've crafted it. It's in my vault. I have no storage. Uh, do you, what do you think about Heaven Cast for 6-star Whisper? I think if you're a 4-star Whisper, you go um, Relentless, Phantom Touch, Sammy Jankis. I think you just go Relentless, Phantom Touch. I think it's too good. Um, at 6-star, you switch to Crush and Rend and then, and then Lethal, you know. The issue I've got here is bad Cursed gear as well. Because I have to provoke, I can't curse the champions I want to. I also won't have a block buffs now for the Wrath head, which is a, a problem. So I probably need to prioritize this head still. Oh, nearly. Lost all my buffs. So now I haven't got a buff removal. That's the problem. Now we finally get a hex, which is good. But like, this is the problem now. No block buffs, no buff removal. This is what I'm afraid of. It's This is going to hurt now until I... Um, you know, like, this is going to kill me. This will kill me if I proc this passive. I'm pretty confident this will kill me. Uh. And we're going to get a cleanse as well. So we're going to decrease attack in a moment. There it goes. Only hope is I land decrease attack. I did. I survived it, but now he's got Reflect. It, it needs a block buffs. It's just never going to survive if there's no block buffs here. There's just too many things that can go wrong, see? So that's that's why Ancora's not in this group. You're going to have to have block buffs. Um, so... Um, they'll include the stats from the live arena bonuses, yeah. Uh, I don't find Ninja to be that good. Because I think the, there are better damage, direct damage options now, Shooter. Especially for hard, you know? Because this is what we're looking for. We're looking at a hard team here. Yeah, you need either a block buffs or steel buffs. And that's why Ancor is good for some things, but as a reviver, but never going to work here. Um, you know, it's just never going to work. What's better than Ninja? Any direct damage dealer. Any, like, hard hitter, like a Whisper, for example, is just a really good damage dealer. Um, so... 
Well, I've got two Whispers. That's the whole point of this team, is two Whispers. Uh, Drang would be worse than Ninja. So... I mean, it's fine. The, the problem, I, the, the two I don't like is Chris and Venus, but I need a decreased defense and weaken to set up the Whispers. So, someone's got to be decreased defense and weaken, which means it's going to have to be like a uh, like a Lydia or a Venus, and Lydia's already locked into my Nightmare team. Have you ever tried Baron Hydra? It's not that good. You can't activate his A1, which is the problem. If you could activate his A1, it'd be quite good, but... <laughs> which combo should you use? Neither, probably. One Whisper's better. I'm just trying to see if two Whispers can work. Um, you know, obviously, Gurptuck was the original plan I had here. Yeah, Gurptuck was the original plan because we get a block buffs. We also get bonus damage. We get continuous heals. It's just we don't have any stability. I do have to see, yeah. Uh, because he's not applying cursed enough. I could I could put um, Venus in cursed though. That, I'm, I'm not complaining about Krisk the champion. I'm complaining about Krisk the cursed. Because I have to provoke first attack. So I'm not getting the curse set out. Was what I was complaining about. Not actually the champion itself. I was complaining about the way that I've set it up. Yeah, see my ninja's built squishy shooter. Because I want him to die in Sand Devil. So it's different. Yeah, I could use a... Um, it's actually not a terrible idea. Cursed Bellinor. I feel like Burn is a bit better than Bellinor, but... Cursed Bellinor could be interesting. Because I'm not using Bellinor from anything particularly. Now we could do that. That would give us... A starting crit rate buff so that we can open with the A3 into A2. And then we would get decreased defense and weaken, potentially. But I just feel like um, the burn, uh, the, I, if I just make her a cursed Venus, that reduces the problem here. And I can have two Cursed options. Cursed Venus is pretty good. The problem with Sissy is affinity. And what you really don't want to have a situation of is you don't apply like the weaken or the decreased defense because you, you weak hit. And then the Whispers can't do the damage you need. Whereas Venus is Void, so she'll always enable. Like we're pretty much running Voids here, so it's um it's pretty good. Suzerain's problem is cooldowns. Really, it's cooldowns. Um, I could rebuild the, the Necmo. Right now, Necmo's in Relentless. Right now, Necmo is in uh, is in just a fast Relentless build. He's in like 284 Re Relentless. So we could take, re you know, we could take um, Necmo out of Relentless, put him in something else. Suzerain He's still good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Suzerain Katone is bad. I'm just saying for this team, the cooldowns are too long because I kill the heads too quickly. Suzerain Katone is better when the heads stay alive a little bit longer because you can get back around to his abilities. I just kill the heads too quickly. So by the time I've actually... Like Whisper is basically killing the head in one turn. It's too hard. I mean, what is Whisper built? What is Venus built in? Venus is not built in anything good at the moment, so we could absolutely change Venus's build out. She's built in Relentless. Um, don't really feel like I want that. Let's just see what we can get in. Uh, Cursed. 
It's got Tripper all axy there, just chilling. If I ever get a good, that's going on Constantine or Fairnax. That is going on Constantine or Fairnax. That one. I don't find Cupidus to be doing that good damage. I'll be honest. I find him quite weak. Like Cupidus works when there's Torment and Shamael, but without Torment and Shamael, I find him to be quite weak. Certainly against a six star whisper and a, and a four star whisper. She's not, like, he's not competing against that. Let's find Venus and put her in. I don't know, like 250. Whatever I need, what is it? Like, I actually don't need much Axie. Like 200 Axie will do. I can even go attack, to be honest. It's got a lot of accuracy. I don't really need any more. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what rotation I pick. I just wanted to pick a Hydra boss. Hey, John. That'll do. Let's try this build. Let's do the... I really don't use those boots if I can help it. These relentless pieces. I can't find relentless. Yeah, I can just melt them. That'll do. Fitting room, what we got just new, it's fine. Fitting room. Uh, let's find the this, this. A piece, try on. This, this. And we need that piece. 
Look how little curse gear I have. It's so painful. It's like scraping the bottom of the barrel. Some of it's really good gear. It's just scraping the bottom of the barrel, a lot of it. All right, so that's like 275, 251. It's pretty good. Uh, and let's just throw in some gear on Gurp Tuck. With Gurp Tuck, because we're on hard, I absolutely don't need too much accuracy. I can find accuracy in, in better places, like something like this, you know? And and roll stuff. I mean, will that do me? No, no this does this have accuracy. Yeah, Hex is a relatively new debuff, so... Hi, so if there's an Amos team with White Dryad, and I'm not sure who they're refreshing, any guess? They're probably not refreshing anything. Refreshing skills on White Dryad, and unless it's the old way of being able to force the enemy to... There was an old trick where you could force the boss into a situation where he wouldn't use his alternate form, but I think they bug fixed it. So there could be a, an old team. Make sure you're filtering for teams within the last month. I remember mean, Rathalos set here, it's kind of nuts. Just kind of looking for something with a high accuracy. I'll do. What rings are you wearing? That'll do. Um. Shush. Um, I could Guardian Gurp Tuck. That's what I was thinking with Revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got some retaliation pieces I can throw on him. You know, we've got some pretty good retaliation pieces. Doesn't need to critical hit, does he? Is that the only pieces I have in curing? Wow, I really need to farm some curing, honestly. Uh, Alright, well, we'll just go with some perception gear for now. And add it later on. We'll work on it. Deal with some speeds. Okay, what do we got that's unequipped? It's not the best, but we'll try it. Do I not have a chess piece? Oh, he's in an old one. That'll do. Alright, let's try this. That's at 250 speeds, 273 axi, 2.4k. Bit squishy, but we'll try it. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, Gurp Tech, because it will work on uh, continuous heals. Guardian's another option I was thinking of. Right, hopefully we get 
We didn't. So what I want to do here is I want to try and get Cursed on the Mischief Head. Let's not rabbit. We will get to it. I want to try and get Cursed on the Mischief Head. Like that. Because now we can put this ability. Get a Provoke. And we can start ripping this head apart. Get a double turn. Or oh, nearly. Because what I want to do is I want to reset the cooldown of the turn meter bar so that I extend the provoke duration. And now I have to take out the torment head. Um. I can clear off this. Nice. Nice. Torment head down. Um. And then we can slow them all down. And now we can start wrecking. The, the decapitated heads. Now we can see the true power of this team. Ideally, we'd have Hex out on everyone at this point. We've only got it out on, like, some. But you'll see the damage the Hex is doing. 282. Right, really, I need to try and get some Hex out on that head over there. Didn't get it. It's fine. That provokes annoying. Somehow, I haven't been able to get decreased defense over on that head over there. It's fine. We can just um, kill it by that fashion. <laughs> it's a lot of damage. I mean, it's a lot of damage. Man, we still haven't got Hex. On that head on the left, which is kind of annoying because that's the head I want to I want to kill next. I still haven't got cursed out. Lord above. to kill the head now. Oh, we will get provoked. It's nice. Buys me a turn. Will we get a Hex? There we go. Now you'll see why I wanted the Hex, because we are going to smash it with the uh, the damage on the right. Pretty much. Watch the damage. Chunk. Ready? Chunk. I don't actually need to do damage to kill it. Chunk. I can kill it by just attacking this head on the left. Poison Cloud's a problem. I probably should have focused killing this head a bit further. But I will kill the head through... Um, you can kill it through um, Hexy. And because we got Hex sets, we can apply Curse set on uh, Poison Cloud heads. So I will kill it, but I'll just kill it through Cursed instead. So as long as we keep killing the heads when they come out, this can do a lot of damage. Is it going to do like Trunder damage? No. No, it won't do Trunder damage. Okay, now it takes defense weaken.
But look, we'll probably take out the Poison Cloud in a moment. Nearly. That Reflect is a problem. Gotta be careful now, because if I get provoked, I can kill myself. This is why I need Gurp Tuck booked, by the way. Um, oh boy, I'm gonna get cleansed here. Probably too many poisons out on that, so let's... And this is where I'm a bit worried about this team is, if it gets out of control, is there enough healing? Because right now, I have no healing. I have no... So obviously I can heal off this. But there's no leech out at the moment. Or at least we got rid of the reflect, that's something. I need to get a leech out like yesterday. All right, we should be okay now. Oh. There's a nice heal. Let's heal him first just to give him a bit of health. Oh, that was a mistake. Probably need to take out the Torment Head next. Nice Hex out on everyone. Should get rid of the fears. Whack this out. Do some AoE damage. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's good. It will be the Torment Head. But if I kill the Torment Head as quickly as possible, that's obviously the key to it. I didn't there. I focused other heads. I obviously have to be wary as well of the amount of poison dumping that the enemy is going to do to me. Um, I would probably run this through and just see how it goes actually now. As my first key. Um... Uh, will Stoltus reflect Gertex back onto him? I, no, I don't think so. I think it has to be from an enemy. Um, a proc cycle of violence in the area all the time. I mean, we're at 2 million damage per key. It's not the craziest damage for hard. But it's still good damage. Like, this could easily do a, a couple of hundred million. It just depends on how the head rotates as well, right? So if you get um, particularly bad head rotations, it's pretty awkward. And obviously, Gurp Tech is not booked. So that's why it got a bit ropey there, because I wasn't able to reapply the block buffs in time, especially to the Suffering Head that's going to um, take extra turns. But it's actually a lot more stable than I thought it was going to be. left. Then I'm out. I should have probably A2'd there, but it doesn't really matter. Just keep whacking this head. I don't know, Dutchie. How do you feel? Do you, this is hard. This is hard mode. How does, it, how does it feel to you? Do you think it's pretty good? Like, obviously it's not going to be your level because you've got Feral, but... I 
it feels like it's doing decent damage. It's getting better as the run goes on. Now, this is the awkward part. Torment's the nasty bit, as is Wrath because of that AoE blast. So I have to be careful when that happens. As long as Leech is out, which is why Necmo is quite important in this team. As long as, as long as Leech is out, it's fine. But this is where the Torment head is a problem. Because obviously the fears will interrupt me. I'm going to kill this Wrath head as quickly as I can just so I don't get blasted. Uh, has he got Hex? Yes, I can probably kill him by doing that. And obviously, Gurp Tech with Warmaster would help his healing. Doesn't have that at the moment. That Poison Cloud is okay because we didn't hurt this. We get rid of this Poison Cloud head. Oh, nearly. Where it's nasty now, see where we get fears. I should finish off. Right, okay, so that gets rid of that. Nice. Now we can start attacking this for healing. Get ally protection out. Um I don't really want to put any more poisons at the moment, so I'm just gonna do that to give continuous heal, decrease speed. We had no uptime here. Oh, you will need to heal off this. Heal up. Full heal. Lovely. Oh man, Gurptuck is dead. I think Gurptuck might be dead. I don't know what will happen. Oh, heal him. That was close. That was nasty for a while there. Block bus out. Keep the damage rolling. Now we just need to get back an AoE going because... Um, here we go. Get Hex out. Turn me uh, Get Decrease Speed out. Probably need to focus fire this because we kind of consumed a lot of our time. Sorry if I'm not seeing chat right now. I'm just focusing to make sure I don't mess this up. That's why I was trying to kill it before that happened. Yeah, it scales. So the higher the difficulty, the less likely you are to respawn the same head. Um, who is particularly low at dying? I don't really want him to die. Got a lot of poisons out on us at the moment. I probably should have killed that head on the left. Never mind. Torment's probably the biggest threat. Can we kill this head? I didn't need to provoke. So. Really, I, t I should have provoked. Kind of annoying, but we've got weaken still. It's somewhat frustrating that I had it still alive on the right, I'll be honest. Let's just get my Venus out. Um 
Hello. This is hard, we're trying. Right, can we kill this head now? No, apparently not, still. Cat, what are you meowing at for? Uh, neck was in relentless. Right, now we can double boost this. I can't believe that head is still alive. I really can't. I've killed it so much, like... Oh, wow. Um, can I bounce off someone? No, we'll just double hit this. It's a shame I couldn't get an extra turn there. Here. No, you just want to meow. Just want to meow. Double bounce off this. Oh, look at that. Two million damage on an A3. Two million damage. Two million damage. Like, come on. That's nuts. Um... It's like a race to see which one, um, which which whisper is going to do the most damage. I'm pretty sure these whispers as well don't have Stoke the Fury, so this is missing like 12% damage because you'd have Stoke the Fury on here as well. Man, I hate those uh, provoked. What? Honestly, the cat's got plenty of food. She's had loads. She just wants attention. That's what she wants. Um, yeah, we're at 64 turns. Uh, we can go here. You always want to try and attack the Mischief Head if you can. Or like the Wrath Heads. Because they tend to be the squishiest heads. So you can really pump some crazy damage. If you can do it, of course. Oh, extra turn. Boom, boom. And it always pays me to attack this. Because the Curse Set is doing so much damage. That I'm actually killing heads without killing them. Which is in itself obscene. Get some food now. Honestly. So demanding. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what my current ones have. Like, so for example, right now, I could, if I wanted to, A1, the head of suffering, because you've got it's got decreased defense, weaken. It would actually be less damage than if I just A1 the one without, because this suffering head has so much defense. The only my one that's got the consumption counter should hit that because it's got crushing ren. This is much better to hit this target. It might not do, you know, it, it's just the way that it works with the damage count. Whereas this one, if I hit this over here, it's fine because I've got Crushing Rend. I can do a lot more damage. You also hit some Helm Smasher there. But the other one would not do that because the defense numbers are just too high. Um, now I want to kill this head. I'll make an exception to kill this head here because it'll reset the turn meters. So I get more uptime on the decapitated heads. Burn it up again. Hex out. Uh, so for example now, I don't have A2 or A3. I could bounce off this head. I wonder how much this will do. Probably not a lot. Because obviously I don't have increased attack. Up until now. Obviously I always use A2 on this head because it's going to do true damage. Now, what do we do? Whack this head. 964. Didn't hit Helm Smasher. 968. That did hit Helm Smasher. We also didn't have the Gurp Tuck buff. So you, you actually are seeing the impact of the Gurp Tuck buff there. Uh, if I can just hit that head. Because when the Gurp Tuck buffs are up, that's like an extra three to 400,000 hits. Right, so these are not hitting Gurp Tuck buffs. 1.2, that was a Helm Smasher proc. Now we, put, well, now we can put the Gurp Tuck buffs up if we get a chance and get back around to it. 
Don't know if we will. They're all going to probably respawn just at the wrong time. Okay, uh, then we can go in it here. 9.4. We didn't get a single one there. 1.7 million A2. Like, it's so much damage. Alright, I'll get you some food in a moment. Honestly. Cats. Uh, we are going to, like, kill this head off here. That's fine. Probably kill the, the provoke head. So it's, it's looking really good. Like, this is, as long as we don't get Torments, Torments head really slow us down. I'm going to have to feed this cat in a second. Um, now, awkwardly, I don't really have a good target, so I just A1 this, because I don't really have a very good target to do anything. Sometimes you get weakened, sometimes you don't. Same here. I'm not going to use my A3s. Because they've all got um, defense penalty on, which is a frustrating thing. Okay, now we're in a bit of spot of bother because those buffs are not desirable, but we can... Now we got provoked. Oh, that hurt. And this is the problem now. There's a reflect buff. Now we're in a spot of bother. Because we... I killed them because of... Halai protection. Because Gurp Tech's not booked. Because Gurp Tech is not booked. So that's why I've been a bit afraid to use Gurp Tech at the moment. Because I need him booked. Because he's not booked, the cooldown is just too long. So we're not getting back around to our block buffs. If I had block buffs there, we wouldn't have any buffs stolen. We would have been fine. Um, and the ally protection is what killed him. I killed my Krisk. So... Um, it's fine. We can carry on without Chris for a bit. Don't kill yourself. Oh, healed. It's not great because... Stop. Whatever you're doing. we get food in a second. Don't. Honestly. Um... We could probably just try and whack this down. Uh, give this a bit of a heal. If I can reset two meters, that would be great. I should kill it. Gives me some time to deal with this. Um, problem. Which is basically, can I kill it with curse? That's the only way I can get away with this. So I'm going to try to basically kill it with a cursed um, hex prox. the only way. It's not going to be great because we lost a lot of stability now. I need turns on whispers. This has got to kill it. Oh, it's not quite. Oh, there it is. I'm going to keep the key because um, I know I can do better, but uh, I've I've got three Hydra keys to do. I don't want to do them all. You know. I don't want to have to do them all again, so I'm just going to keep this key for now. I think once I book Gurp Tuck, that team works quite comfortably, though. We'll check the Whispers to see if they had Stoke to Fury, because if they didn't, that's more damage we can get. I lost the ally protection, yeah. I lost I lost the, the stability, which is Krisk. Because um because the cooldown was too long. You know, it's like a five turn cooldown when it's not booked and not having those block buffs up is what cost me that. Because it doesn't matter if I lose the buffs, it's I just can't have the ally protection stolen because I will just kill anything. The damage is so high from Whisper, uh, it'll just kill anything. I'm carrying on because I can get a lot of damage from burns for a few turns. I can leave it on auto. Uh, right, I'm going to go sort this cat out. I'll be back in about five minutes. I'm just going to grab a drink. And uh, we will get round to now the rabbit build. Because I feel like I can lock these builds in for now. 
they'll do. Uh, we'll just check everything over. I'll be back in five minutes.
Hello. All right, so um, six star crushing Ren Whisper wins this race. Pretty pretty hefty damage. So yeah, if we like book out Gurp Turk, uh, get him with some War Master, so we get a little bit extra damage here or there. Nothing crazy. Then I think this team easily gets to like 300 plus million on brute on hard, which will do. It'll do to start. We may be able to tweak it over time. Yeah, of course. Obviously, we got unlucky there. We could have gone on way longer than this. Um, so I, I'm going to keep the result just because, you know, it's, it's Monday. I've only got two more days to do Hydra. It's a good start. I know we're in a bit of a competitive Hydra clash, but I'm pretty confident that my Nightmare and my Brutal teams will over overcome the difference. Um, what, what I want to check is... No, I have stronger champs for higher. Uh, what I want to check is... So one had Stoke to Fury. One doesn't. So my four-star Whisper would get more damage. Yeah, no problem. We're going to have a look at that one next. You know, so obviously there's also scope for improvement here. I threw some gear on people. She's in a pretty good spot. Uh, although her banner could go up. And I could glyph and I could make it stable. Uh, I haven't really regained Krisk in a while. But um, we could absolutely speed Krisk up. Gurp Tuck is just in some random gear. Ideally, I'd like him in curing set. Purely because... Um, every time he continuously heals, he's going to do a lot more healing with it. Right, and we'll also restore some bonus HP. So it's actually quite good with the volume of continuous heals that he can pump out. I actually think his curing set's really good. So I'll do a lot of finite hard farming to get a, a good curing set for him. Um, but he can go up a lot in terms of stability. Um, and then obviously the whispers are. I do need to finish building out my second whisper, my four star whisper. That needs to go up. Lots of glyphing. That needs to be dusted. That needs to be maxed out. Maxed out probably switched you know so once i finish building up these whispers that'll be great uh this kind of needs upgrading crit rate's fine there to be honest but it could be changed to crit damage um why well, actually needs to crit rate so that needs to be switched that needs to be switched so they're pretty good yeah cumin sets with, works with continuous heals i could go guardian but i feel like curing is quite good as well i don't really feel like the risk of me dying was quite limited there, Duchy, apart from when Torment was out. But you can see how quickly I can kill a Torment head. I don't really feel like I need the protection. I feel like I just need sometimes for the continuous heals to be a little bit more powerful. Um, so I feel like a curing set would be better. Or at least I want to see if it is. What is up with you today? Don't meow at me. Honestly. Well, she's getting buffed, so we'll have to see what the buff does to her. Why does she have so much crit damage? What, this one? I don't know. She just does. Uh, she's in, like, crit damage attack percentage. I mean, it could be higher, if I'm being honest. I could get an extra 20% crit damage if you want. That will push her up to, like, 355. I mean, that kind of helps. I mean, potentially, we would... We <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have all my best lethal gear on my whispers. That's another problem. Um, this is probably not the best thing to put on your whisper. In hindsight. <laughs> right. 
What's on my dice? Yeah, if I had a two hand rack or something. I'm like. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's potentially I have to regear them. But I, I mean, a lot of it was built because, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, they're very well built. Keep in mind, though, these Whispers are built for my Shogun farm team. So. I mean, some of them are not that crazy. I mean, these pieces are more average. It's all right. It's not bad. The second Whisper has better. No, 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 no. The second Whisper has my better gear, ironically. Uh, it's only 181 speeds. So it's not fast. After Hydra, like my area bonuses for Hydra are pretty bad. Yeah, my whispers are strong. You done? Last one. There we go. Yeah, I, true, true. Don't get me wrong. Uh, that's a potential. I, I just want to try the both of them, Duchy. See which one really works. Um, if if Guardian's absolutely another another way to go. Yeah, that's kind of where I started with. I probably will. Yeah, Albandi. I probably will. But these boots particularly probably should not be on on my whisper. I'll be honest. These ones definitely should not be on my whisper. It's like probably the best boot on my account. Um, yeah, and yeah. Obviously, accessories don't matter because I don't have anyone in the night rev. So, um, so, but this is the thing I've got. I need to rebuild everything, and trying to rebuild everything and trying to figure out the best way to do it's hard because. I rebuild one thing, I break another thing. I rebuild another thing, I'll break another thing. And it's it's just like a constant cycle of that. You know, it is just a constant cycle of that. I just need to do something very quickly. I just need to do something on uh, Dragon here very quickly in the background. So ask questions whilst I'm here. Distract me from this madness that I'm doing on this other game. Any day with uh, Optimus, uh, I can't use Garrel's alternate form for damage pills. Are you on mobile? There is a Garrel problem I need to fix. Um, yeah, my, my Night Revenant's accessories are so good that if I get a jaw gid, it's going to be nuts. My jaw gid, if I ever get one, I've also got a five-star jaw gid soul, John. So not only will I have like those accessories, I'd have a five-star jaw gid to go with it. So... Yeah, I, on mobile, I, I forgot to add this button. I don't know how nobody told me about it until like a couple of weeks ago. I forgot to add the switcher button. So I need to add the switcher button there. Um, so it's something on my, it's on my list of fixes um, for mobile. Um, it is on my list. But I, I totally didn't realize I didn't put the button into switch forms. I've been considering changing the button switcher so that you actually have to predefine your form within the optimizer settings before you actually optimize the champion because um, it's difficult to actually keep 
um, it's, it's actually difficult for me to keep the form that you actually chose when you go back into the result view. So I, I was considering like having it as an option just so it's easier for people. Mythical champions did cause a bit of trauma to all of our tools. Yeah, he is. Um, is there a way to search? At the moment, no. At the moment, it literally filters to current rotation, but it could be something I add. Um, I just had to put a fix in so that you were getting the right suggestion. So it's uh, it's on my list of things to do. Like stages tool as well, I will like, eventually expose all of them so that you can see all the rotations. What do we get today? Nothing. It's fine. What's in our market then? Um. Well, they, you don't really. Oh my god. <laughs> don't even think about it. Purchase. That was a. That was an instant purchase. Had to be done. Not that Assault really helps her, but just having 7,500 more health helps her. I've no idea what we'll put her on, but that's um, that was an instant buy. That was an instant purchase. Um, souls don't generally give you an awful lot of like points, so I wouldn't necessarily be too worried about using your Soulstone points if you've been hoarding them for like a summon rush, because they don't really give you an awful lot. Um... It's only whether or not you want bet you you want to save it for like a better boost window. I, the problem is I don't really know if they're going to do one. It's very difficult to know. I would suggest definitely pulling a tier two stones tomorrow, especially if the path is if the the event is quite good. It's just going to give you some free rewards. You know this that's that makes sense to do. Um, the other thing to do is, how long is the chase on for? Anyone able to check when the boost ends? Um. Yeah, you can get Mythical Souls, I'm pretty sure, in the shop. Actually, I don't know if you can in the market. Funny you mention that, I don't think you can in the market. Friday. So perhaps, perhaps, I would suggest you wait until the missions go live in the game. If you care about the missions, I would suggest perhaps you wait until those missions go live. In case... There is something in those missions that require you to summon souls, for example. Because what you don't want to do is blast all of them away and then, um, you know. No, we're not tanking this week, no-brainer. Uh, what's up, Sassy Rank from Rathalos? So there's two ways you can use a Rathalos set. You can either use it as a turn meter set, basically taking four parts. So you get four, um, the four speed bonus. So every time you AoE, you get turn meter. That's one way you could build it. It's an AoE turn meter booster set. The other way you can build it is a AoE damage set. So it just depends what you want. So obviously the AoE boosting set, you, you want speed, accuracy, more of a supportive base substats. If you want damage, then clearly you need crit rate, crit damage speeds so it just depends on which way you look at it it's going to be a little bit like stone skin where um there is no good or bad way you know Yeah, there's a mission to get soul coins from selling stones and i think what what we don't know is like what's going to be after part one i don't know how much of the video i, I glanced at the video 
and I saw a few different snippets. I don't know how much of the full path of missions we saw. I definitely think we didn't see anything beyond the first 60. So it's like... Could there be... So, for example, could there be something within the first day that you can do, but you get stuck because you used all your stones? That's what I'm thinking about. Um, you sold a four-star Mikagi cell. Rule number one of souls. Never sell anything that's legendary or mythical. Ever. Ever. Never sell them. Because they're so hard to get, you may never get them again. Like, I'll show you my soul collection now in a second. Just run some Iron Twins here. While I'm doing something in the background. Yeah, if you've already got it, Wiki Bunani, that is totally different. Especially if you think it's a, 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 like a legendary or, or champion you're not going to carry a duplicate for. You know, I, for example, Roxam. I probably wouldn't keep a second Roxam because when am I ever going to use a second Roxam? Whereas a Kaimar, I would keep a second Kaimar. Uh, a Cardiel, I would keep a second Cardiel. Uh, Jorgid, I'd keep a second Jorgid, right? Those very powerful legendaries, I would definitely keep duplicates. But for the basic ones, yeah, you could probably sell the duplicates if you've already got them. But you should never sell Mythical Souls. I know it's tempting. The problem is people people see the coins and they think this is really amazing. And they go, I'm going to instantly sell it. And the worst thing you can do is just instantly sell your souls that you don't need. Unless they're like rank 1 rares or something like that, you know. But like, I'm talking rank 3 epic souls. People just do anything, I don't need it. You'd be surprised now with these stat changes how valuable just having a 3 star epic is. A lot of boss content these days has things like... 30% damage reduction or 20% damage reduction if you've got the 6-star bottle, whatever it is. I always mix up the damage reduction attack. Just because it's not a very powerful epic, like, you shouldn't do it. If you have duplicates of it, fair enough. But you will get these over time. And then when you get to these awakening stages and people go, I just don't have enough stars for this. But it's because you sold all your epic stars. So you actually have to rely on, like, one champion. You need it on average four. Which is why whenever I get to an Awaken stage, I don't really struggle. Sometimes the combination of heroes can can kind of get me. And it takes me a little bit. But pretty much like Sintranos, I get to an Awaken stage. I'm like, I've probably got 25 stars. Because I've got so many rank 5 and rank 6 epics. Because you do get a lot over time. And I, I, I've spent some money on the souls. But I haven't spent like anywhere near big amounts. I've probably bought maybe four to 500 tier 1 stones over the last 18 months. Or however long it's been out. Um, so it's like four or five packs I've bought. I've never bought any of the tier twos. I've only ever bought the tier ones. Now, obviously, reflective of other people, they, they may not have bought it, but. Um... But I've managed to build a big collection because I generally hoard those souls. Because you never know when you need it. That's the true reality of it. And sometimes having a six-star Crushing Rend is the difference between you clearing a stage that you couldn't do and whether you can, because Crushing Rend is so good against these Centranos waves. So... So I'm just having to do a daily on uh, Dragon here quickly. It's like the last day of something, so I just want to make sure it's done. Is it working? Yeah. I will know all the missions the moment the game gets updated. The missions are a bit weird in the game data because they don't really tell me which order. They kind of just list them out. And sometimes when they've replaced them, it's very difficult to figure out where in the chain they've replaced them. Uh, but hopefully for these advanced missions, they should be in their own little chain of lists um, that I should be able to figure out, you know. Uh, how is Dragon here, especially compared to Raid? I'm tired and exhausted of dragging it at the moment.
Um, at the moment, I am tired and exhausted of Dragon Air because the world boss has been basically seven days of bosses that I've had to do every single day. Uh, and I haven't been able to take my foot off the pedal, unfortunately. Um, and reset has just happened like 15 minutes ago, so I'm trying to get all my keys in very quickly before the boss hits 100% just in case something goes wrong, which is really stressful. Which is why I'm doing Iron Twins dailies in the background and answering your questions, um, just so that I can... Uh, get these done. Mm. The problem is, it's fun to build the world boss, but once you've built the world boss, you're kind of like forced to do it six times every single day. And Dragon is a very competitive game more than it is uh, anything else. So it's designed as a um, leaderboard race, right? So at the end of the season, Everyone's fighting the leaderboard to basically stay on the top. If you finish top 50, top 100, you get different rewards. And if you miss a day on this other world boss, the end boss, you, you pretty much give up like 50 positions on the leaderboard potentially. So it is a little bit like a, a last minute dash to the finish line. Yeah, I got five essences, really nice. So is it, a, I mean, the fun part is building it. The not so fun part is farming it. I guess is the right way to say it. Once you build it, it's quite fun. And what they do quite well in Dragon is you actually have to use the diversity of uh, champs, right? Once they have a system in their way, basically you can only use one hero once on the boss. So it forces you to build different types of teams, which is quite fun. The problem is it just tends to go on a little bit too long. Um, so... Do I buy keys only on Sunday? It's far too expensive to buy keys any other day of the week. In my opinion, at least, anyway. So expensive. So, um... Wow, we are. Stay, this one's taking a while. My... my Iron Twins team mostly is successful. It has like a 99% success rate. Sometimes if I get in a really unlucky chain of positions, um, the boss will... Uh, if I get unlucky in a chain of positions, the boss can basically keep killing my, uh, my, my Geomancer, which is a bit of a pain. But most of the time... It's fine, you know? Most of the time. Like, sometimes I'll take days off doing Iron Twins. But that's, mo ma that's mainly when... Um, that's mainly when I've got so much energy to use. Like, when it's a path going on or when I have to do, like, 4,500 Dungeon Divers or something of that nature. Then I'll take a couple of days off Iron Twins. But I always try to do my Iron Twins daily these days. It's really important. You find it too expensive for you on Sundays. It, it's not cheap. I, I agree. I do find it very expensive. Like 150 gems is a lot. But at least on Sunday you're getting double rates. Like I do agree. It's not cheap. I certainly think it's um, an egregious cost to put on someone. I feel like it should be 75 for the amount of essence you get. I don't mind paying 75 gems for like it. But you know. It's a lot of gems. Like 150 is so much. Like that's what? 40, 80... 120, that's nearly, that's, nearly four, that's nearly four refills of energy. That's a lot of energy to be used, to be spent spending. But, you know, it's for me. My points should be spent on. Uh, my points should basically be spent on uh, Iron Twins. It should be spent on Shogun Grove and Sand Devil and getting those oils. That's where all my energy needs to go. Aristocrat owned Dragonair. I don't know who really is owning Dragonair at the moment. Te Byte Dance owned Newverse, which develops Dragonair. But Byte Dance wants to sell Newverse, and I don't know if anyone is buying Newverse. There's rumors that Tencent is going to be buying Newverse. But one does not really know these things. At the moment. Just have to see. Wow, this run is taking a long time in the background. I can kind of see it's like two minutes 
See, this is what happens with my team if it falls into this cycle. It can get into this really awkward cycle where um, we need to basically, we need to revive Geomancer and Aox. Aox needs to get his decreased attack out. So that we um, can then burn. And if it just fails too many times, eventually the boss ramps up and he dies. It happens from time to time. Very rare. We're talking... I think this one might be a fail, but we'll see what happens. Because he's ramped up a lot. Because once, if decrease attack is out, this team will never die. Yes, this one's going to be a fail. Happens from time to time. Uh, do you think mathematically using our to top tier stones is a good idea for this event? I think the tier 2 immortal soul stones is probably a good idea. Yeah, well, Tencent wanted to buy one of the subsidiaries of Newverse when it first came out. But uh, Newverse won it, obviously, which is owned by ByteDance, which owns TikTok. You know, they're all kind of big tech companies in China. Um... Yeah. So. No, this is fine, honestly. Like, what I mean it fails, it fails like one in a hundred. It's a very, very successful team. Just sometimes it wants to... Um, be a little bit annoying, basically. No, most of the time it's a one-minute team. It's just if I 3% Geo or something bad happens. I mean, it does not take me long. I've got it even down to one minute at times. I just don't want to build three pain keepers for it or get pain keepers built with any sort of setup. It's just so much effort. Like, this team works. Why would I change it? If I lose 20 energy, it's 20 energy for me. Like, it's, you got to remember it's different for me because I, I have access to resources like a credit card if I need it. Um, so, that's always a consideration for me. Like, I don't mind 20 seconds here or 20, second, uh, 20 energy there. It's pretty successful. Well, I still have to put gear on them. That's what I'm saying. I gotta put books and speed. I just I can't be bothered when I have a team that works. You just happen to see the first fail that I've had on it for like five days. I think the last fail I had was like last Sunday. It's a pretty successful team most of the time. You have access to credit card too. <laughs> the best thing about these area bonuses, by the way, is going to be these like extra accuracy. I will for sure be putting accuracy in Shogun and a bit of accuracy in Iron Twins just to help the build a little bit. You need so much accuracy in these places. It's ridiculous. So I don't really care about the speed. I just care about a bit of accuracy. Shogun probably for speed, just to help you reho and stuff. It would help. I could probably release some speed gear. But it's probably going to come after I finish my Hydra upgrades and Iron Twins, uh, Finite upgrades, sorry, because I'm I'm behind because I committed a lot of my my, um, my my stuff into Doom Tower. Uh, not Doom Tower, Clan Boss, because, you know, I'm an idiot. That's what I do. But generally, as long as we get decreased attack upon the boss, it's pretty safe. It can be frustrating sometimes, but it's fine. I'm 
and boom. Alright, nice. Um, I would suggest as well, you... Like, I think I saw something in one of the missions that said something like, use coins, so I'm hoarding all my coins at the moment. I'm just hoarding everything. It's like hoard Shadow Legends until, like, the patch comes live, which is, I think, Thursday? I think the patch is coming Thursday, at least. Like, these, I'm hoarding Impulse gear now that it's coming out of Live Arena. Um, let's get... My friends, go destroy Doom Tower. Okay, yeah, we'll just destroy it. What's the best stats to get for Centranos? Probably speed and ignore defense, if I'm being honest. Speed and ignore defense, because the biggest thing you need to do is kill things, and the biggest thing you need to do is go fast whilst you're killing things. So I think speed, ignore defense, absolutely. Probably then, um, maybe crit damage, but... I would suggest accuracy resistance at that point then. The nice thing about the resistance stat will be if we, if there is waves where you want to actually build resistance, like Dutchie tells me this all the time, build resistance, the resistance area bonus is going to help you a lot because normally the stats are just too expensive because you're dealing with rare champions and epic champions where you need to invest a lot more into survivability than you, you would like to. So having just an 80 extra resistance or an 80 extra accuracy, that's that's going to be worthwhile. I think the biggest challenge, though, is going to be for people who are already up in gold four. Do they have, like, the mental capacity to do the same amount of grind that they did to get to gold four, considering they look to be... I think I looked at it, they were all tier three. They've put them all at tier three, so that means it's going to be the same as upgrading Hydra bonuses, not Fire Knights. It's going to take a lot of grinding to get your Centranos and your Shogun Grove and your, Fant and your Sand Devil to any sort of bonus upgrades. It's a lot. You know, they could have... I don't really know why all of a sudden a dungeon is being put in the clan boss tier. It's a bit of a question mark for me. Why is that happening? Because it shouldn't. Right? Hi, the tier threes used to be bosses. Clan boss, Hydra boss. Now all of a sudden tier threes also dungeons. I'm a bit like... Fair enough, Cintranos. But surely Iron Twins... Uh, like, surely Phantom Shogun, Grover, and Sand Devil. That should have been in tier two for me. Sand Devil, I don't think you need to. Some people might, if they want to build, like, a uh, Reho Envy. If you're using, like, uh, a Reho one-shot team, and you want to just make the Reho build easier for Shogun Grove, then you might want to have one build that's lower for Shogun Grove, and then just be able to, re like, replace the stats in Sand Devil. So there might be some, like, Reho-esque things, and maybe some people want to put a few points in defense and health just to help them build the tankier Aniri, just to give them more like um survivability but i agree sand devil is is the lowest priority um but for yeah i agree it, it's for the majority of people they're not going to want to to bother with um with sand devil absolutely shogun grove because building reho for shogun grove is probably one of the hardest things i've had to do in a while it's very difficult to um it's very difficult to build a um a Shogun Grove Riho. Like, you need, like, a lot of speed. It needs to be, like, 600 plus accuracy. So having just, you know, bonus accuracy, bonus speed is going to help, I think, a lot. Um, absolutely. Like, I'll show you my Riho build now once this uh, thing finishes what I'm just doing in the background here. But I can see like a lot of people wanting to maybe make their uh, Aniri just a little bit beefier to, to take away like the 1% fail rate. Because some people still have a 1% fail rate, you know. Uh, but it definitely will take a, a, a backseat to things like the Cursed City of Centranos. You know, it makes sense that that's the case. You know, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna run it over, you know, the Cursed City of Centranos, are they? So... Uh... I do this very quickly. I'll do.
Yeah, Scartosis is difficult as well. My Scartosis had to be 316 speed, for example. Nice. It's like, I'll show you my Reho build here. You know, to get this, I've had to get her to 294 speed, 593 accuracy. She still doesn't have enough accuracy. So she is using like triple roll, double roll. That's a bad roll, to be honest. That could be improved. Triple, triple, you know, speed, speed, accuracy, triple. It's using like a lot of my good gear. So if I can reduce the weight on that build, that improves the, the reliability. Because this has a habit of sometimes 3%ing. Um... It has a habit of 3%ing when I don't want it to. You know, because obviously it's not enough accuracy yet. Uh, where are all the good rewards are normal? Do the per stages. Have you thought of default stats you would build on City Champs? I think, like, for me, Dutchie, if they're designed for damage dealers, just around two, 230 speed, I think covers a lot. 230, 240 speed. If there's supports, I kind of like 260. For Cintrano's hard, specifically. You know, if we're going in the harder stages. Um... Mm. Yeah, my fault just built full damage. Yeah, my fault just built full damage. I'm talking HP defense. Um, I think anything above like 20, like it depends. If they're a damage dealer, you can't really focus on those. Uh, resistance, you need like 450, Dutchie. If you want to use resistance build, you need like 450. Otherwise, you're not going to res resist enough. Uh, Defense-wise, I always like to get to like... If I want to survive, something like 2800 defense is, is normally the minimum. Uh, but you tend to find a lot of these restrictions. You're dealing with rare champions. And trying to actually scale their defense is, is the hard part. Because you just have terrible base stats. So you can kind of aim for it. But the reality is a lot of the champions are not going to be able to hit those. Especially if you're dealing with rares, epics... You know, some very niche picks. You're just not going to be able to hit those stats. Um, so I think generally you just pick. I think you just basically go, like I said, about 240 speed for generally. About enough accuracy, like 300 accuracy you need as well. Or is it 350 accuracy? You actually need quite a lot of accuracy as well. That's the crazy thing. You need a lot of accuracy. Uh, if I keep crap defense teams and just lose the 10 daily, will it better the teams I fight? No difference. Uh, what On what area M MT7765? Uh, what content are we talking about here? What's your reason not afraid? Does this team right here work with just swapping more again for this? Yeah, it should do. You will find that you will struggle a little bit more with Termeter. You might need to speed up your Allure. My Allure is incredibly slow on this um, team. So you might need to find that you need to like take your Allure up to 240 speed. Mine's at 199 speed. She's super slow here. Um, you can normally take a hit from the boss. The boss doesn't hit too hard. You just can't take more than like three turns, but the boss can take two turns without being too much of a burden to you. Like you can see, mine is never... My, mine can take a hit. Sometimes mine will fail, by the way, if either I 3% the decrease speed or my Whisper, because it's wearing a reaction ring, decides to go a bit haywire. But I don't really care because I can do it so quickly that I can just go again. So for me, it's not really a problem. I just... Um, I just, you know, run it again. Because it's super fast. Yeah, just make sure your Allure isn't faster than your Mora gain. Right, because you still need to have that relationship where you go turn meter boost into your nuke clear. Because if you don't have that relationship, then 
you're going to find that your enemy of law will break in and do lots of different things. Um, let's see what you don't want. Yeah, you could add another... Uh, you could drop, like... You know, you don't even need, like... Technically, you don't need a boss killer. It will just take longer. You could just run it and kill it with War Master. It's just you're running the risk of failing. I do like to put in a, a hefty boss killer. The only reason why I don't use Newt specifically is he's a waddler. He loves to have a little waddle up to the boss, have a little waddle back. and waddle. It just adds like 30 seconds to the run because he just takes a long time to waddle. And I, I just really don't like the waddling. <laughs> so I actually found when I was running my Whisper that Whisper could just kill it quicker. Even when I was testing it in like things like Fire Knight, I just put Whisper on top of with the Allure. It was just faster than running Newt. Even though Newt does a 30%, he actually costs you time with his A1 and his A2. They're slower animations. Wouldn't everyone rework their Fade team with Armands? Uh, possibly, but, you know, putting Armands in your team, is that a very good use for it? Maybe. Just depends what you want to do, really. I think if you don't have a Tark Fade team, you would definitely would. But by the time you actually get Armands, how much of the Dark Fae have you missed? And then you won't see Dark Fae for another three months, right? We're in farm mode now for Dark Fae. If you're not farming Dark Fae at this point, you're missing out, right? You're losing on days. Now, obviously, some people still climb in Doom Tower hard. Totally respect that. But by the time you get this Armands, it's going to be too late for Dark Fae for at least three months. Yeah, but Whisper actually does so much damage when she takes those turns. That's why it's okay. It's like Seer. I, my Seer hits so hard on the A1. I actually allow her to do the A1. Most people will put the A2 because they don't want to make in the run. But she hits so hard that it doesn't really matter. Because I'm absolutely fine with her... Um, I'm absolutely fine with her taking taking turns. Uh, what are the recommended speeds for? I'll show you my team now. Just finish this in the background. What's happening over here? Kill now. I'll show you my team after this runs. I'll have a look at floor 94 as well for you. See what's going on there. Uh, yes, Folger's A2-ing is very important. Yeah, Folger's A2 is very important because you want her to use this two meter drop there. It's very important. That's what makes her very good at the clone killing role because you're getting that 100% two meter drop, which is only half, obviously, because of the boss's passive. But it means you're getting basically a lot more two meter control. Your Carl can do it just as good. It's just that your Carl brings the freeze, which is slightly different. What I like about her is she self-buffs. So you actually don't need to build your Folger as aggressively. Whereas with your Carl, you'd need to make him, you know, you need to make the build a bit stronger potentially because he's not going to have the same level of, same level of stats. Yeah, I'm just doing daily stuff in on Dragon in the background while we're doing this and while we're talking. Just trying to get it out of the way. Just in case something weird goes on in the game. Can you also juggle, please? Ooh, ooh. No, I can't. Uh, don't excommunicate me because I just bought the six star in the show and I have another five star in the show. What, for uh, Whisper? That's great. Um, it was really good. You don't have a whisper. Oh, that's unlucky. That's truly unlucky. That is quite unlucky. Yeah, 
There we go. Um, so yeah, so I can show you the team here. <sighs> Stupid. They need to move that. It's really annoying. It truly is. Um, where's that Doom Tower? So you can see the speeds I'm running here. Two, three. Lissandra does not need that. Like, Yamora again doesn't need to be this fast, probably. Um, I just have a build like this because I use it for arena. I'm pretty sure you could probably drop it to 250 and lift your your, your lower up and get a better speed too. Right? She's almost going too fast. Uh, I've got Ruella at 223. Fulger at 244. You can see I've got accuracy on her. Probably a bit too much, but that's because of the five-star soul having an impact. I've gone hero soul on Fulger because the clones will count as damage bonuses. So it, in fact, gives me the most amount of damage I can get when I want to do the main job, which is this righteous evocation to one-shot the wave. And as I said, what's really nice about it is she'll always buff. So you always have primary buffs that really boosts her damage. So you can see I can get away with a very limited build. She's in a very, like, quirky build. So she is in Savage, Cruel. But it's, like, not as good Savage Cruel. You know, Crit Rate Gloves. That, those are quite good, to be fair. Probably better than should she deserves. But Average Cruel Gauge. Just Split Roll Gauge. That one's a bit better, but it's low rolled. You know, and... That's, that's all you need. Just basically a bit of a build and she'll cleanse. The key thing is don't build anyone tanky. Don't build them a reaction. Don't keep, don't build them with like, you know, all these defensive stats. You want them to be squishy so that when you kill them, they die really quickly. Otherwise, you like, this is why, I, another reason why I don't like using Newt because he's defense based. So he's harder to kill, which you don't want, right? All of these 2.3k defense, 2.4k defense, 2.4k. Uh, 2,000, 1,500. They're really, really, really squishy. But Folger, in my opinion, is the best in class purely because of accessibility. Stat requirements are much lower and the way that she works with this Crushing Eternity. If you don't have her, your Carl is equally as good. There are other options. Herndig is very popular, for example, um, to do the same thing because he has the Termi to drop and he also has Burn. He has a good amount of damage. Um, when do you use Crit Rate Gloves? Well, if you get a lot of crit damage substats, crit rate gloves can still sometimes be good. Pound for pound, crit damage gloves gives you more stat per slot, right? You're going to get more sort of, you're going to get more budget allocation to a crit damage glove than you are crit rate. But that doesn't necessarily mean if you've had a lot of crit damage substat rolls that have tripled over the different pieces that you can't then do a, a crit rate with crit damage. It's just you will find probably you will always lean towards more crit, da crit damage gloves because you get more bang for your buck. Yeah, again, Herndig's quite tanky, and he also has a weird passive, which is annoying. Yeah, crit damage. I mean, sometimes as well, putting a 100% crit rate on tanks because of the HP numbers is also quite good. Just basically putting a bunch of um, crit rate on someone can be, can be very good. I, I used to run a Suga with crit rate. She wasn't built in any particular damage. But the crit rate was enough to actually push her over the edge. And she did a lot of damage in the end. Um, I have built my Allure with damage. A lot of attack. So Allure's got damage. But that's just because I had spare stats. You could you could easily drop all the attack and just put more speed into her. Right? She is in like this fatal perception. So she's getting a bit of attack here. She's just got a lot of attack on her. But again, she's in some throwaway pieces that I've got. Nothing truly special, just some average pieces around the board. I mean, her ring's not even leveled up. I don't even think she's got masteries. I'm pretty sure none of these have many masteries. Like, Folger doesn't have masteries. Whisper. I think Whisper's the only one that actually has masteries in my team. Everyone else is just, like, a few. I did give a little bit to Folger to help her with, like, the first hit. Very good. Will win a death to basically get some speed. Otherwise, you just don't need him. Obviously, building Warmaster will speed it up. We'll speed it up. Uh, if you build it, you know. I've uh, set to best decapitate everyone then. Holy Sword, the Fae, Newt, Whisper, going deep into the back to manual. Yeah, that could work. Manual's annoying, though. Like, I literally wake up. I climb my normal Doom Tower. I do a secret room. And then I will... After I've done the secret room, I'll go and just do... I'll put Dark Fae on auto, and when I come back, it's done. And if I fail a few times, I just do the last few keys. 
because it can fail. Like if Ruella doesn't place decreased speed, if reaction procs, if something else goes wrong, if someone counterattacks, it can go wrong. Uh, but it's fine because it's so quick, it doesn't really particularly matter, you know. Yeah, but there are alternatives. Like Deacon is just as good. He's not as good, of course. I mean, it's, they're, they're legendary, but he'll do the job. Your, your just success rate might be a little bit lower. You might have to build speed. You might have to substitute the speed in other people, right? But it will absolutely work. Yeah, it's, it's the whisper ring if I fail. It, 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 the reaction, you know. But like, Diabolus works really well. High Cartoon was a big one that I missed on my video. Can go in that leader role as, as good. Mora Gain was a fusion. Uh, Shu Zhen obviously would go into this pretty well if you had her. But she's a Void Legendary, so I wasn't going to recommend that. But there are, there are plenty of alternatives to Lissandra. There aren't any better in class than Lissandra, but that doesn't mean there aren't any alternatives. Yeah, that can happen as well. Like, if Whisper suddenly decides to go absolutely nuts, that can, uh, that can happen. So yeah, I'll do one secret room on normal every single day. So that gives me 16 keys, so I can normally auto the rest, so I don't have to, like, take off Super Rays to do one extra one. I get really annoyed when I have to do that. Like, I don't want to do that, you know? Nothing worse than having to like take super raids off to do one extra key. Right, I'm almost done with this. I wonder if they're going to keep Archie the soul repository. They will. If you've got her, Envy, what they'll do is if you've summoned Archer, she will appear in the soul repository. If you haven't got her, then she won't. It's very similar to the way they do it with, like, uh, exclusive champions. If you have, like, the exclusive champion, where is it? Here. I think it says it in here. Uh, where does it say it? Is it here? Is it here? Yeah, look. Souls for the following champions will only be added to the summoning pool when you have them in your collection. Carnage, Aslin, Maud, Rathalos, Blademaster, Xena, Quintus, Searsha, Ronda, Jamasa, Chrono, and Krakow. So basically all the exclusive champions you can only acquire from playing the game. All of the champions that are either have gone out, like Ninja, Ronda, they, they're out. Uh, things like Quintus, exclusive, Xena, exclusive. So they will add all of the Doom, t all of the, all the things tomorrow. And imagine they must do a maintenance patch tomorrow. Because the event ends tomorrow. They're going to have to do some sort of maintenance event tomorrow, I would have thought. To basically remove, you know, update the Rathless. Unless they decide to just extend um, the Monster Hunter event a few more days. Because it was meant to end today, like as of like, you know, of 5th. So probably 9 o'clock. In about 8 hours, it's meant to officially end. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, whether they'll do that. This is why I've been a bit confused. I was like, the patch feels like it's Thursday. We haven't had an iOS update, so it definitely feels like the patch is Thursday. The Fusion's Thursday. But the Monster Hunter event ends today. So how the hell does that work? Yeah, you, you basically won't be able to summon the Doom Tower souls until you have the Doom Tower champions in your portal. It will be impossible. Because it makes sense. Because what they're trying to do is not give you a soul you haven't, you can't get a champion for yet. They don't want to do that. So that, that makes sense. They might just do a quick maintenance patch, yeah. Just to basically take them out of the summoning pool, disable them, rename the Slayer set. They might just leave the Slayer set until Thursday, though. Uh, not always. What normally tells me when the patch is coming is when the iOS update comes live. When the iOS update comes out, that tells me when the patch is coming because the iOS and Android is always a day before. So, like, tomorrow we could see an iOS and Android update, which changes some core fun features. Sometimes they, like, add a new tab or something, but it doesn't activate anything. Then the next day they'll have the actual full maintenance and they'll, they'll enable all the features. It could be... I, I'm expecting it all to come in Thursday. But then again, they could start it on Wednesday and then put the Fusion Live Thursday. They typically do patch days Thursday, though. Typically. Because they avoid things like Hydro Clash problems and CVC and all that kind of stuff. 
So they typically do it those days. As soon as I didn't get the Archer, it's kind of a failure, I guess. I'll use Rathalos. I mean, Rathalos is still a great champion. But yeah, I mean, if you didn't get the Archer, I I, I feel for you. I really do. <laughs> I wish I could give Archer to everyone. I really would. It's going to be painful now when it goes out of window because anytime people see Archer, I'm going to get comments like, oh my god, using the Archer, how dare you? And it's going to be difficult for my content creation. My, um, my video tomorrow, the Ancora Fusion guy, uh, my Ancora guy tomorrow actually covers floor 114. But yeah, we'll have a look. And floor 97, someone asked for. Um, let's have a look. Someone asked for floor 97. Uh, was it 97 or 92? I thought it was 97. Is it 97 someone asked for? Floor 94. 94. What do we got here? Oh. Let me tell you how you beat Floor 94. Provoke and block passive skills. Ironically, Ronda. <laughs> um, but this is what I normally do here. I can cheat, though. So... I can cheat, I can take away his passive, and then just finish off with Constantine bit by bit, and then provokes. Mass crowd control, provoke, lock out, block active skills, block passive skills. Fears, controls, that's how you beat these waves. See, they, the, the mortal can never take a turn, that's how you beat these waves. Mass control, block revive. all about control if you can't just one shot it you have to control the waves now Owell is very good for just giving you lots of healing this is actually where I think um, one of Ancora's main power points are is is doom tower climbing I think that's one of the really good like PvE strengths you can see all I'm doing is I'm just controlling and then using Oella to heal me up. Now, obviously, Romantu, not everyone's going to have Romantu, I understand that. But Romantu could literally be a, a Block Revive champion. It could be a Ronda. You know, it could be anyone that can do that prior to you then doing an, a, a bit of an AoE. This is why I use the Vlad pairing, because look how strong it is in setting up like a new kit. It doesn't even matter if Constantine dies because I gotta revive, so. Let me just take him out. Unlucky. But look how much turn meter I get. 50%. It'll just power him through now. Fifty percent. And then all you want to do is just try and make sure you've got, like, your abilities back for Wave 2. Because the last thing you want to do is get to Wave 3 and you just have nothing left. So we do that. It's fine. Double Provoke. Provoke sets are really good. Just, it's control. Especially on something like Mighty Uko. You get rid of buffs. I use Mighty Uko just because he's, like, stable. I steal buffs all the time when they put buffs up, which is great. Okay, 3 here. Kill it off. Block Revive. Why do you prefer uh, well over? Because um, I feel like the resistance aspects means that I can basically run less stats, right? The aura is bigger uh, and the buff is bigger. So I just prefer the, the resistance for um, from Oella. You don't get that from uh, Elva. They both can work. I just prefer the Oella. So you can see the waves are exactly the same. Provoke, control, provoke, block active skills, lock active, decrease defense, weaken. Oella is particularly good here because you get a lot of turn meter control. Her A2 is a 30% turn meter fill and a buff extension, so it just helps keep things going smoothly. 
And look at all the continuous heals she's built up. Because whenever you lose 15% of your max HP, you get continuous heals. So it's a hell of a lot of healing. And then you just auto it here. So that's how I beat it. So you can see my first run through, I did it in 35 turns. Just because I got lucky probably, or the way the rotation worked. Any generic round with Bommel 90 without a built Nishak, uh, Lady Annabelle. Um, so if you check out, um, if you've got Al's Gore, YST just did a video on Al's Gore. It's quite good. Um, I kind of just, I, I would suggest you whack it a little bit with Newt's A3 and then you try to finish it off with any sort of incidental damage. I just run the Nishak one shot because it's so much faster for me. But yeah, Newt is pretty handy to just take a, a chunk of it down. If you just don't have those, just run like double healers, like double Aneri, double Vogoth and stuff like that and just out heal him. Yeah, double Furgans. Basically, soften him up with an enemy max HP like Newt and just finish him off with a few bombs and then you'll be fine. That's how I beat it. My Nishak's not very well built anymore. He's got like 6k attack. He used to have like 9,000. I just soften him up and then let him die. 114. Yeah, this one's nasty. You're going to have to like... This one is going to be difficult for everyone who doesn't have Romantu. If you have Romantu, this wave is so much easier. Um... Which obviously, you know, Romantu requires you to complete a wave. There is options. It depends what you have available to you, uh, Heisenberg. If you've got something like a really big power pick now. Now, I'm not trying to say this is what you've got. But for example... You know, this is pretty powerful. The Ultimate Death Knight is pretty good. But this is a bit of a cheat code. Because you can blow through the passive. Wow, that did not do much damage there. It's kind of nuts. I would have expected a bit more. Good bolster sets help a lot as well, right? Shield sets and bolster sets are very, very handy as well. Term meter control, also very good. Like, they, they may be immune to CC, but they're not immune to term meter control. And then, obviously, I can just... Oh. Wow, these things are tanky. Just goes to show, without his double hit, he doesn't hit hard enough. But you can see the value of having a shield. I, I pretty much saved a lot of my max HP. Wow, he is not as good as I thought he was going to be there. My Vlad is out damaging him. Just kind of goes to show you the HP based damage dealers, they do have limitations. I thought he would do a lot better than that. I mean, we can probably like... Wow. Oh, well, there's one Siffy down. And Siffy's back alive. But we did get Life Harvest. You got Life Harvest blessings that can help. Oh god, here we go. Whoa, that was a bit nasty. Can I just, like, do damage with, like, White King Narsus? Does he do damage? I fully expected him to blast through this. I'm pretty sure Vlad has done more work than him. At this point. But I, I did I did kind of AoE without decreased defense, which is probably a mistake. But he is really... Now, obviously, he's weak now because he's lost his max HP. So until he restores his max HP, it's going to be a problem. So he's going to do no damage anymore. But, you know, you can just back it up with having very good supports. Yeah, you can just back it up with good supports. You'll see the damage here. Vlad is probably... Oh, Narsus did a lot, to be fair. He did do quite a lot. But just having... Lots of control, provoke sets, uh, decrease attack, and just slow them down, you know. Our mans would be amazing for this if you had him. Obviously, he's not going to be out yet. But you can see, like, I can bring, like, even if I can't bring 
say um, that. I actually think Ancora is really good here for getting your abilities back. But you could bring someone like a Sila. Right? Sila is really good for this. That's how I beat it originally. Because you get um, this. It's really, really strong in Doom Tower. Slow them down. Control them. Stun them. You can build her in a stun set as well because she's all AoE. I beat Doom Tower originally like two and a half years ago whenever it came out with Sila. She was my MVP. She just slows the wave down. But to be fair, this is really good for Doom Tower climbing. It's really good. Especially against Siffies as well with this. Once you get this to one turn, uh, to zero turns, this is really good as well. And this just helps you get your abilities back like your Mighty Ukoe 2. Maybe you need that revive back. Maybe you need like that lock active skills, drop the turn meter. All those abilities really, really, it's surprising how much this adds a lot of value on an A1. It will mess up things like Clan Boss. It'll mess up things like Amius. But in these scenarios where you don't care, you just want your skills back. Very good. Wait, can you just skip normal Doom Tower? Nah, I always do normal Doom Tower. There's shards on normal Doom Tower. Look at all these rewards I can get. Books, energy, epic, void shards. Never skip anything. Never skip anything at all. What about I land in the rankings? Hmm, not bad. 5,000 turns. Yeah, she's actually really good for a lot of things. I was surprised when I was testing her how good she was for some things. Um, to be honest, even on her own. Because what I wanted to do uh, for tomorrow's video, you'll be able to see it tomorrow, is a guide on Ancora without the Narciss. Obviously, I referenced elements of what you can do in Narciss. It's very difficult to disconnect them. But I wanted to do a guide that kind of showed that she, you know, for those people who did the fusion, but that didn't get in the Narciss, she's still actually really good. She loses some power in Hydra, but her A1 actually has a lot of value. Yeah, Elder Skarg, really good. If you can nuke one of the Siffies, that's always the first part. Nuke the Siffy, blow the revive, nuke that revived Siffy, that'll help you a lot. But Sila is, in my opinion, one of the best. Fortis is also really good. He actually, as you said, correctly now deals 10% more damage per fear. You know, you just it's all about control. Slow them down, CC them, control them. That's how you get through those really awkward floors. And you only have to do it once, right? It's better than the City Centranas. You have your entire champion roster available to you. You can pick whoever you want. You know, that is easier. Um, you just got to get through it. You know, I'm pretty sure... I can just do probably really you serious. I wonder how much like this I can do it for. Oh, look, shield set. Thank you. Rip you. Some of these waves are a bit, bit nasty. Tormin also great. Yeah, if you picked up the Tormin from the event, also great. Well, this is a faster speed farm. <laughs> Let's just set up a team here. Uh, let's bin off you. Uh, let's bin off you. Just make sure she uses this ability. He likes to sometimes go a bit crazy, which is kind of annoying. Gotta watch some of this AI. Oh, this is going to be brilliant. Watch watch Rotus. Stare at Rotus right now. Oh, whoops. Rotus died. To be fair, though, I could absolutely lose this because uh, I didn't get a cycle Brock. Which kind of sucks. Oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, what's my finish solo? I don't know. I just use Vlad. Vlad is like... Vlad's the champion I go to to use everything these days. I need to do something, Vlad's the answer. Um. Mm. 
pretty much. Uh, let's just do Spider's Dan. I like to get these deities out of the way now. Right, I need to do one more fight on Dragon and then I can focus back on we can build. We can have a little look at Rabbit. I do need some guidance on how to people build Rabbit, Razzlevarg for Hydra, honestly. I'm a little bit unfamiliar with it. Like what kind of stat breakpoints we need to hit. Unfamiliar. Yes, I'll show my plan build. Oh, I think I forgot to sort sell the artifact there. Provoke sets are really good. Minute instinct, good speed, and high damage. I'm not. I'm still not a fan of instinct. I'll be honest. I still think instinct's a bit. It's a bit meh. Feel like you lose too much. No, I've had Razzlevarg since the fusion. Razzlevarg originally was in my clan boss team a long, long time ago. We made like a, a crazy 4-1 rabbit team combo. For rabbit, lethal savage, 20 speed. We'll see what the optimizer pumps up because the optimizer actually has speed multiplies into it right so if i set a minimum speed what the optimizer will do is it will take the minimum speed it will add 100 speed and then it will actually include that in the damage multiplier so at times i've had like some people come back to me and say why is it recommending at this in this weird setup this one gives me more crit damage i'm like because it's factoring in the bonus speed you would get and that bonus speed would equal more damage than what your bonus crit damage would give you right because speed is a big part of his multiplier it's an exponential growing part of his multiplier So, I don't have... Lydia's going to be in my hard team. So, we're basically going to run Razzlevarg, Inquisitor, Shamael, Ugo, Mithrala, Islin, Val. The biggest risk that my two of my teams have is a lack of revivers. Uh, but I didn't really think about maybe maybe we use Ancora. But, like, who does it take? It probably has to take the Mithrala spot. And, again, you're losing a hell of a lot. You, you, without, the, without the Narsus, you don't get the strengthen. So she's like the closest I can uh, come up to like that position, you know? It should work though. I'm so glad I don't have to run this team anymore. Oh, man. I messed that up. Let's start that one again. So glad I don't have to run these teams anymore on Dragony. It's so stressful. Sell, sell. Do we only free wins? Yes. Love a free win. Wait, what's the energy one? Uh, nothing. Great. Did I just see a team there with like 500 mythicals? <laughs> I think I did. Uh, because it's day one reset, Curry. It's day one reset. And I'm down in gold one at the moment because I demoted on purpose so that I could uh, get some free wins towards the end of last week. I often do that sometimes because I, I honestly, there's only so much that one person can take of tag team arena before they want to peel their eyeballs out. Uh, what speed is your Dutch at for PvP? It's like 250 or 260. I can't remember exactly. So I'm only getting one at this high level, so... But sometimes if you refresh, you'll get a couple. It's quite nice. How many times can you cross your eyes? A lot. Huh. 
<laughs> that's your hit reaction to a Mortu and still did 65,000 because of ignore defense. Yeah, if you hit his passive. I, I jump up and down green. So if I if I get into a bad cycle, my defense has been pretty terrible for a couple of weeks. So because of that, I'm in a bad cycle at the moment. Um, what I normally do after a clan versus clan, if it's a personal one, I'll leave my defense off just so I can get like 20 wins a day for free without actually having to fight. It's not great because I then demote down, but then the following week I'll just leave my defense in and just do five and try and demote and promote back up. So I, I'm constantly going up and down a lot. I could easily get into goal four if I wanted to. I just, I can't be bothered. Once my, once my champions are built properly, they will stay and they'll climb. But, you know, you can see the mess that my account's in. Half the champions got some gear, some of them don't. I don't really have all my clan boss teams built properly. I got a whisper that's built more like a god than anything else. I could probably put my Whisper in Arena. Actually, I might try a Whisper Arena fight, see how she does. Quite funny. Turvold's quite good in PvP if you need to kill someone. But you have to kill to reset. If you if you can't reset, then he loses a lot of power. Right, you need the Juggernaut back. I should be in goal 1-3 with you after they've been smashing most of the silver teams. Nice! Yeah, Narcissus is a really power pick. Yeah, a lot of people don't bother because it's too much effort. Which I kind of get. Like, I do often find that I just don't do a tag team tournament. Because it falls on my, my, my climb week or something. I just can't be bothered, you know. There's so much we have to do in the in, in raid. The last thing I want to be doing is spending all my time doing, like, pointless tag teams. It'll be different now because I've got a lot more options. So, like, I can breach defenses much more rapidly. So I don't have to wait around. Half the time, I used to be able to wait around for like someone to hit my Cupidus or something of that nature, which is really boring. I know, Curry, it's terrible, but a lot of it's been because like this is the pre predicament I had for a lot of yesterday and the day before. I wanted to start building teams, but I was like, well, where do I start? Do I start building my clan boss or this or that or this and I've been jumping up and down a lot uh, the nice thing is my hard hydro team does work in its current form which is a nice thing to have but obviously that's with like giga built whispers and some people might argue that's a mistake and I should be potentially re-gearing those whispers out which I could do I could strip the second whisper I just need to make sure I can still kill the shogun boss All right, Vern, I'll have a look uh, after stream. Yeah, unless I can have a look now. I'm just trying to finish this off. I'm almost done with dragging in. I can put it to one side. Uh, would a Krokmar be a decent provoker set choice for those that know a decent amount of changes? I don't think he's necessarily a good provoker. Uh, I can see Krokmar being useful, but not as a provoker because his A1 is not consistent. He's a good damage dealer, though. He's a pretty solid damage dealer, that guy. Yeah, Cursed is probably better for him. Because you can build a damage curse and stuff, and you can start targeting heads in different ways. So, yeah, that would be better. Like, the value of curse set now is just so high. Hex, like, I was shocked someone was testing Hex in hide with was doing Hydro Key without Hex. I was like, put just put Hex in that team, and it does 100 million more. Like, Hex is such a powerful, um, it's so powerful. It really, truly is. Like, Hex is the answer to a lot of damage. It's such a powerful pick in Hydra. Uh, debate and put in Curse in four piece. Yeah, anyone who permanently AoEs is going to get a lot of turn meter. And he, if he can get back to his AoE max HP, that would be very good. Um... We do need another rat. The problem is with these variable forge pass sets is you always need another another one. 
Right, you always need another one. Look at this guy here. Look at them. So we got. Oh, we found a whale, my friends. We found a whale. What's his name? Viking Warrior has got a six star Mikage. He's got two Mikages, a five star Crixia, a four, three star Lazarius. A st he's got two Crixias. Well then, uh, blessing for Geo. Mm. Probably cruelty, Grizzle. You want me to fight him? All right, let me just see if my teams are actually in some sort of shape here. Um. Cleanse the whale. Fine now, we'll, we'll we'll check teams now. All right. Probably just beat you outright. Should do it. Uh, I don't think a five star salt skull crone is not. No, it's not really. Plonk. Oh, I forgot to. Uh... I don't actually know what this Galacticus guy does. Can I polymorph him? No. My Wukong has no gear. I forgot about this. What does he do? Oh, well, that's a bit annoying. Um. I have no idea what's happening. I'm just getting debuffed and attacked from everywhere. Ah. Uh, kill. You. Kill. You. Okay. I've no idea what's going on. This just laser beams attacking me from every angle. I actually could have won that. I just forgot my Wukon has no gear anymore. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, he revives, does he? Ah. Well, I could have won that. I just don't have a geared Wukong. That was stupid of me. Um. I'll be honest, though, for all his might and power, wasn't much of a defense, was it? <laughs> um... I mean, had I not had, like, a useless Wukong there, I would have won that second fight quite comfortably. That's the thing. A lot of these teams now, I can just blast through. Like, if I just... Um, like this one, I just can put my speed team on. That one um, is fine. I just got to watch out for the Harima. Well, actually, I'll probably put the speed team there. Um, I don't actually know do that. And then I actually like, have a proper champion here. Like a Vlad or something. Uh, that's a bit awkward. Actually, if I just put some support with it, like Elva. Yeah, monkey's still not got any gear. All right, this is easy. I just give him a turn and just go goodbye. Boost. Force the revive out so I get strengthen. Slow him down. Cool down back. Thank you very much for killing yourself. <laughs> Narciss is disgusting. Yeah, probably more money than sense that one. And then this one, I outspeed him, so it's a one-shot. This one's the hardest one. Um, provoke Uko is beautiful. Very hard to do this here because 
The Harima passive is a bit of a nightmare. Jeez, this see, so this is Xena. This is Xena territory. This is where I would absolutely bring Xena. This is what I want to build Xena for. This would just annihilate. Like, this would be the answer. Because this is just going to take absolutely freaking ages to kill anything. i got to outrun the bolster. There's so many buffs. Like. Right. Let's get rid of some buffs. There's so many buffs that his buff strip still didn't get rid of everything. All right. Might as well start farming HP. It's just ridiculous. Oh, I got petrified. Okay, we try again. Nope. Don't know why. I should just A1 to get A2. I have to farm HP, basically. Cleanse that away. It's, it's farm HP from her until I eventually get enough HP that I can block revive. And hope I haven't been harimed in the meantime, because this is going to take a freaking ages. Yeah, I could farm it with Seer as well, you are right. Like, maybe I'll try this one. No, that one's equally as tanky. Can we take some buffs away? No, not really. Oh god. We're going to get petrified chains. Oh no, we're going to get petrified chained. We didn't get petrified chained. Um, Necrite is permanently petrified, apparently. Let's cleanse it all off. <laughs> I don't know if we're actually going to win this. We might do. It is ridiculous amounts of buff central. Keep farming HP. At some point, he must be at block revive territory now. He's got so much HP. Oh, that hurt. But I don't actually know if I can ever... Necrot's a nightmare with Mithrala. Right, can I actually kill anyone? Oh, close. I mean, we petrified everyone, but hey. We killed someone. It's a miracle. Oh, okay. Oh, we got rid of some buffs. Oh, it's cleansed. Uh, okay. Uh... <laughs> He's got to be a block revived territory at this point. Surely. He's got to be. Good lord, this is ridiculous. Come on. Uh, block revive. No, nope, not enough damage. Oh, that's not fair. Oh, she died. Oh, oh, that's nasty. This is where it's now getting scary because my revivers are... Right, you... Oh, okay. Now we have to... Extra turn. Why don't I ever get an extra turn? It's so unfair. It's so unfair. Right, this is the moment. There we go. Oh, nearly. This should be good. We, we can rotus it. There we go. Ah, oh, it's over. Well, my friend, that, that, that took a while. That took a while. Uh, Elva did 700,000 healing. Siffy did 520,000. That, that was just like... You know, that's like... That's where I would bring Xena. Yep, that, that's a Xena moment. Oh, okay, there's Hellhole. Two Ultima Death Knights. I mean, that's a one-shot. That's a disaster class. This could work. Why are we doing Tag Team Arena at this time of night? Yeah, I did. I have no idea why we're doing Tag Team Marina at this time of night, but, you know, on the bright side, goodbye. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate we didn't, uh... Hmm. 
Wait, re no, we didn't get a reset that time. Well, we can get an extra turn. Annoyingly, I didn't have... Ow! Annoyingly, I didn't have my A2. Which can happen. That's real bad luck. Wait. Uh, give me an extra turn, then. Kill the... There we go. Go again. How much do I have to do? Oh, I, should, I should do one live arena just so I get the final win. That's a tanky necker at this. Mind you, I did lose like 25% of my max HP, so that's probably a bit of a problem. There we go. Well, this is all about, do we get any stone skin removal? Yeah, we do. Oh, man. Soul Reap sucks, doesn't it? Soul Reap sucks. This is why we don't use Soul Reap anymore. Because it doesn't do anything. How has he still got Ward of the Fallen? I've hit him four times. Heal. Steal some Termia. Boost. Damn it. I still don't have my A3. I thought I did. Oh, this ultimate death like man is. Right, I can get rid of Ward of the Fallen now. Ow. That was really not what I wanted. Well, we're going to have to do it without. What does a man have to do to kill some... Ugh. Oh, my lord above. Kill. No. Soul Reap. Soul Reap worked. Soul Reap worked. Now we can stop you from reviving. I can boost. Ah, oh, it's over. All right. Um, steal. Oh, it's ultimate death line. And every team. I'm absolutely going to get blasted here. Well, let that be a lesson to you. Don't run bolster into uh, Narsus. Anyway. Uh, that's kind of cool. One more. Might as well do my daily now. Well, seeing as though we've done most of this, I might as well do the daily. Every team is Ultimate Death Knight, man. The thing about Ultimate Death Knight, though, can't stop that. Slow down. That was a protection Siffy as well. That would have hurt. That was a, that was a protection Siffy with Taras. That would have absolutely wrecked. <laughs> Not always. I'm mostly not paying attention. That's a Baron. Let's see what a Baron can do, shall we? Thanks for the stone skin. <laughs> I just stole his Baron stone skin. I bet he's pissed. Uh, let's make sure she can't die. Okay, that's what I was waiting for. If 
side from that. Oh, Shujan is huge. Yeah, that's why I was so excited when I got her, because she just opens the door. No more revives. I'm still at risk of dying, but it's very, very slim. He's dead. Oh, he hasn't got his AI set up properly. Yeah, I've used the AI. There we go. 33. Boom. To be fair, I'm underpowered here. I should be up in gold 2 or 3 now. You know, I'm vastly underpowered there. Uh, I need to do one live arena so I get my win. And then we'll have a quick little look at Razzle Bargain and call it there. Uh, still hold your souls. I'm probably going to be pulling, but you might want to wait until the missions go live just in case there's something going on. I might wait until like Thursday when the patch goes live and summon then to see what I get. Because there's no rush to do it immediately. It's staying around, so. Yeah, Vizic's a great provoker. Yeah, Shujen um, and the new fusion is just like stupid. All right, so he's going... Speed block damage. So I'll reply with my setup. And then I'm going to go with that. With that. I'm going to ban the Elva. forces that out. Now the question is, am I fast in the Arbiter? I'm probably not. Just because I mess up and I don't have my Arbiter fully speed out. So, probably going to be boosted. Oh, I'm faster. Excellent. Um, well. It's nice knowing you. Oh, the Helicath lived. Good play. It's a pleasure. And claim. What are we going to get? I'm going to keep all this gear, by the way. Even if it's terrible. Yeah, I, I got a feeling I'm going to have to build sets for this. Nice. It's another primal shard. Let's add it to the collection. Eight primal shards, 51 ancient, 70 voice. I've never been this shard rich in, like, months. I still got to do... Let's just do this. We have 101... We have 100 out of 101. Let's 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 grab our weekly, our excitement. This is like this reward is is so good. It's um it's everything we wanted in life. Um you know. Anything everything that someone could have hoped for. Okay. Can we kill the pithy? Thank you. You 60 primals. How the hell have you not pulled them? I use primals half the time for summon rushes because they create points. Okay. Apparently Forge is getting ruined. Um. Can we not? Can, can we Can we not? Oh, Lord above. Apparently that's not good enough. All right, fine. Oh, I forgot my Michinaki got... He's lost gear. I forgot this. That's probably why it wasn't good enough. Uh, let's just bring Misty Dave in. Really? Really? Come on! Just that... What does a man have to do? Oh, Lord above. I'm so losing it with this. Can I just have a one-shot? Right, one-shot. Who can, who can one-shot? You can one-shot. <sighs> I'm 
so done with this. So done with this wave. It's like the last floor of normal, for God's sake. Yeah, if I pull my primals, it's normally because I just need summon rush points because they give you good lot, like a nice amount of chase points and stuff. Otherwise, I don't. Bore, I just hold them. I mean, if it's a times two primal on, I'll obviously do it. But uh, I must be near. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I don't get a mythical soon. To be honest, the amount of power that the mythicals are coming out with, like you think the the power difference between a Laz versus, like, say. The first, like, C egg friends and stuff, it might pay you to hold on to them until we get, like, a. Um. Uh, music should be fixed now. Uh, until we get a. Like, all of the mythicals in, right? So I think there's one more coming in this update, and I think after that, must be one more. Done. Coming in. I'm looking forward to this chest. What are we going to get? Oh, it's actually quite good. <laughs> this is actually quite good. The rest of it's terrible. This is quite good. That 200 coins is basically 10 mortal soul stones. So that's, that's, that's better than what you could hope for. 2,000 turns. That's not bad. Wait. Why is that not updated? I'm 101. I've completed 101. Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Razzlevark. Let's have a look what accessories we've got for Razzlevark. Do, um... Yeah, the music's annoying. It should be fixed now. I, I, I need to look into it, Sniper. Um, are people running Leech? People running leech here. Are you actually running accuracy on this dude? Keep in mind, I'll have. No healing. I probably. I need to, right? Because I have Ugo, which has a leech, but not an AoE. Mithrala. Oh, he has increased accuracy. He doesn't really need it then, does he? So, what I was saying is, I can keep this, right? I can keep this one. Man, I need to go farm some oil. And that's technically higher. Clearly right for accuracy. Clearly that one. We kind of lose 44 attack, but that's because we haven't done like that, you know? Now it's only six because obviously this ascended. And if I dust it, that's that's the one that's the one we're gonna go with. It's really good. Oh look at that. He's ready to go. He's got everything he possibly could want. Do I have any wrathful of success? No. I wasn't fortunate enough. I was able to get a 9 out of 9 sacred order. That is the extent of it. And I have a protection set. It's kind of trash. So I think that is going to be as good as it's going to get. What is the roll on that? It's 23 divided by 4. It's like a fight. It's kind of low roll. So, I mean, if we can get a better, better roll. You know. No, I don't have, I have nothing. 
Yeah, I have nothing on him. Uh, I don't, unless there's something in my inbox. Do a quick little look, see if I've got uh, any sort of accessories hovering in the inbox. So I got Barbarian Merciless, Banner Lords, Undead Hordes Merciless, Demons Born Merciless, Undead Merciless. That's a Rathlos gear. Doesn't look like I got any skinwalker stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's time to attack. Wrath of set's quite nice because you get 5% crit rate. Um, which is quite nice. I don't think I have anything now. No. What we see, what we get. I think that's pretty good, though. Like, there is, you know, there's not better ring. I mean, that's that, like, double rolls, but it's it's protection, so it's not gonna it's not gonna roll well. I think that what what he's got is is gonna be the one we go with. It is a solid twenty three percent. So, uh, masteries wise, I've got him in Giant Slayer, but. Should he go Helm Smasher? Like, we probably want to change out of out of this. Maybe we don't. Like, what, what team are we going to build? Let me build a team first. The concept of the team. Uh, so it'll be a brutal team. Uh, so we can call this, like, hard. Obviously, Gurptuck wouldn't... I mean, we've got Gurptuck in the lead there. Maybe I should have put Gurptuck in the lead. Because Gurptuck... Does he resist all battles? Yeah, I know that. I just want... I just want to see what his aura is. Uh... Why is it so hard to find a champion? Yeah, maybe I should have put resistance so that I stop my buffs getting stolen. Maybe that's a better idea, actually, with that team there. I don't particularly need the bonus speed, so if I get the 50 resistance, I can probably just resist the enemy from actually stealing my buffs. Your Hydro team is Sissia, Wukong, Gwendolyn, Archer, Doom Priest, Rathalos. Doing 150 million on the one. Now I pulled Thunder. Nice. Should she go into that team? Um, no, I think you're overloaded with damage between Rathalos and Gwendolyn uh, and Sissia. And, like, if anything, like, Wukong might come out. But I don't think she goes into that team, no. No, I meant for this team up here, uh, Resistance. I don't really care for Resistance for this other team. It's just I was thinking about stopping the enemy from stealing my buffs so that Chris wouldn't die. Maybe I should put him in the lead so I get the resistance on all of them. And then the probably the, the, the fact that they've got the blessings along with some base stats, we can probably make sure that we never get stolen and just make everyone a mischief tank because of the aura. It's very difficult. Like the, You don't need too much. Um, so this team is going to be Rabbit. I really wish we could search. It's so stupid I cannot search this. <sighs> We're gonna find the rabbit. Anyone see rabbit? Inquisitor Shamiel, we'll pick one of them. Doesn't really matter which one, we've got a few. Val. Can anyone see a Val? Ugo. I do have a four star one or a three star one. That one. Mithrala. 
which could be an Ancora, but we do lose increased defense and increased attack, which is a lot to lose. And then our Provoker and our Mischief Tank is Islin. Sorry, I got to do this for um for the sake of like consistency. Now, just want to check my sham my shamels. One of them is like built because shamel will go for damage here. Just make shamel damage deal as well. Why not? Which one's damage? Your damage. You're not. You are as well. We'll do the, the ascended one. Where is he? There's two. There's three. Thought he was a two star. Was he a three star? There he is. Yeah, I got three. I don't know why. Well, they kind of do the same thing, and one's built, one's not. Like, you got to remember Islin. This is a better provoker than Vizix. This is a decrease in duration of buffs, which Vizix can't do. And we also get decreased speed. And I get um, a pretty good cool passive, so I think they're kind of the same, and I think he's just as good. Uh, is Islin is basically Vizix on steroids, in my opinion. He's great for um, he well he hits really hard. So I'm gonna be building him in um, Merciless plus Cruel, right? Because I'm pretty sure my orcs. If we have a look at Val over here. Right, I will be building him in. He's in a bad build at the moment. He's going to be rebuilt. I'm going to be building him in this. <laughs> Something like that. I'm really excited. Um, basically an attack ring. Probably that. Could change it though. Uh, I don't think I've got another one. I need uh, crit damage, amulet... Which is that one. Right, I'll probably build that one. I do lose a bit of crit damage, but it's worth it. I don't think I have a banner, though. Banners are the one I don't have. So I'd have to build him with a ring. I do have that, which is, you know... I could just reforge this. See if it rolls attack with speed. I also have that. Uh, so basically what I want to do is build Merciless six pieces, Cruel one piece, right? So that will give me 40%. Then you get 30% here, so I'm at 70%. I have 6% ignore defense, which means when I hit Helm Smasher, I do true damage with this ability. That's why I want to build him. Because when this hits true damage, this is going to destroy them with a passive that boosts his attack by 100%. So. Yeah, that's what you're seeing, Burn. That's where I'm going for. Yeah, we need sort in. It's really annoying. Yeah, I'm not saying uh, physics is bad. Uh, it's just I haven't got one built. And she doesn't do enough to make it worth me not having her. He's just as good. Affinity can be his problem, but on an A1 at least, we got chances to, to do it. Um, the annoying thing is, like, this ring is so goddamn good. But if I ever get a HP-based orc, like, why would I ever want to skip? Like, that's so good for damage. You know, I lose a lot of attack. That's the only downside. 
So I'd have to either go this ring. At least that's got attack. Crazy Fort Infinity Breaker. Not crazy. You know, I don't think I got any orcs. Let me just check. I don't have any orc um, merciless lying around in my inbox. I really need to sort out my inbox. It's got out of control. I mean, it, it'll all expire in like 40 odd days. It's fine. It's plenty of time. I need to get on top of it though because it's it's got out, it's got out of control again. Just getting anything that's not five star terrible is really hard out of Cintranos. I feel like you just end up getting so much like terrible gear. It's all five star rubbish, but it's like it's still worth keeping because if you can make the nine piece work, you know. Getting to true damage is more damage than losing a bit on an, an attack ring. It's undead. Shadowkin. Demon spawn, undead. Banner lords. Barbarians. He's an orc, not a barbarian. But quite a primal speed substat shield. Oh, that's insane. Just got crazy. Any tips of building? Do you have her? Um, no, I don't have her, but you'll need to probably put quite a lot of crit damage if you're going to build her in Hydra because her multipliers are kind of bad. And because it's AoE, you get penalized a lot. So you will have to put more crit damage than you would expect compared to a Newt. But just go and build her with um, a, as much crit damage as you can, really. She's so tanky with a passive, she won't die. Sometimes, Curry, it was all right for a while. Yeah, you can link, yeah. I don't think it'll send on YouTube. You can DM me it. I mean, that's at least an attack and attack. That'll give me, like, minus 129, right? Because he's he's got... I don't actually think my attack rings are very good on this, on, on, on this faction. Like, if we have a look. Attack. Attack percentage. Um, I don't actually think they're very good. Like, I have so few of them. Oh, wait. I found another one. Well, that one might be better. Okay, this one might be better. I lose seven attack. But I gain... The six star at least. You know, and these are probably not going to roll very well. Like, that's pretty terrible. That should be sold. Let's just roll all these, see what we get. Is Savage and Hell Smash are best for her? Uh, yeah, probably. Although, make sure that you're not hitting the cap. Billy, if you're hitting the cap without needing Helm Smasher, then go Warmaster. Which a lot of people will be able to do. Right, so just make sure you're you're actually hitting the cap. I would prefer to go like crit flawless or helm warmaster to get the consistency. I wouldn't want to depend on Helm Smasher to get the um the the cap hit, you know? That one's actually okay, though. So, we absolutely... So, obviously, she's holding the best one because of that. But I think... Because we get the 10% attack as well, that's a good trade-off. Take that. Right, so in terms of banners, pretty much there is a Merciless HP. That could be re-rolled. It probably should be. 
Or we can re-roll that one. That one's more likely to re-roll. Let's just try that one. Oh, I've already reforged that one. That's why that one's still there. That one rolled poorly. Or we could take an amulet. Which is at least crit damage. I feel like we sacrifice the crit damage on the amulet. Because the thing is, there's no guarantee that this is going to be fast. And we do want speed. Like, this could be anything. And at least it's a pretty decent pairing with my HP ring. So if I ever get a good HP based nuke if the orcs come out, then I've got a pretty good HP combo. Whereas at least if I take this one for now, it'll be fine. Yeah, you kind of want a consistency, Billy. So I would definitely try and hit the cap without Helm Smasher and just take War Master for the bonus damage. That's what I would prefer to do. All right, he's got the fastest speed banner here. Look how bad my attack banners are. Look how bad they are. So bad. So bad. So yeah, with this in place now, we can basically find a six one, right? Um, he's got Phantom Touch at the moment. We might want to change that to... How many buffs are going to be in this team? One, two... Three, four, five, six. Quite a lot. Heaven cast. Masteries wise, we're going to change it up. We're going to go for this. This. Let me just do it on a raid bro just to make sure I don't mess it up. could go support tree though because I don't really feel like I need the defense tree on him and get Laura Steel and with Master Hexer just to extend the weaken that's what I think I'll do because so the thing about the Merciless set is you do get a ton of stats right so getting Laura Steel on Merciless set is going to give us like a combined bonus of like, what do we get? We get 10 plus 15% attack. So we're getting 25% attack, which is giving us on his base attack, 1476 times 0 0.25. So we're getting 369, but we're actually getting 15% more of that. So we're actually going to get an extra like Laura Steel will give us 55 attack from Merciless. We'll get a little bit more speed. We will get, you know, 15% more of 30% crit damage. So it, it kind of adds up. So I think Laura Steel is better. So I think we'll go this. Let's make sure we get what we need down here. Boss killing masteries. Absolutely, we want Methodical. We want Helm Smasher. I want this. I want this. This. I want that. I want that. And I'll probably get Master Hexer to increase decrease attack and weaken. Stoke the Fury then, just as a standard one. Uh, why will CC mad about the new OP champion? At least he's a fusion we can guarantee get him compared to... Um, the reason why I'm particularly against it, no-brainer, is I feel like it will be a negative impact towards the arena where people will disengage with the content. So arena will get stale because nobody's going to want to play it. Because it's going to be the same team with Armands and he's just going to be so dominant that it's going to be frustrating. And I also think it makes making future content difficult because everything that's a wave just gets destroyed by him. So my complaints are purely on a balance issue. I have I actually said in my video, for a player, this fusion is amazing. It's free, it's really good, it'll help player progress. Whether or not that's a good thing overall is a whole other thing. Um, 
So we can just do a quick refresh here. Go to my inbox. Just lock her ways one. Who's in my lock window as one now? I don't really know. Uh, damage mode A3. Configure include. Exclude these two. Battle. Let's pick a rotation, doesn't really matter. Brutal. Decrease defense. Weaken. We'll have like three star cruelty. Um, stats. I feel like 250 is a good break point. How much battle do I need? Oh, we will have um, increased accuracy. So, 260 accuracy. Don't want that, 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 that. Damage, crit rate, attack, 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 set, merciless. We need four pieces and we need cruel one piece. Give it a glyph of like four, five, I don't know, 20, give it like seven. I've no idea if it's going to find anything. We're about to find out. It might not find anything. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it's filthy. Well, that's great. We'll take that. Minimal. Look, if Dutchie's still here, he'd be very proud of me. It might be too late for Dutchie. Be very proud of me because uh, I'm not using any gear from any of my champions. Uh, I'm out of space though, so we're going to have to clear up some space first. I've got to hoard this useless um, zeal pieces now. Let's just find someone to quickly meal. We haven't got time for all this nonsense. Um, you, why don't you look after a zeal piece? Oh, I have um, a big video coming on zeal this week. I need to do it. It's it's coming. It's shocking. Shocking discoveries. Shocking, shocking discoveries on Zeal. Yeah, my, my, my problem with general thing has been, for Arena specifically, has never been the gear. My problem has been I just didn't have enough ban targets, as I like to call it. I didn't have enough people to basically go, hey, ban this champion but you, you have to make a decision about it, right? You can't just go in and like, I, I used to be like, you ban my Necrit, I lose the game. That's a bit like what I've been facing. But now that I've got more options, it's much harder for people to ban me out, which means that I can play the game in a much better scenario. Try on. Try on. This is why I've been keeping the five-star gear, by the way. Every so often, five-star gear produces some pretty good quality um, gear. Try on. And I need boots. From Cruel. Believe it or not, it's recommending this. I will. I'll take it. 
This is going to need heavy dusting, probably. Uh, three percent in the game or top three. Uh, I absolutely think Bolster is really good. Defiant, I think, is really good. And I would suggest that Rathalos is really good because there's so much options you can do with it. So... Uh, you're able to give a champion for nine. Well, Shamel will be a good target. Uh, sure. For his A1, yes. But for other pieces, no. I would not necessarily commit it. I think Sacred Order there was better champions that could that could have a 9 out of 9 Merciless. You know, you've got people like Constantine um, in that faction. Like, if you look at all the possible um, options you have... Man, I've rinsed my silver down. Terry, that's where I find that. Lots and lots of energy in Shogun. Lots and lots of energy. So all I'm doing right now is I'm preparing um, for a, an artifact enhancement. So the first fusion I have for an artifact enhancement will be really cheap for me because everything's at level 15. I'll have like 20 artifacts which just go boom, 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 boom. So what do I think about As uh, Aesolin? I don't think he's that good. In all honesty, I think there are better options. Uh, where does this put me? So this has put me... This is this is a really good example, by the way, everyone. This is his build based on his current situation. No dust, not fully maxed out, you know. And you're sitting there thinking, okay, not bad. 5.7k attack, 213 speed. Not, an, not enough crit rate, because obviously we would need to ascend it. Only 160 accuracy. We haven't glyphed anything, right? Gone are the days now where it's like, I've got good pieces and I'm going to equip them. Just keep these stats here. 5.7k, if I put Hydra on here to be accurate, 5.7k attack, 221 speed, 233% crit damage. That is what it is pumping here. This is what maxing this build out will do. It will give me an extra 29 speed. It will give me an extra 2... A 1.3k defense, uh, 3k attack. And I'll have the extra 100% and I'll get like 15 uh, of this accuracy. So that is the value of Ascension. That is the value of Ascension. It's kind of nuts. So you can see I need to take this up to attack, 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 speed, attack, crit rate, attack, attack, crit damage. Five-star gear does suffer a little bit on Ascension, but we we got to work with what we've got, right? Um, we absolutely, for example, could roll crit rate here. If we roll crit rate here, we get 7%. And say, like, we roll the crit rate up here, then we don't need the crit rate Ascension. We can get 20% more crit damage. So we'll have to see how it rolls when we get the artifact enhancement. But it's good enough for us to, to test the concept. Um, you start a YouTube stream in the next two to three weeks? Practice. Don't worry about the first few streams. Get used to it. You'll get confident. My first videos on this channel were terrible. Um, but just practice makes perfect. Keep going. Sustain consistency. Don't worry about, you know, engage with the chat if you can. But just um, don't overthink it. Don't go too much into your brain about it. So we get 35% ignore defense. 5% ignore defense. Plus 8% ignore defense. So right now, we have 48% ignore defense when we go into battle. Then we'll get this ability hitting for another 30% ignore defense. So 48 becomes 78. And then when Helm Smash approx, we deal true damage. So we can actually test this to see how well it works. We haven't built the rabbit, but at least we built the Val. Um, which is... I mean, we can just... I just want to kind of see how it works. Take this in a second. I want to bring out you. I don't even know if you've got gear anymore. Mm, sort of. You'll work. Um, do you have gear? Mm, sort of. You'll do. You definitely don't have gear. But you'll... We'll drop you. Let's just give you... 
and just see if we can kill something. <laughs> you have to go find it. I don't even know. I've done so many videos. Um, oh, you've destroyed it. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem in my account. I've destroyed so much. Um, provoke. That's always great. Go again. I took, I took the banner off Islin, didn't I? I took the banner off Islin to give it to someone else. Yep, just needs an Axie banner. Wow, do I, am I really that shy of Axie banners? Well, mind you, he's got enough accuracy. I don't know why he resisted that. I'm sure I took a banner. I took probably a counterattack off him to give it to someone. Oh, I bet it was that. I bet I took that off him. Not that that's very good. That's probably even better. I can just take that if I want. Um. Honestly, I'd like the defense. Hmm. Let's take this one. Oh, sorry. I thought I changed. No, no, no. I thought I changed. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Do we know the affinities? No idea right now. No idea right now. Okay. Uh, provoke. And how much do I have to do to get him to provoke? Three in a row. See you later, Burnt. Probably missed you. Uh, provoke. Oh, my lord above. Normally, he's great at provoking. He's just having a funny five minutes. I'm on it normal, aren't I? Yeah, normal. I just wanna I just wanna test the, the, the kill power. Good lord. That is some crazy bad RNG. Like it's pretty much high max out. There we go. <sighs> um right, so now we can give no one a turn right now. Just wanna do that. I just throw out that. Give him a turn. Whack it. 209,000. Not bad. The thing is we need to scale, right? So right now we need to um, we need to do eight more of those A3s before we can fully test his damage potential. Look at that. Speed, increase speeds. Kill that off. Grant him a turn. It is active abilities, right? Each time this champion's attack, they use an active, right? So this would be number two. So that's three. We need to get seven more. Just got to provoke out. 
is Lin. Honestly, sometimes you are an absolute travesty of a champion. There we go. So we can try like a, a whack here now. Uh, so four. <sighs> okay. Well, that happened. Um... That was a helm smasher proc, I think. We're only at four so far. So we're only like 20% more attack. Keep in mind, he's got an extra 1.3k attack, which means when that actually comes into the battle, it's 2,600 more attack here. And that will then multiply again by the increased attack. So he's got a long way to go in his build. We'll find out. Uh, we just do that to get speed debuff. I really feel like Shu Zhen should be in one of my teams. Like, that oh, should, should have been provoked. It's not even six star crushing end. Like, well, I don't need the six star crushing end. I'll do true damage without it. So that's four. I'm going to provoke. Nice. Uh, we're still on four. Are we on four? I don't know. We're, we're definitely not on. Or was that five? Lost track now. That could be five. Um, you provoke kill. Six. Yeah, man, Hex is so powerful. Especially when it's single target. See, when it's single target, Hex goes really nuts. Still at six, I'm pretty sure. Seven. That was a one million A1, A2 there. Oh, this one's gonna hurt. This one's gonna hurt. When we get ticked, if we're gonna take it, we're not gonna take it. Fine. We haven't got weaken out here. It's kind of sucky, but. Eight. Can't be doing the run out. Need to wait for turns. Turn nine. One more ability, and I think he's um, there. So then we just gotta kill the waves now. Oh man. 
You serious? You serious about Poison Cloud right now? You freaking serious? It's gonna take ages now. Ugh. Oh, why did I slow him down? I shouldn't have done that. Well, it's going to take a while. We'll just do this. Now we now we've maxed out. So we've maxed out our attack passive now. So we've maxed out attack passive. So now we just got to wait. Got to wait for the stone skin. Have for the poison cloud. I don't want to auto it because I don't want him to use any of his abilities now. I want him to get his abilities back. So we'll just keep him alive. Until we actually get turns. Come on. I mean, he's chunking it through Poison Cloud. Oh, God. It's, of course, it's Poison... It's the Poison Cloud head, so now we're going to get 101 Poisons. Eventually, we'll take a turn. We're about to find out Elixir. When we actually get rid of this Poison Cloud, we're about to find out how good he is because we've got a fully stacked out. Merciless, six, cruel. You name it, we've got it. we just got to wait. No, my house, my, my, my Shamail's not built properly yet. We haven't built him out. Oh, come on. <sighs> okay. Head down. Give us the best opportunity. Hacks. Uh, the worst one is waiting out Blimmin' Inquisitor Shamael shooting 101 crossbows at about, like, super slow speed. Okay, we didn't get the Inquisitor attack, which is great. Let's cleanse all that off. Give him the buffs. Right, he's got everything now. So... A2, 650k. Yeah, whatever, we don't really care about you. It's the A3 I want to see. But the problem is, will we hit... It's all about will we hit um, Helm Smash or not. Here we go. Whoa, 1.7 million. And it's not even on the tank, the, the squishy's head. Keep in mind, as I said, he's at, right now he's at 5.7k attack. So he's getting 1140 times 1.5. So he's at around about 17,000 attack. Okay. He's around about 17,000 attack. When he's built properly, he'll actually be getting 21,000 attack. So he's got another 4,000 to 5,000 attack to put into his damage kit there, which is a lot. It's a big hit. That could be like an extra 500,000 damage, potentially. One of his A1 will do. I don't think we'll get back around to it in time. Deepest attack. Damn. Hundred eighty-five K on a on a weak affinity. 
Oh, God. This is just normal playtesting. So, obviously, we don't have things like um, weaken out all the time, decrease defense out properly. We don't have things set up correctly for it. We're just doing a bit of damage testing. See if we can't um, blast through some. Yeah, Lydia's in my nightmare team. I mean, the team you'll be in will have a setup for it. It's fine. That's 538,000 to a non decapitated head. Nine hundred thousand without weaken. And keeping in mind he's got like you know potentially twenty two percent crit damage that we could add to this, or twenty percent thirty percent crit damage we could add if we get good rolls on the other pieces at sixteen. What have we got here now? Slow it down. Eight hundred thousand AoE. Whisper can't AoE. Can we get another turn? Boost. Increase attack. We actually have weaken now. We have weaken. Here we go. Oh, we don't have any. A1. 1 million damage. Shamel doing like pretty good insane damage as well. A3. 1.8 million damage. It's a lot. It's pretty good. It's a lot of damage. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's gonna go with Razzlevarg and damage Shamael. So we're gonna so Shu Zhen would be Razzlevarg. Uh Val would be in here, Shamael would be damage, and then this would be the three third part. So the really only difference is having damage like having a damage rabbit. And we're obviously rebuilding Shamael. I'm just testing in... Um, I'm just testing in here. I was just testing his damage potential. So obviously as it goes higher, the thing is, what you want to look at is it doesn't really matter how high we go because he will be doing true damage. So that will do 1.8 million on Nightmare, which is big. It will be big. So... But like, you know, I haven't built Shamit. I've got to basically build this. I've got to build Rabbit out. I've got to build the Rabbit out. We never really got to the Rabbit. That's something I need to do. Um, rabbit, I'll probably just go full lethal. I'll drop Phantom Touch off him, put him in Heaven Cast. Because this team will have quite a lot of buffs. Lady Mikag is in my Nightmare team. So like this team will have a lot of buffs. See? That's why I put them in Heaven Cast, because look how many buffs I've got going on here. Really good, right? Five buffs with a two-star Heaven Cast is like 2.5% damage. It's not bad. It'll help boost this damage a little bit. Um, yeah, my Nightmare team is basically not that anymore. Not that anymore. Not that anymore. This team. Build it properly up here. So it'll be uh, Lady Makage, Alatrian, Megagante Archer. Rathalos. I haven't actually run it since I've got the four-star Rathalos, so this could do quite a bit more damage. Who else is it? Michinaki. Michinaki needs rebuilding. Because I've kind of broken him. And then finding Lydia. That's my nightmare team. 
Um, but I haven't actually... I, I need to rebuild the Michinaki because I had to take some gear off him to make my Hydra teams. Um, and this guy now is in 7k attack. 250 speed, 310. And he is also in... 6p Therapolis. But we got some more Sension to go here. 66. This needs to be dusted. That's got more attack. That can go up higher. So Rathalos has got a bit more damage to come as well. But he will be around about 320. So he is going to hit like a cannonball at this point. Again, I'm wondering if I should take him out of Helm Smasher. It's, it's less important because this is, is ignoring defense. I'm wondering if I should put him in Helm Smasher for this. So, anyway, guys, it is late. I have gone on long today. I've been so distracted by everything. Um, yeah. We'll leave it there. Skrank Rathalos. I'm not surprised. Rathalos hits really hard. My, if you get the stars aligned, the Rathalos can basically do like 35 million in one hit. You just got to get the stars to align. So, anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Um... We'll see what the souls await us tomorrow, and I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out. I will have an Ancora champion guy going out tomorrow, um, which should be of interest. Uh, I have none left. I have none left. I'm stuck at 21 forever. Um, so, we'll see. Uh, Temporal Chains and Hydra, not really, but I just use it because it's good everywhere. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, have a nice evening. I'm leaving, yeah. I'm ending. It's like 2.30 for me. Have a good evening, guys. Ciao.